way into the Baylor-Texas rivalry. Yes, sir. It was so much fun to just kind of sit there and, like, let the, the, the wealth of knowledge from, from Kirk and Cedric and Bryce, yeah. who have seen this, this rivalry so much, just kind of go down the history of this game and what it means to both fan bases. It's It was so much fun to just kind of take it all in, yeah. right? Like, I've been a part of rivalries growing up in Michigan, going to Michigan, Michigan State yeah. games, but it's different. This yeah. is different. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like I said, it was just a lot of fun to just kind of listen to them go on. Pretty cool. Do you have a sense, I mean, over the course of this week, the stories you've heard and, you know, heard retold many times, do you have a sense of kind of the history of this rivalry? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think my favorite one was Coach Coach Taft, mm -hmm, right? Back right. In the, you know, he, he allegedly ate a worm. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's a great one. You know, get yeah. get him to you know, motivate the guys, and then they go out and beat Texas. Yeah. You know, that was that was kind of a unique thing. I think I listened to something where he said he didn't actually eat the worm. I to make that <laughs> very clear. But, uh, yeah, it's just there's so much history. And then the miracle on the Brazos and, you know, hearing about that. Going all the way back to 1910, the 6-6 yeah. tie that ended in a forfeit. Baylor had some officiating stuff. But it was, uh, yeah, like I said, there's a lot to take in. Yeah. You know, 112 yeah. games. This Th will be This is 113, exactly. And, yeah, uh, yeah just uh, – Lots of fun, lots of, lots of, lots of learning. Right? Yeah. But one thing to keep in mind for all of us is we're not playing the history of this series tonight. You know, it's this Baylor team against this Texas team tonight. Absolutely. And, I, you know, I think that Texas is really good this year. Uh, they have a lot of guys and, you know, uh, but I will say, you know, this is a typically a game that Texas would lose, right? They always kind of have one stinker against yeah. a team that maybe <laughs> they shouldn't lose to. And, and I think Baylor – for me, the, 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 the vibes around camp, the vibes around practice have been totally different this year, this this week, right? They know what's at stake. They know how important this game is to the team and, and the fans especially. Um, and, and I think that there's just a level of confidence that it was not there the last two yeah, weeks. Yeah. And, and I think that that uh, – so I'm not I'm not counting Baylor out of this game. If, if the Baylor gets off to a hot start and runs the ball well, Man, anything, anything can happen. That'll be a real key, don't you think? Who, who, who runs the ball we the best among these two teams tonight? And, and I know we saw Dawson Pendergrass have a pretty good game last week. I, I still think Dominic Richardson, from everything I've heard, is still pretty questionable in that regard. And obviously, we know what Richard Reese can do. And uh, I think the offensive line, uh, you know, is is getting is much improved, right? You know, you know, moving Campbell to the right side and. It, it just everything is is, is shaping up for yeah, Baylor, yeah. And, and I think that as long as they can continue what they did against Long Island, good things can happen. Well, and it's the Big 12 opener too. I mean, factor that in, so things just naturally ratchet up a bit when you get to conference play. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just the excitement level, right? I, it, it's hard to quantify that. It's hard to put that into words. It's like I like I said earlier, the the, the vibes in practice, the way they were talking about this game, the way they were talking about how the whole season, regardless of the first three games, the whole season is still in front of them. Mm -hmm. they're, they're zero and zero. Even Steve Sarkeesian talked about that. You know, they yeah, they beat Alabama, you know, kind of big whoop, mm -hmm. right? You know, it's uh, it's everything is out in front for both of these teams, and both of them know it. Very good. What uh, we mentioned, the running game being a key tonight, what in your mind are, are some other keys for Baylor to do well in this game. You know, I think the defense has taken steps. It's it's gotten much better, much more solid over the last few weeks. And Quinn Ewers has yet to throw an interception this season. And so I think as long as Gabe Hall and T.J. Franklin can continue to pressure the quarterback like they have, maybe Mike Smith and Byron Vaughns as well, uh, and, and maybe force Quinn to, to make some decisions and throw into what has been an improving uh, secondary for Baylor. Yeah. I, I think that's going to be a, a big thing to watch out for. Yeah, I think that's very good. And let's just keep repeating that fact. Quinn Ewers hasn't thrown an interception yet. <laughs> you know, let's, let's them, just, right? yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, keep yeah. repeating that <laughs> as uh, as often as we need to. Well, it is going to be a great atmosphere here tonight. A sold out crowd on a Saturday night, a night game after those early starts the last two weeks. I know you as writers, you're not particularly fond of night games, but yeah. atmosphere wise, I think it just really uh really makes it pop you know i mclean stadium is 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 so cool it's one of the greatest stadiums in college football you know i've been to a lot of college football stadiums at least in texas and you know it's it's definitely one of my favorites and i think that especially when it's the crowd is engaged and 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 loud and there's a big rival like like this man it's it's hard to beat 
night games at McLean Stadium, man. I know I'm new here, yeah. but I, I, I know it's, it's hard to beat a game like this. Yeah, you're going to get a good dose of it tonight. Yeah. Hey, appreciate the visit. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having me. You can read Zach's work in the Waco Tribune Herald tomorrow. Uh, click it up at wacotrib.com. Uh, take a break. When we come back, we'll unveil this week's charity champion. We'll have that when we come back. Crowd uh, continuing to come in here to McLean Stadium. Right now, awaiting the specialists to come on the field for warm-ups. Don't have anybody out there except some managers right now. But we'll keep you apprised of that as we continue on the Baylor Alumni Tailgate Show here on the Baylor Sports Media Network. No matter which road you take. I'll be right back, John. Is the perfect way yeah. to navigate it. On your path, you're your own boss and set your own hours. Look at that. Okay. You may find yourself. Okay, this is uh. One more time. Oh. Okay, just double checking. I didn't want to. Okay. Okay, in and out of charity champion. Okay. Legends. I got one. I got one. Sounds good, bud. Keeper. Hey, get a picture. No one's gonna believe this. And each day ends binge watching stars and dreaming about all the things you'll do the next day. You know what? I'm catching bigger fish tomorrow. Built to follow your path, the Toyota Tundra. This Texan knows how to sick them. Toyota is a proud partner of Baylor Athletics. Visit your local Toyota dealer or toyota.com to check out the rugged Tundra today. Toyota, let's go places. See packages and options at toyota.com for feature availability. Kids can now join the Baylor Cup Club, the official kids club of Baylor Athletics. Fans 12 and under can register for the low cost of $25 and gain exclusive benefits and access to Baylor Athletics events. Members receive free admission to select events, exclusive giveaway access, and their own membership package. To register your cub, please visit BaylorBears.com slash Cub Club. Sign your cub up today and sick them bears. TFNB Your Bank for Life is the official local bank of Baylor Athletics. Find out why more Central Texas are making TFNB their bank for life. Sign up for our Edge checking and savings accounts to earn interest or cash back with five convenient locations and an award-winning mobile app. Banking has never been easier. TFNB Your Bank for Life. Member FDIC. You're listening to Baylor football. Baylor football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Back with us inside McLean Stadium as we continue on our Baylor tailgate show. It's our uh, pleasure and honor each week to recognize the TFNB, your Bank for Life charity champion. This week, this is a real pleasure. This is uh, the honoree this week is Waco Goodfellas, and Randy Crook is with us. And congratulations to you. This is a great honor. You guys don't look for attention, but this really shines a light on, on not so much you, but the good things that you do. Well, I appreciate it, John. Yes, sir, it certainly is a hum humongous honor for the Goodfellas. We're just a local group. Uh, started 30 years ago with a couple of guys, and uh, we've blossomed into 40 40 active members and we take care of about three to five hundred families at christmas time so yeah it's a big honor for the good fellows nice very very good very deserving how did this start you said it goes back 30 years how the good fellows start it'll be 30 years this december and it's just a group of guys we're sitting around one night and just kind of seeing how blessed we were at our point that point in our life so we put a couple hundred bucks in a hat and went to the store and bought some toys and kind of had like a mardi gras parade we just went to some areas in waco where we knew there might be some kids needing some love and we were just tossing out toys and candy canes throughout the window. And then next year we came back and it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. So now we're, um, like I say, taking care of three to 500 kids at Christmas time. Wow, how great is that? What a great heart that, that your group has. Um, I think of also, you know, you're giving away the toys, but I see you guys uh, cooking for like the fire department, you know, on, or providing meals on Thanksgiving, things like that. You do a lot of that also. Yeah, we do. And every year we, we'll, uh, we'll pick a fire station out and take them Thanksgiving dinner. And then, you know, we'll find families outside the arena of the good fellows that somebody might call and say, hey, this family struggles for some reason mm -hmm. and we'll take them a thanksgiving christmas dinner take them christmas trees and we just do a lot of a lot of different facets yeah. so uh how you're you are in the spotlight like i said with the charity champion uh it's your chance to say hey 
here we are. We're doing good things. If people want to contribute to you or help in any way, how could they do that? Well, we have a website, so they can. It's, it's all spelled out black and white on our website. And they can uh, log in, and it gives you several different. Uh, you can donate money or send us families that you might know that are in need that we could uh, take care of. Yeah, very good. And you're always open to that, right? I mean, you're not uh, you're not a, a closed group. Like you've got enough kids, you don't need any more. No, we're always actually we're always looking yeah. for for additional families. And uh, no, we're we're open uh, 365 days a year, 24 seven, baby. We work every day for them. That's great. And you are, as I said earlier, you're not out looking for attention. I mean, you do this for the right reasons to help these kids, to help families that really need it. Um, but again, being in the spotlight, what will this uh, allow you to do maybe bringing attention to the good fellas well hopefully it'll help us grow a little bit i mean we can always use additional funds you know um but grow the base of our organization and reach out and just touch more families hopefully good what's uh what's next on the agenda you got anything big coming up well you know it's close to christmas time yeah. and santa <laughs> claus is coming to town so we every year we have a big uh uh, party at the Lions Den for certain families, fly, and Santa Claus comes in on a red and white jet helicopter, nice. lands right at the front door, and <laughs> we uh, we sock it to a bunch of kids. It's a oh. it's a big party. Man, that's huge. That's great. And your group, you say, is about uh, the numbers about forty guys. About forty active guys. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Yep. Very good. Well, y'all do such great work, and I've known you know the name Goodfellas. I just see you out in the community doing good things. So it's nice to get more information about it and share the information. And congratulations on being named the charity champion today thank you john it's a uh, tremendous honor yeah. tremendous very nice randy crook waco goodfellas they are this week's tfnb your bank for life charity champion they'll be recognized on the field coming up a little bit later in the game today so, for, so watch for them and the name is perfect they are a bunch of good <laughs> fellas and doing good things in our community that's we, this week's uh, charity champion we'll take a break be back on the baylor tailgate show in a moment here on the baylor sports media network Work. For a limited time, get high-performance, ultra-reliable internet from a step. Alrighty. Starting as low as $25 per month. And now we have mobile, too. Visit Astound.com to order the number one rated internet. Create the perfect plan with fast speeds to meet all your needs. What's the next pre-recorded segment, John? Price lock when you upgrade to award-winning gig internet. No contract. No Okay. Feed. But you'll call for that, right? Switch. Okay. Hey, head to Astound.com or call okay. 800 for astound Restrictions apply. See yeah, going good. Have you gone gold yet? Go gold with Baylor Athletics this season and be the gold factor across each of our sports. Wear exclusive Go Gold apparel from the Baylor Bookstore at the upcoming Go Gold dates. To stay up to date on some golden opportunities, visit BaylorBears.com slash Go Gold. Go Gold and Sikkim Bears. First Central Credit Union says it's game on. Lower your monthly vehicle payments by refinancing your vehicle with First Central. Make it a winning season with refinancing set to your preferences. You decide the due date and frequency. Finance elsewhere? Save money with a new local game plan. Apply online today. We make it easy to score at firstcentralcu.com. Membership and loan policy requirements apply. Member NCUA. At Allen Samuels in Waco, we've got amazing deals that make you ask, why shop anywhere else? During Ram Power Days, get a new 2023 1500 Lone Star 4x4 Crew Cab, $11,000 off MSRP or 2.9% for 72 months. Or choose a new 2023 1500 Laramie 4x4 Crew Cab, $12,500 off MSRP or 2.9% for 72 months. That's right, we're making big deals, so hurry in today. Allen Samuels in Waco, the place to shop Ram Truck. You're listening to Baylor Football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Gate Show presented by Baylor Alumni, connecting the Baylor family worldwide. We're also brought to you by Pizza Hut. Call or go online to PizzaHut.com to order your game day meal. Pizza Hut delivers home gating with pizza, wings, and pastas. 
Let's give you some scores. We have the night game this evening, so some other scores around the Big 12 today. Those already complete, and uh, some games still in progress. Fourth quarter, Kansas leads BYU, battle of unbeatens. KU trying to get to 4-0 on the season. They lead BYU and Lawrence 38-27 with a minute 24 to play in the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter in Morgantown, 438 on the clock. West Virginia leads Texas Tech 20-13. Keep you updated on that one. Also fourth quarter, early fourth quarter, 14-22 on the clock. Iowa State leads Oklahoma State in Ames 34-20 that score. A couple of finals from earlier today. Oklahoma goes to Cincinnati and knocks off the Bearcats. 20 to 6 the final score. TCU wraps up non-conference play winning the battle for the Iron Skillet beating SMU 34 to 17 is the score. Other games coming up in addition to ours. Baylor in Texas here at McLean Stadium. Houston hosting Sam Houston to wrap up non-conference and UCF plays at Kansas State tonight at 7 p.m. Central. You're caught up on scores around the Big 12, and uh, it is Baylor in Texas, 113th and presumably final meeting here at McLean Stadium tonight between these longtime rivals. So many memories from a Baylor perspective about big wins for the Bears over Texas. And I always say that's a credit to UT. I mean, it's a big win if you knock off the Longhorns. One of those came on December 7th, 2013, closing the case and winning a Big 12 championship. Here is one of the great games in Baylor football history. December 7th, 2013, the final game in the 64-year history of Baylor's Floyd Casey Stadium as the Bears hosting longtime rival Texas. With Oklahoma having defeated Oklahoma State earlier in that day, the winner of this game, reported to be the coldest in Floyd Casey Stadium history, would be the outright Big 12 Conference champion. In front of an all-time record crowd of 51,728, the teams traded field goals in the first half before the Bears offense, number one in the nation, got in the end zone in the third quarter as Bryce Petty found his favorite target, Antoine Goodley. Big play here, empty backfield, except for the quarterback, Bryce Petty. Fuller in motion from right to left. Petty passes, right side, caught! Antoine Goodley into the touchdown! Touchdown, Baylor Bears! Antoine Goodley, a great one-handed catch, an 11-yard touchdown grab, and the Bears are in the end zone for the first time today. Later in the third quarter, it was Petty again, this time to Levi Norwood. Third down and goal from the six. Over the middle, caught, touchdown, Levi Norwood. Six-yard touchdown pass. Bears have scored on their first two possessions of the third quarter. Baylor goes up two touchdowns on Texas. By the end of the third quarter, the Bears had built a 20-3 lead, and the final countdown was on toward Baylor's first Big 12 football championship. All right, 22 seconds to play. One more snap. Bryce Petty will take the knee. And the Baylor Bears are the 2013 Big 12 football champions. Winners today on the 7th of December, 2013, over the Texas Longhorns, 30 to 10, the final score. The Bears cap an 11-1 regular season as they turn out the lights on Floyd Casey Stadium and the Longhorns. This week's great we go. game in Baylor football history. What a great memory that was. And the Bears winning the Big 12 championship, closing the case in style with that 30-10 win over Texas December 7, 2013. Bears try to uh, end uh, at least this portion of the rivalry tonight. Texas moving on to the SEC. And the Bears would like nothing better than to win the last matchup between these two as members of the Big 12 Conference here tonight. Talk more about that with Jerry Hill, Baylor Insider, when we come back. We'll continue on the Baylor Alumni Tailgate Show right after this here on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Hi, this is John Morris for Green Eye Associates. Okay, so when we're coming out, this is the first game where we'll be at the top of the hour, not the bottom. Experience eye exam fun, easy, and accurate, providing trustworthy and honest communication about your eye. 30 seconds. Visit them on. Yep. Well, it's 19 seconds. 
boxes and a wide selection of eyewear made on-site by experts. Green Eye Associates, official optometrist of Baylor Athletics. TF, correct, yes. And, and I will count you down. Yeah, I was double-checking to make sure. But the, out, the, the tailgate show closes only 20 seconds, so then I'll do that. Then the 10-second legal, I'll give them a full second, and then I'll hit the open. With five, so we'll do like 29. award winning mobile app. Banking has never been. Uh-huh. Thank you. TFNB, your bank for life. <laughs> hey, there he is. <laughs> How are you, Jerry? How's the recovery going? Jeff has Mazda and the Baylor Bears both know what it takes. That is awesome to hear. Determ- I bet you're happy about that, too. <laughs> That's great. Uh, you're going to be dancing today. All the Baylor Bear fans listening to visit us for hard-hidden deals on every new Mazda in stock with fresh inventory hitting the ground daily. And every new Mazda comes with our Jeff Hass Advantage plan. Plus, your trade is now worth more than ever. We're buying and models. Get our best cash offer in minutes. Jeff Hass Mazda on the KD Freeway. Number one based on 2021 sales and stock volume in a Gulf region. This is Cole Posey with Baylor Baseball. All right, we'll have about eight minutes here. So I will be a more well-rounded individual. Not only am I... <laughs> yeah, that's longer than usual, yeah. The training and character development. The ability to compete at the <laughs> to be challenged spiritually and to be pushed academically are unique things that no other university but Baylor can offer. My name is Cole Posey, and this is my Champions Tribune. Read more Champions Tribune at BaylorBears.com. You're listening to Baylor Football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Show. We're upstairs, level five. Specialists down on the field warming up now. Texas in all white tonight. White pants, white jerseys, white helmets. The uh, burnt orange numerals and lettering. The Longhorn logo on either side of their helmet. Baylor in all green tonight. Green pants, green jerseys, gold numerals and lettering. And the uh, gold, the interlocking BU on either side of their green helmets. That's the color matchup. It's Baylor and Texas. And we welcome in Jerry Hill, uh, Baylor insider. Jerry, 113th meeting coming up tonight. Right. I won't say to you what some other people have insinuated, yeah, that like you've been around for all those. All those, yeah. yeah. But uh, it is a great history and a great rivalry between these two. Amazing rivalry, and, and you're right, John. I mean, you and I have seen a few of those. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think I figured up uh, – I don't remember if I covered any in those first few years, but certainly this would be my 37th in a row – so, really? Yeah, yeah 37th yeah, in a row. We know so, that for sure. Yeah, we know that for a fact. So, uh, And just a lot of great games, John. I know we've talked about it during the week, but uh, this has been a great series, and, and particularly with starting with Coach Taft, it became a lot more competitive. And, you know, when you look at this stretch since then, uh, you know, Baylor's kind of held its own in this series over that stretch. I hope Coach Taff is here tonight. Yeah. I, I don't know if he will be or not. He's got a suite down the road from us. If his health allows, he'll, he will be here, no question about it. But, uh, gosh, didn't this series change when Grant Taff took over at Baylor? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they – John, I, rem- I think I remember looking this up that I believe they had – Baylor had beaten Texas – 11 times when Coach wow. Taft came in in the history. And I don't remember how many games had been played. Uh, but he won 10 himself yeah. in that 21-year stretch. And, yeah, the 74 game obviously changed everything when they came back from that 17-point deficit to, to win 34-24 and the miracle on the Brazos. Uh, but, you know, then he just kind of – I had forgot how good he was at the end there. Uh, until Trey Weir, we were yeah. having lunch with right. him, and Trey was boasting that he was four and one, and I was like, "No, nah, I don't <laughs> think so. I don't remember Baylor winning that many." Yeah. But they were eighty-eight through ninety-two, wow. which was Taft's last five years. They were four and one. Wow. One loss that whole stretch. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Coach Taft definitely changed that and made it where Baylor could believe Baylor, you know could get on the field and stay on the field with Texas. You mentioned the uh, miracle on the Brazos, 1974. We'll get more from Ricky Thompson on that. He was on that team. That's certainly, uh, you know, the, one of the seminal moments in Baylor football history. Yeah. Uh, but beyond that, there are so many others oh, also. What, yeah. what, which one maybe stands or a couple stand couple out in your mind? Stand out. Yeah. yeah, I think, and y'all have probably talked about it, but the 89 game yeah. where they yeah. won in Austin for the first time in 38 years. John, I actually... 
I went back and looked at Baylor in the vault on oh. Baylor Plus oh, this week. Oh, nice Baylor watch, Plus. Watch the whole thing. <laughs> watch the whole thing. And my wife at one point is like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm watching this game. 50 to 7 and no offense, like yeah. zero offense, but uh, had eight turnovers, seven sacks. Unbelievable game. And then I think probably the one, I mean, close the case, yes, but 92 when, when uh, Coach Taft won his last regular season game. Could have been his last game, but they qualified for a bowl. They carry him off the field. Baylor wins 21-20. For me, that – that's almost because I wasn't here for 74 and 78. Right. For me, that kind of was the moment, you yeah. know, that that was unbelievable to, to watch that. 78, the worm game. Right. And uh, I was a student at Baylor at that time. And I remember sort of after the game kind of starting to hear something about that. You know, the, right. it, the, it was kind of the news was sort of leaking out after that right. game. What, what? A worm? What are you talking? He <laughs> ate a worm? He ate a worm? What are you talking about? you got to be kidding me. What a great <laughs> what a great motivational ploy that yep. uh, only Grant Tapp would think of and pull off. Keep, keep the worms warm. Keep the worms warm, the exactly. The worms warm, yeah. and, and uh, man, he had those guys so fired up. That was a, John, that was a team that at the time was 2-8, and eight, and they go out there and beat Texas 38-14. Yeah. So, yeah. unbelievable, and yeah, that's that's kind of the, uh, that may be the seminal moment for Coach Tapp. Yeah, you know? maybe. Like a, you know, and I think, uh, I was trying to remember, I guess it was Walter I was talking to you earlier this week. He, he had heard the rumbles that maybe they were, you know, Coach Taft's job was on the line and mm. this and that. And then he goes out and beats A&M and Texas in the same year. In a year that you go three and eight, you beat, you know, basically yeah. your two biggest rivalries, That's great. rivals that year. So huge game, huge win for Baylor. And Coach Taft goes another, what, 13 years or whatever. Yeah, and, and remember that was the season finale. Baylor finished three and eight, right. but a springboard for 79, Absolutely. Peach Bowl team. And then in 1980, 80. they were Southwest Conference champions. Yeah, unbelievable. And, of course, they beat Clemson in the Peach Bowl. That was a Clemson team that won it, I think, maybe a year or two down yeah, the road two years after later, that. Yeah. So, yeah, just a great stretch for Baylor and really kind of did start with that Texas game. You know, they had beaten A&M kind of in the middle of the year, but that Texas game kind of triggered everything else yeah. that you saw over that next how many ever years. So what we're saying is Baylor, Texas is – Kind of a big kind deal. Kind of a big deal. Right, right. I, I, I believe that. Yes. You know, I believe that Baylor, Texas is kind of a big deal. I know. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, and I said this earlier, all that history, yeah. but tonight, tonight it's this Baylor team against this Texas team. Right. What are some of the keys in your mind? Yeah, John, I think the turnover, probably everybody's mentioned, I think the turnover deal is huge. Uh, Quinn Ewers hadn't turned it over. You know, I mean, he has not had an interception. Uh, but I think Baylor needs to win that turnover battle. And that means maybe the number one thing is protect the ball. Because mm. Sawyer's thrown three picks and 62 pass attempts. He's got to be better than that this week. And if the Baylor defense can maybe even score but at least get a couple of turnovers, I think that would be huge, kind of keep Baylor in the game. And then I know it's going to be tough, but Baylor's got to run the ball. Baylor's got to be able to just line up, power, and, and run the ball against this really good UT defense. Yeah, running game, I think, is, uh, you know, you could say that every game. Right, uh, right. Running the ball and stopping the run is key, but I think it really is this evening. Yeah, I think it's big. And, and, and Baylor did show a little bit last week. And, and I don't did we get word on Dominic? I don't, I don't know if he's available or not. We're going to watch warm-ups, okay. and the team is just out now. Yeah. But he did practice yeah, much of the week. So that would be huge if, if they get him back tonight. If you got him back, and then with what the other guys did this past week, I know it was LIU, but th I think they get some confidence from that. I think the offensive line gets some confidence from that. And if they can come out and just, you know, kind of just move the chains a little bit, I think that would be huge and, and, and maybe get the ball out of, out of uh, Sawyer's hands real quick. You know, don't, don't make any long passes or, or plays that develop. You know, get it out of his hand quick and – Short passes, over the middle, whatever. But, uh, yeah, if you can run the ball and then, and then kind of loosen them up a little bit with quick passes, I think that's kind of the key, John. Final font, uh, sellout crowd here. Yeah. Night game on a Saturday night. Ooh, man, this is going to be fun. Big time here on the Brazos, McLean Stadium. Sold out. I hope it's more green and gold than, than orange. But, John, this will be fun. Great atmosphere, great night. Jerry, thanks very much. Jerry Hill, Baylor Insider. That wraps up our Baylor Alumni Tailgate Show. Stay with us. Our countdown to kickoff is coming up next. Kickoff about an hour away. Baylor, Texas from McLean Stadium in Waco.
been listening. Perfect. Sorry about starting that at 30. I, I just looked at the clock wrong, and I was like, oh, wait a minute. For the but it timed out. Thank you. to kick off. Uh, okay, I appreciate it. Up next on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Sick them there. From the Allen Samuels Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Studios, this is KRZI Waco, K222DC Waco, K265DV Temple, ESPN Central Texas. All righty, we're off. (laughs) This is the Baylor Football Countdown to Kickoff on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Today's Countdown to Kickoff is brought to you by Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, championship partner of Baylor Athletics. Visit Texas Farm Bureau Insurance online to find a local agent today. No, I got it in. Ba- it's the last thing I played. White Health, the official hospital and healthcare system of Baylor Athletics. Your health care, your way. H-E-B, okay. the official grocer of Baylor. What's the next audio from here? It's 1905. TFNB, the official local bank. Okay, is that, I can't remember, is that, all right, but it, and that's not standalone, is it? Care. Okay, I didn't think so. Nissan, innovation for excitement. Yes. Coming up, we'll break down today's game, check scores, and take you inside Baylor football. And now, let's go live to the booth with the voice of the Baylor Bears. John Morris. Stadium on the banks of the Brazos. It's the Big 12 Conference opener for Dave Aranda and the Bears tonight playing the 113th and possible final meeting with the Texas Longhorns. Everybody, welcome in to our countdown to kickoff. John Morris, J.J. Joe, Ricky Thompson, our entire crew together for this game. And, uh, J.J., it's a big game. It's the Big 12 Conference opener, but always a little something extra, a little something special when the Bears and the Longhorns get together. And, John, it is. I mean, you know, I remember coming here and, and, and watching the first UT game on television when I was a freshman. Uh, but it's a huge game. You don't have to talk motivation because a lot of these guys played against each other in high school. I know some guys from out of state. And, you know, you just want to beat Texas. Huge rivalry for Baylor. Maybe not as much for Texas, but Tech, Baylor has won enough over the last few years. Well, I think it matters to Texas to come away with a W. Yeah, big game, Ricky, and uh, a lot of history. But uh, just just take this one slice of this rivalry. This game tonight, this is a big game. Well, it sure is. And I, I tell you, you yeah. You can tell the Bears have just sent their last group on the field for pregame warm-ups. You can hear the noise here. This is going to be a great crowd. It's great that it's here. I know the Bears haven't played that well to this point, but guys, I don't know. You throw a lot of that out with this game, even in any scenario. But when it's the last one, I think you throw everything out. And I would expect, J.J., that the Bears will see a lot of stuff offensively and maybe even on the defensive side that maybe we haven't seen so far this year. Yeah, I would agree, Rick. I think, you know, conference opener, I mean, Sark has even said the top goal for them is to win the Big 12. They had done it in a while. That was a huge imp- emphasis for them. And we know for Baylor, I mean, you know, having been in the championship game in 19-1 and 21, uh, I think maybe, hopefully, uh, we'll see the kitchen sink, and, and John will see the, the washing machine and the dryer and all, everything. <laughs> Every bit of it. That's exactly right. It's, it, it is that big of a game. And Baylor has won their last six Big 12 conference openers. They haven't lost a conference opener since 2017. Now, Texas has not been the opponent in any of those, but they do have a good string going, and it is a, a huge start to league play if you win the league opener. Bears coming off a 30-7 to win last week over LIU here at McLean Stadium. Bears' first win of the season. And now this game tonight is their fourth consecutive home game. And you can tell already, fans are coming in. It is sold out. And, J.J., this is going to be, I think, a great atmosphere, a sellout crowd on a Saturday night on the Brazos. And, John, I expect for it to be. I mean, the one thing, you know, you know, this is entertainment. I know it's serious business for the coaches and players, but it's entertainment. And the one thing you want to do is you want to give a good show. So hopefully our guys are rec- ready to go. Yeah, uh, Ricky, uh, you're down there. It looks like there's a lot of extra people on the sidelines. <laughs> this is a big game in a lot of ways for Baylor. Well, it is. And you can see 
the recruits, particularly you guys from the booth, but they line up from what the 20 yard line all the way around the end zone back to the goal post. I don't remember seeing this many here <laughs> this year at all. So you've got a good group of guys. I know Coach Aranda has come out and already spoken to a big group of these kids. This is a big game, and I think the atmosphere is important that they see that, and it's also important that they see the Bears play, that they play a good game, that they're competitive, that they make plays, and that can go a long way to some of these guys later wearing green and gold. All right, very good. So big game for a lot of reasons. Bragging rights, not the least of that, as Baylor and Texas meet for the 113th time and presumably final time, certainly the final time as Big 12 Conference rivals. Let's look at the uh, history of this series. We'll do that after a break. Stay with us. You're tuned in to the Countdown to Kickoff live from McLean Stadium in Waco and here on the Baylor Sports Media Network. At Allen Samuels in Waco, we've got a major... I'll be right back, John. ...who ask, why shop anywhere else? During Ram Power Days, get a new 2023 1500 Lone Star 4x4 Crew Cab, $11,000 off MSRP, or 2.9% for 72 months. Or choose a new 2023 1500 Laramie 4x4 Crew Cab, $12,500 off MSRP, or 2.9% for 72 months. That's right, we're making big deals, so hurry in today. Alan Samuels in Waco, the place to shop Ram Trucks. This is Walter Abercrombie, Executive Director of the Baylor Bee Association with a special invitation to join us November 3rd for our 2023 Baylor Athletic Hall of Fame and Wall of Honor Induction Banquet. This year's outstanding class includes Max Muncy from Baylor Baseball, basketball standout and longtime radio analyst Pat Nunley. The Hall of Fame class also includes Ken Quisenberry and J.D. Walton from football, track and field's Tiffany Townsend, Sandy Forsyth Massey, and Stan Curry, and Dennis Lukosh from men's tennis. Also recognized will be former tennis letter winner George Chandler as the latest addition to the Bee Association's Wall of Honor. The 2023 induction banquet will be held Friday, November 3rd at the Cashin Building on Baylor campus. For tickets or table sponsorships, contact Tammy Harden at 254-710-3045 or email her at Tammy underscore Harden at Baylor.edu. We hope to see you there. Hi, this is John Morris for Green Eye Associates. Let Green Eye Associates, Doctors Leanne Green and Avery Platt, yes, who see Waco clearly. Their experienced team enjoys making your eye the Baylor Texas retrospective accurate, providing tr- okay, and then come to you after patient about your eye. Okay, where visit them on uh-huh. their drive or at GreenEyeAssociates.com to see their services and a wide selection of eyewear made on site by experts. Green Eye Associates, official optometrist of Baylor Athletics. You're listening to Baylor Football. Baylor Football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. All right, three minutes. Since 1901, Baylor and Texas have met on the gridiron. Beginning in 1916 as Southwest Conference rivals into the Big 12 together in 1996. And the memories are plentiful and lasting. Like the 1974 second half comeback at Baylor Stadium, sparked by a blocked bunt. Now comes the play that may have turned around an entire season for the Baylor Bears. On their own 25, Texas with a fourth and five. Mike Dean back to front. Blocked by a horde of Baylor defenders. The Bears recover on the 17 yard line. And watch what happens from here on in. 34-24, Baylor the final, as the Bears went on to win their first Southwest Conference championship in 50 years. 1978 brought the worm game. Coach Grant Taft eating a worm in pregame to fire up his team. A 16-0 shutout of Texas in 1980 when the Bears won another Southwest Conference championship, capping a perfect conference season. The 50-7 win in 1989, Baylor's first win in Austin in 38 years, to which Coach Taft proclaimed, it's over, baby, it's over. Maybe the biggest win in Grant Taft's coaching career, when you consider the history he overcame today, 38 years of frustration, ends at Memorial. 90 seconds. 50-7. 
Coach Staff's final regular season game was a 21-20 win over Texas to close the 1992 season. Then Baylor closed the case in style in 2013 with a 30-10 win over UT, the coldest game in stadium history, to clinch their first Big 12 championship and turn out the lights on Floyd Casey Stadium. All right, 22 seconds to play. One more snap. Bryce Petty will take the knee. And the Baylor Bears are the 2013 Big 12 football champions. Winners today on the 7th of December, 2013, over the Texas Longhorns, 30-10 to 10, the final score. The 2014 season included another win over Texas and a second straight Big 12 championship. And in 2021, the Bears knocked off the Longhorns 31-24 at McLean Stadium. 30 seconds. The best season in Baylor football history. A little toss to Avery uh -oh. Smith. Spins out of a tackle. He's to uh -oh. the 25, to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Abram Smith into the end zone. Did he get in? Yes! Touchdown, Abram Smith. Touchdown, Bears. Abram Smith punches it in for Baylor. <laughs> I love it. Bears go up 30 to 21 on <laughs> That scratches the surface, but those are some of the highlights uh, going back, as we said, in the series that goes back to 1901. Uh, J.J. and Ricky, you guys were a part of some of those uh, really big memories. Ricky, uh, of course, the miracle on the Brazos season, that come from behind win over UT. You were right there in 1974. Well, yeah, and that's one that's impossible to forget. Anybody that was around at that time, and <laughs> that was a few years ago. But I tell you, that was an unbelievable feeling in that football game. And more than anything, you just remember the crowd and the noise and how loud it was in that stadium in the second half, particularly as you go through the last half of the third quarter and then into the fourth quarter. And what a feeling. School board lights on all night. Uh, it was a game where not many people in Waco slept that night. <laughs> That's a great memory. Frank would always talk about all the taillights that he saw, people leaving at halftime when Baylor was down 24-7. Then, uh, listening to the game, they started coming back, Rick, as the team <laughs> came back and won it 34-24. Yeah, and I think Cotton Davidson actually radioed down to Coach Taft during that game. Uh, of all things coaches talk about, and he said, he said, Grant, you can't believe all the people coming back. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you and I talked about it, John. I think by now there's probably about 250,000 people that were right. at that game. <laughs> That's exactly right, <laughs> who say they were at that game. So that one will live uh, forever. That was a huge Baylor win over Texas. J.J., you were a part of some big wins over the Longhorns also. Yeah, and John, I'm uh, the, really the one I really remember. Besides, you know, Taps, the last game at Floyd Casey was huge. And I, I talked about that one earlier this week in 92. Uh, but really the one in 89, I mean, really the season hadn't gone the way we thought it would go. That same season, we lost to U of H, 66 to 10, 10 or something. Yeah. And to close that season, uh, James Francis, Robert Blackman, a lot of really well-known guys were on that team. And, they went to Austin, I think it was Thanksgiving weekend because A&M was on probation or something. We played them that weekend, and, and man, they took it to them. And I wasn't even – I was actually watching it because I didn't travel. Uh -huh. But I just remember that win. Like, to me, okay, they went and they wrecked Texas. And that set the stage for us. We won. We lost in 90. We lost in 90. We won in 91. We won in 92. So I think that just showed the, the, the gap had been closed. And, that's one that I really that really sticks out besides 92. That's huge. And and you think 50 to 7, wow, what a great offensive explosion. <laughs> it but defense. no, it wasn't. It was, I mean, the offense did their part, yep, but it yep. was mostly that defense. It, it sure was, John. I mean, I think we had three interceptions. I think Robert Blackman returned two for touchdown. Right. James may have returned one, but it was just the, the most dominant defensive performance I had seen. And it was just great to get that win and do that against the against the Longhorns. All right, so let me ask you guys this, and I know you've been asked it before. So Texas is leaving. They have made their decision. They are going to the SEC. Uh, are you nostalgic at all about their leaving, or what are, what are your thoughts as we get set to play this game tonight? Well, I answer first. I already know Rick's answer, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so to me, I hate it, really, to be honest with you, because I think it's like A&M. I, I hate A&M. Uh, never really be, never beat an A&M. Uh, but I, I missed the, the going to Cal Field and playing them. So I'll, I'll miss play, uh, playing UT, but 
I'll tell you, I want to kick him in the butt today and sure. kick him on the way out. To be sure. honest with you. Yeah, that's right. Rick, how about you? Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with JJ there. It'd be nice to, <laughs> to do the kicking on this one and, and send them on their way to the SEC. And I, truth be told, it is a sad moment that really you use this rivalry for teams that are 90 miles away and have played this many times. But that's their choice. Let them go. The Big 12 is growing. So we'll just play who's in front of us. But it would be very nice to finish this series off with the win today. Amen. Amen to that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's great. Well said, guys. Appreciate that. Let's take a break. When we come back on the countdown to kickoff, we'll get Ricky and JJ's what to watch for in this game tonight. Baylor and third-ranked Texas. The Bears 1-2 and two on the season. The Longhorns come in 3-0. and oh. We'll get their uh, uh, thoughts on what to watch for in this matchup. You're listening to Baylor Bear Football. It's the countdown to kickoff here on the Baylor Sports Media Network. First Central Credit Union invites you to join our team. Game strategy, earn 5% APY on your money. Enjoy ATM fee refunds and the ability to make deposits 24-7 at our ATMs. You can earn interest and have access to your money. Suit up in a free new member t-shirt. Join our team today at firstcentralcu.com. Everything we do, we do for you. Sick em, Bears. Eligibility and qualifications apply. APY annual percentage yield. Member NCUA. This is Cole Posey with Baylor Baseball, and this is my story. When I walk away from Baylor, I know I will be a more well-rounded individual. Not only am I getting a top-tier athletic experience, I'm also getting top-tier training and character development. The ability to compete at the highest level, to be challenged spiritually, and to be pushed academically are unique things that no other university but Baylor can offer. My name is Cole Posey, and this is my Champions Tribune. Read more Champions Tribune at BaylorBears.com. No matter which road you take, the Toyota Tundra is the perfect way to navigate it. On your path, you're your own boss and set your own hours. Look at that sunrise. You may find yourself in some pretty remote places. Whoa, that view. It's amazing. Or in places where pastimes become stories that become legends. I got one. I got one. It's a keeper. Hey, get a picture. No one's going to believe this. And each day ends binge-watching stars and dreaming about all the things you'll do the next day. You know what? I'm catching a bigger fish tomorrow. Built to follow your path, the Toyota Tundra. This Texan knows how to sick them. Toyota is a proud partner of Baylor Athletics. Visit your local Toyota dealer or toyota.com to check out the rugged Tundra today. Toyota, let's go places. See packages and options at toyota.com for feature availability. You're listening to Baylor Football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Down to kickoff. Baylor in Texas comes up 644, the official kickoff time for the Bears and the Longhorns coming up this evening. We are brought to you in part by Premier ER and Urgent Care. Premier ER and Urgent Care is the place to go when you're not sure where to go. Open 24-7 and just a short walk across campus. No appointment necessary, just walk in. Visit premier.care to learn more. And thanks to HEB, our game sponsor tonight of this Baylor-Texas matchup. 113th all-time meeting between these two. We've talked about the history. JJ and Ricky, how about this game tonight, this one matchup between these two? Want to get your thoughts on what to watch for, a matchup, a player, a position, uh, tell us, J.J., what uh, what do you have your eye on for this game tonight? Well, John, I'm going to look at the, the Baylor – I'm sorry, the UT defense and the Baylor offense. And, and you know, we, we we don't have Blake back yet, so Sawyer Robertson, hopefully he's a little bit more healthy, has the ability to augment the running game with his feet, hopefully. Uh, but really, I think this game is really going to be defined by how well we control their huge middle. We'll run wide zone, try to get those guys going left and right. But I really believe that Tavontre Sweat, number 93, 364, 362 – Byron Murphy, who also plays some, some fullback tight end, caught a touchdown pass last week, 61308. Then coming in for them is Alfred Collins, 65317. And then you have a redshirt freshman out of South Lake, Aaron Bryan. He's 6162301. So you can see in the middle between those four players, very hard to run the ball successfully unless you control that. So, John, I'm going to look at how we do at the center guard position versus those two tackles. If we can somehow at least stalemate them and then open those lanes for 
for Gavin, I'm sorry, for Richard Reese uh, and also Dwayne, Dwan, Dawson Pendergrass and Bryson Washington, then we'll have some luck at then doing play action off of that. But I'm going to watch that, that matchup. All right, very good. Ricky, how about you? What are you keeping a close eye on tonight? Well, Texas has a guy outside receiver, Xavier Worthy, who's scary. This kid only weighs 170 pounds, 175. He can absolutely fly. And I thought he was the guy that broke the Wyoming game open last week with a 60-yard touchdown on a five-yard throw. So he can fly. So I'm going to say our corners have to have a big ball game tonight. They've got to control him. He's going to have his catches. Can't afford the long ball, though. So these corners are going to have to play well. The safeties are going to have to cover over the top, maybe double worthy at times. So how this secondary performs tonight is going to be vital to the success of the Baylor defense. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. All right, guys, thanks very much. A lot to keep an eye on in this matchup, Baylor and Texas. Longhorns have departed for their locker room. Bears uh, with a couple of more special teams plays, then they'll go to the locker room. Again, 644, our scheduled kickoff time for this game, which is on ABC Regional Television coming up tonight. And, uh, and that's a big deal, you know, on a Saturday night, J.J., to get uh, ABC televised game that is uh, a lot of focus on this matchup yeah and John I mean that's I mean that's the spotlight and you kind of have that because you have a UT team that's number three in the country but it's a great opportunity and the question really for this Baylor team this year as it develops its own identity is will you shrink under the spotlight or will you step into it and we've seen teams in the past here in 19 and 21 and once before that step into it great opportunity Bears leaving the field. You can hear the crowd in the background. It is a great crowd, a sellout crowd here at McLean Stadium. Take a break. When we come back, we'll hear from Bears head football coach Dave Aranda, our pregame visit with the Bears coach when we come back on the countdown to kickoff here on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Hi, this is John Morris for... All right, self-contained in and out, right? Green eyes. All right, got it. Uh... ...and Avery Platt help you see Waco clear. Okay. All right. It's about it's five minutes long, so and accurate, provide right. trustworthy and honest communication about your eyes and eyewear. Visit them on Lake Air Drive or at GreenEyeAssociates.com to see their services and a wide selection of eyewear made on site by experts. Green Eye Associates, official optometrist of Baylor Athletics. At Allen Samuels in Waco, we've got amazing deals that make you ask, why shop anywhere else? During Ram Power Days, get a new 2023 1500 Lone Star 4x4 Crew Cab, $11,000 off MSRP or 2.9% for 72 months. Or choose a new 2023 1500 Laramie 4x4 Crew Cab, $12,500 off MSRP or 2.9% for 72 months. That's right, we're making big deals, so hurry in today. Allen Samuels in Waco, the place to shop Ram Truck. Ask for Casasa Checking. It's our superpower. First Central Credit Union pays 5% APY on your checking account. There's no penalty in this game. Get great returns while having complete access to your cash. Get in motion with First Central's reward checking that refines ATM fees nationwide. Enjoy an automatic savings feature that pays you too. It's a snap to apply online at firstcentralcu.com. Everything we do, we do for you. Eligibility and qualifications apply. APY annual percentage yield. Member NCUA. If you need a trailer, Flat Rock Trailers has got you covered. From light-duty single-axle utility trailers to the big Tex tandem duels. We also carry a full line of enclosed cargo trailers. Need a motorcycle trailer? We've got them. Need a dump trailer? We've got the largest selection in the state. Oil field trailers? We carry a full line of big Tex trailers to handle all your needs. Trailer repairs? We repair all makes and models. We'll even rent you a trailer if you need to use one for a day. Flat Rock Trailers, your number one source for all your trailer needs. Find us at flatrocktrailers.com. You're listening to Baylor Football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Back with us inside McLean Stadium as we continue on our pregame show. Let's visit now with Bears head coach Dave Aranda. Coach, uh, coming off a win last week, always nice. How has that translated uh, maybe into practice this week? No, I appreciate that. It's been um, it's been helpful. It's been uh, an encouragement. It's been a, um, a starter uh, bell for the guys to kind of come out of the gates just full speed and all of it. And so, you know, the week started really strong, and then it got better as we went on. And you know, it's been a really strong momentum going into this game. And I know everyone's excited and everybody's ready. 
Sawyer Robertson uh, to start again at quarterback, his third start. How much more comfortable might he be just having more reps in games? No, I appreciate that. Yeah, I thought, you know, last week there was some good and uh, some things that could be improved on. And, you know, the thing with Sawyer, just right after that, just um, – the acknowledgement of hey these are things I can do better and then the full kind of attention and um, uh, work on the process to get better and then working with Sean and just all the all of that early in the week really has kind of put us in position to where he can really come out and have a strong showing and show the confidence that he's got and just the swagger I think when I think of Sawyer I think of that I think of just uh, uh, swagger, I think of, of a chip on the shoulder, and so we're we're looking to see, to see that Sawyer lead us today. So anyhow, so much attention is focused on the quarterback. It's obviously not just him. The line uh, it has to do their job in the running game. Uh, last week was really good. Running game was a real key for your win last week. Yes, I appreciate that. I thought that there's been great strides from the first week. I think every week we've gotten better, and uh, we need to continue to do that versus a really strong, stout, big, you know, defensive front. And, um, you know, the return of some guys uh, there in that running back room will help. And then I think just the continued emphasis um, from um, Coach Grimes and Coach Mateos on just the development of our line and kind of what it looks like and, what the standard is and everything I think we're I know everyone's really striving for it and and what a great opportunity we have to get it uh, tonight great opportunity against uh, Texas ranked number three in the nation you know in this series though it really the the ratings rankings really don't matter that much it's just Baylor and Texas yeah, we're looking forward to that. I mean, we had uh, Sean Bell come and he spoke to the team on Tuesday and just talked about the, the, the rivalry and the tradition and how long the game's been played and what the uh, the last 10 years, kind of what the record is and uh, just all of it. And I think they, you know, the record, the last couple home games. And so, I, you know, there's there's a great understanding with everybody here of kind of what this entails and uh, knowing that this could very quite possibly be the last one in a really long time. And so the the opportunity to be a part of it and to make it have an impact just on history is just way cool. I know our guys are chomping at the bit to do it. Texas uh, picked in the preseason to win the league this year. What have you seen through their first three games? Um, obviously the highest ranked team in the league. Are they uh, the team to beat right now? Yeah, I appreciate that. They've got really good skill. And so offensively, you know, they had a receiver last year and he returns and um, is it, you know, jersey change, but the, they added a new receiver. And so they've got kind of got bookends on either side and they got a tight end that um, can move and, and um, uh, do something with the ball after a catch. And, you know, I think there's a committee at running back and they run hard and everything. I think the old line is improved from a year ago. You know, a lot of guys return. I think the quarterback's improved from a year ago. I think, you know, our, uh, our success versus him is going to come down to negating big plays on first and second down and then really affecting and hitting him on third down. And then defensively, I think really stout and big. You know, Utah was a, was a big defensive front. These guys are bigger. And then, um, you know, they've got some, some new people in the back end um, at corner and everything else, some transfers and stuff that uh, they like to kind of single up. And so we're going to have to get our matchups and be able to protect and um, uh, take shots. And then at the same time, really have a, a, a process of getting the ball out so Sawyer can get the ball to our guys in space and let them do what they can do. And I think that is an element that um, has not shown for us this year. And, you know, we need to put that on display uh, tonight. Coach, thanks very much. We'll talk to you after the game. Hey, appreciate it. Thank you. It's Coach Dave Aranda. It's Baylor and Texas. 113th meeting all time comes up tonight here at McLean Stadium. Back with more after this on the Baylor Sports Media Network. No matter which road you take, the Toyota Tundra is the perfect way to navigate it. On your path, you're your own boss and set your own hours. Look at that sunrise. You may find yourself in some pretty remote places. Whoa, that view. It's amazing. Or in places where pastimes become stories that become legends. Hey, John. I got one. I never got a free game player from you. Picture. No one's going to believe this. 
and each day ends binge watching. St- okay, I'll just make sure I didn't miss, wasn't missing audio. <laughs> do. I, I was looking at my, you know, I have them on my keys, and I was like, oh. Okay. Built to follow your path, the Toyota Tundra. This Texan knows how to sick them. Oh, no worries. Proud part. No worries. Just making sure I didn't miss something. Visit your local Toyota dealer or Toyota.com to check out the rugged Tundra today. Toyota, let's go places. See packages and options at Toyota.com for feature availability. For a limited time, get high-performance, ultra-reliable internet from Astound Broadband, starting as low as $25 per month. And now we have mobile, too. Visit Astound.com to order the number one rated internet. Create the perfect plan with fast speeds to meet all your needs. Plus, get a two-year price lock when you upgrade to award-winning gig internet. No contracts, no hidden monthly fees, and no data caps. Switch today. Head to Astound.com or call 1-800-4-ASTOUND. Restrictions apply. See website for details. Premier ER and Urgent Care has all the convenience of urgent care with all the expertise of an ER, all under one roof. At every visit, be seen by ER-trained staff with on-site lab and CT, X-ray, ultrasound, and EKG. Here, you pay for the appropriate level of care that you receive, and we are in network with most major insurance providers. Premier ER and Urgent Care has four convenient locations serving Texas, San Marcos, Temple, Waco, and Woodway. To learn more, visit www.premier.care. You're listening to Baylor Football. Baylor Football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Baylor in Texas nearing kickoff tonight. Big 12 conference opener for both the Bears and the Longhorns. Sold out McLean Stadium. That uh, enthusiastic, energetic Baylor line is about to run on the field. JJ, JJ, did you hear this week? This is the largest student ticket draw that we've ever had since Baylor's been at, at McLean Stadium. Well, wow, that's amazing. I mean, we've been doing. I mean, we have some really good teams, so that's it's, it's good to see that student participation. That's really cool. And the uh, that freshman group, the Baylor line, is about to be unleashed onto the field. JJ, how about our uh, keys to the game? What in your mind will be some of the keys to a big Baylor win tonight? Well, well John, it's going to start up front. I mean, I, you know, I think one of the big things we'll see is that UT has developed up front. I remember 19 and even in, in 2021, 20, uh, we had the Baylor, we had the best line. So the number one key uh, for me uh, is the good old Baylor line. I mean, the team that plays the best at both lines of scrimmage. I believe defensively, Gabe Hall, uh, Cooper Lance, T.J. Franklin, Javon Mahi, uh, Garmin Randolph, Kylo Jordan, they have to play at a high level today consistently against that veteran now. It's not really veteran. They play a lot offensive line. Baylor has to win that matchup or at least hold a stalemate. The next thing is I call sweet feet. Uh, John, I don't know if we've been holding it in the, ba- in the bag, but – Richard Reese has to carry the ball. The preseason all-conference, one of the preseason all-conference players, he has to carry the ball 17 to 23 times today Uh, because I think he gets better as he gets carries. Uh, He's one of those players. I know you try to preserve him with Dominique Richardson out, but he has to carry the ball, I think, to give you that ability of explosive play. And then I also think in that is Sawyer Robertson. We really need him to be at least 80 to 85% with that ankle because I think they'll need his feet to take the focus off of the Baylor running game because UT is much better running against the run. And the last thing I have, John, really, is plus two. Uh, The Baylor defense has done a really good job, especially early, of turning teams over. We haven't capitalized today against a quarterback who has not turned the ball over in over 200 plastic tips. Have to come up with a plus two uh, advantage today to get out of here with the W. All right, J.J., keys to the game. Baylor in Texas coming up. Richard Reese, 12 carries, 82 yards, and two touchdowns last week in the win over LIU. There is a chance that Dominic Richardson will play in this game tonight. Did not play last week with an ankle injury. We'll watch and see if he is available to go uh, at least to some certain extent tonight. So we'll watch that. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll uh, go down to the field, hear the toss of the coin, give you our starting lineups, then toe meets leather. Baylor in Texas coming up from here at McLean Stadium, the Big 12 Conference opener, the final matchup as Big 12 rivals between Baylor and Texas. We're back after this on the Baylor Sports Media Network. 
At Allen Samuels in Waco, we've got amazing deals that make you ask, why shop anywhere else? During Ram Power Days, get a new 2023 1500 Lone Star 4x4 Crew Cab, $11,000 off MSRP or 2.9% for 72 months. Or choose a new 2023 1500 Laramie 4x4 Crew Cab, $12,500 off MSRP or 2.9% for 72 months. That's right, we're making big deals, so hurry in today. Allen Samuels in Waco, the place to shop Ram Truck. Premier ER and Urgent Care has all the convenience of urgent care with all the expertise of an ER, all under one roof. At every visit, be seen by ER-trained staff with on-site lab and CT, X-ray, ultrasound, and EKG. Here, you pay for the appropriate level of care that you receive, and we are in-network with most major insurance providers. Premier ER and Urgent Care has four convenient locations serving Texas, San Marcos, Temple, Waco, and Woodway. To learn more, visit www.premier.care. TFNB Your Bank for Life is the official local bank of Baylor Athletics. Find out why more Central Texas are making TFNB their bank for life. Sign up for our Edge Checking and Savings accounts to earn interest or cash back. With five convenient locations and an award-winning mobile app, banking has never been easier. TFNB Your Bank for Life. Member FDIC. Join us October 26th at the Texas Sports Hall of Fame in Waco for our next Lunch with a Legend, presented by Baylor Alumni Sports Outreach. Our special guest will be former Baylor basketball standout Tweedy Carter, now the Director of Player Development on Scott Drew's staff. Tickets are available now by calling 254-710-8300. Join us as we hear from fan favorite Tweedy Carter, October 26th, presented by Baylor Alumni Sports Outreach. This is Baylor football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Today's game is brought to you by Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, championship partner of Baylor Athletics. Visit Texas Farm Bureau Insurance online to find a local agent today. Baylor Scott and White Health, the official hospital and healthcare system of Baylor Athletics. Your healthcare, your way. H-E-B, the official grocer of Baylor Athletics. Proudly serving Texans since 1905. TFNB, the official local bank of Baylor Athletics. Premier ER and Urgent Care. Feel better now. Nissan, innovation for excitement. Get ready. Kickoff is just moments just away. Moment away. Let's go back to the booth with John Morris. Tonight here at McLean Stadium, settle in. We appreciate you being with us this evening. John Morris alongside J.J. Joe. Lakeisha Joe is with us. We appreciate her input to our broadcast tonight and uh, being a traveling companion down I-35 to J.J. Ricky Thompson on the sidelines. Jack Weaver in the booth with us. Jeff Walter, our spotter and statistician. Bob Baker, our engineer here in the booth. Aaron Sexton, our network board operator. Kelly Moore, our frequency coordinator here at McLean Stadium. The legend of the game is Bryce Hager, former Baylor linebacker, part of the winningest class in Baylor football history. He's been handed the mic by Nate Hilgenkamp at midfield, and Hager is now leading the, 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 uh, the stadium cheer uh, from the left side, the west to the east. And Bryce Hager, how about his thoughts in this series? You know, his dad, Britt Hager, the all-time leading tackler in Texas football history. And Bryce comes to uh, Baylor and has a great career here. His brother Brecken played at the University of Texas also. So some uh, interesting family dynamics in the Hager family for this matchup tonight. Hey, it is, John, and hey, I was glad it was him. I mean, when I heard Bryce earlier, I thought it was Petty. Petty? Yeah, I yeah. thought it was, which was good. That'd be good. That'd be good. He quarterbacked both of those squads. That's right. But it's good to see Hager. I mean, he would love, I know he would love to beat the school where, you know, of course, his dad and I think his brother as well, right? Breck and play there also. And his brother yep. as well. Yep. So yep. that's huge. So Bryce Hager, our uh, legend of the game today. Here comes that Baylor line running diagonally across the field. From one corner, the ramp in to the other end. They'll create a tunnel from which the uh, Baylor team will enter the field. So the Baylor line and those gold jerseys uh, are on the field now, and we'll have the team coming out very shortly. Time to give you an update on scores around the Big 12 and nationally. 
Game's final today. Oklahoma beat Cincinnati in their Big 12 opener in uh, Cincinnati. Nippert Stadium, 20 to 6, the final score. TCU beat SMU in the battle for the Iron Skillet, 34-17. Kansas beat BYU, 38-27. BYU's first game as a member of the Big 12, first conference game as a member of the Big 12. Kansas goes to 4 and 0 on the year, 1 and 0 in Big wow. 12 play, handing BYU their first loss. West Virginia wins over Texas Tech in Whoa. Morgantown. How about that? 20-13 to 13 the final score. Big win for Neil Brown and the West Virginia Mountaineers. And Iowa State beat Oklahoma State today. 34-27 wow. the score. One game uh, in progress. Houston leads Sam Houston 10-7, to 7, a minute 47 on the clock first quarter. Still to come in addition to our game, Baylor in Texas, UCF and Kansas State from the Little Apple of Manhattan, Kansas. So uh, what do we see? Some of these results a little bit uh, interesting, a little bit eye-opening, some of the results already today in the Big 12. Yeah, and John, I mean, it, you know, it's a very, I think, you know, UT is a very good team. OU is doing really well. But I really don't think there's dominance there yet. I mean, UT is very good. So we'll see if they carry that momentum, continue to do that against what they gained against Bama. But I think we're going to continue to see as we go through this Big 12 that there will be some surprising results. But I like what I'm seeing from Kansas. They, they, I mean, I hate to say it, but they, they put that thing together. They got a quarterback. They got a coaching staff. Uh, and it's good to see them doing well, to be honest with you. I don't want to lose to them. Do we play them this year? Kansas, we do not. Oh, okay. We well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. We don't see Kansas or uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, that's or right. BYU this year. I so. probably want to play Oklahoma State this year. <laughs> <laughs> so 14 team league you don't play everybody yeah, exactly. so, I know, I unfortunately yeah. all right very good so those are some of the scores uh as uh this day progresses into the evening time and big 12 play underway in a full uh full-blown big 12 day today final non-conference games among league schools are being finished today here come the bears running onto the field through the smoke at the uh northeast corner of mclean stadium it is uh, 95 degrees. The feels like temperature is 100. So let me check the calendar. It's officially fall. Exactly. It's September 23rd. But JJ, it feels like 100. And uh, Rick, how's it feel on the sidelines right now? Well, it's really not too bad. Most of the field is shaded. In fact, the entire field is shaded. You'd be hopeful that maybe the Texas sideline might have a little sun, <laughs> but they don't. All right. Uh, the entire field is shaded. The upper deck on the far side is in the sun, but it is awfully humid. Uh, it will be a test of these guys for four quarters with this top humidity and temperature tonight. All right, very good. Let's uh, take it down to the field. Toss of the coin coming up momentarily. Uh, the captains for Baylor will be Mike Smith, Clark Barrington, Dominic Richardson goes out as one of the captains. I would take that as a good sign. And uh, Devin Lemire goes out as one of the captains tonight. Uh, Devin Lemire back with the team this year. That is a good sign as well to get him back, J.J., in the secondary. Yeah, that, that's, I mean, I, I really didn't think he'd potentially be back that quickly, John. That was a pretty bad-looking injury, uh, but it's good to see him out there. The experience in the defensive backfield uh, will be uh, very important to have. Let's go down right, to the guys, field. Our referee to the tonight, tonight is Derek Anderson. 2023 Big 12 Conference play. Texas, you're the visitors tonight. You'll be calling the toss. This is our coin. The Big 12 logo will be head. The side with the teams will represent tails. What is your call? Tails. Tails is the call. It is tails. Defer to the second half. I'd like to defer. You want the ball? Which way do you want to kick? You guys switch around. Texas has won the toss and deferred their selection to the second half. Baylor will receive on this end. That's the voice of Derek Anderson, our lead official tonight. Here is the Big 12 crew working tonight's Baylor-Texas matchup. Derek Anderson, referee, Buckhorn, Texas. Daniel Young, back judge from Kingwood, Texas. Brian Ollis, center judge, Eva Beach, Hawaii. Mark Graves, side judge, Carthage, Texas. Quentin Givens, line judge, Los Angeles, California. Doug Moore, head lines, Modesto, California. Gabriel DeLeon, field judge, Bronx, New York. Michael Henderson, umpire, tough streets of Texas. <laughs> it's our Big 12 officiating crew. We're 
marking the game coming up this evening. So the Bears will kick off. Texas won the, uh, actually Baylor will receive. Texas won the toss. They deferred to the second half. We'll see Baylor out there first on offense. Sawyer Robertson will be the quarterback for the Bears out of Lubbock Coronado, a transfer from Mississippi State. J.J. just 10 of 22, 113 yards and a touchdown last week against LIU. I say, I say just because I think he's capable of a lot more. I think that ankle really bothered him last Saturday. I, it really did. I mean, you saw it the first time you really saw it is when he when he ran the ball. He really had a, a limp to him. So, so I think today he can't make the game bigger than what it is. It's, at the end of the day, I know it's UT and they beat Alabama and all that, but it's just a football game that with a, you get the first hit, take what's easy, and then whenever you have an opportunity to take a shot, you try to make sure you capitalize. But just play within yourself. it would be interesting to see how he performs today. Will Stone approaches the ball right to left. Tome eats leather. Kick is away. Richard Reese lets it sail over his head out the back of the end zone. And Baylor will begin on the touchback at their own 25-yard line. It's going to be our starting lineups tonight. The starting lineups brought to you, as always, by Baylor Scott & White, Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics. When it comes to... Uh, Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics, they bring the home team advantage to Central Texans. And for the Bears, it is Sawyer Robertson trotting out there at quarterback. Reese will be in the backfield to start for the Bears. The offensive line for the Bears, Campbell Barrington, Gavin Byers, Clark Barrington, and uh, Caden Soraki on that front line. Alvin Abosile also at left tackle for the Bears. Baylor traveling left to right, all green uniforms, gold numerals and lettering. They'll start from their own 25-yard line. Kelsey Johnson goes in motion, pass to the left side, caught by Keetron Jackson, ushered out of bounds at the 28-yard line. So a nice, easy toss and a three-yard pickup on first down. And, John, that's what, uh, Ricky, I talked about that last week. Quick, easy completions for Sawyer, I think, helps get his confidence up. Well, absolutely, and we talked about that, too. Also gets the outside guys involved in the game on the first play. Second and seven, that's not a bad spot. And here's Dominic Richardson onto the field of this second play from scrimmage. Great to see him back out there. Missed last week's game with the ankle injury. Robertson under center. Kelsey Johnson moves from the right side to the left side. Richardson in the backfield. Fake the handoff. Pressure and a sack back at the 20-yard line. Down goes Sawyer Robertson. The sack by Jet Bush. Bush with the sack, the senior linebacker out of Houston, straight Jesuit. Well, John, just too slow developing. It really was going to end up being a screen. You saw the linemen. The linemen really, they, they're supposed to chuck. That means chuck the linemen to slow them down, and then they release. But I think we released a little too fast. And once Sawyer came off the play action fake, he was going to go back to a screen, and unfortunately the pressure was too much. And he kind of got up limping on that, yeah. and you don't like that. Not a good sign. Third down, 15 for the Bears after the sack. First of the night by Texas. Here's Robertson in the pocket, stands in, and down he goes. Crumpled back inside the 15-yard line. Sacks on back-to-back -back plays by UT. This time, Byron Murphy, the second, got to him. The junior nose tackle out of DeSoto. And the Bears are going to have to punt the ball away. The line of scrimmage inside their own 15. Well, you know, I mean, one thing I've, you learn about UT is their defense. They're much faster, uh, much faster in slow-developing pass plays are going to be a challenge to run against this team. And we saw that on the last couple of plays. Snap back, flag, whistles flag. fly, and the flag is dropped at the snap. False start, number 24, offense. Uh. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. This is not good because, John, uh, they have Xavier Worthy standing on about uh, the 45-yard, like UT's 45. Now he moves to the 50. And if you saw him return a couple of punts uh, last week, I believe it was, he had a really good one. So it's going to be a challenge here uh, for Baylor to keep this ball, for Palmer Williams to keep this ball away uh, from Worthy. All right, line of scrimmage is the nine and a half. Snap back to Williams, boots it away into a bit of a wind. Worthy will call for the fair catch and takes it at the 41, 42 yard line. So UT will have the ball, no return on the fair catch. Nice punt, really, out of there by Palmer Williams. 48-yard punt. And Ricky, uh, teams uh, now give the ball over to Texas, their first offensive possession. Well, I tell you what, guys, that kick was against the wind. Huh. There's some, a breeze coming out of the south. That was a great punt, particularly after being backed up to your nine-yard line. This is good field position for Texas, but could have been much, much better. Yeah, great point. 42-yard line is where they will begin this possession. Texas in all white, Baylor in all green tonight. 
Quinn Ewers is the quarterback, the sophomore out of South Lake Carroll, a transfer to Texas from Ohio State. Swings it out to Worthy on the right side. He is planted for a loss. What great coverage over there by That's Baylor. Caden Jenkins, the freshman, sniffed that one out, and he tackles Xavier Worthy for a loss back to the 37. Well, they bring, they bring Worthy in that motion behind the quarterback where you can set up a double pass off that action, so that'll probably be coming. But Caden Jenkins triggered. Right off the pass. He was up in press man coverage. He didn't get blocked. Nice play. Second down, 16. Second down, 16 for the Longhorns. They're back to their own 37-yard line. Ewers in the shotgun. He will hand the ball off, running right side, off right tackle. Does push the pile forward. That is Jonathan Brooks, the sophomore tailback out of Hallettsville. Six foot, 207 pound sophomore. It's a Texas team that returns all five starters in the offensive line from a year ago and 10 offensive starters back from last year. They're averaging 34 points per game and they've got a third down and 10 right here. Third down and 10 from their own 42, 11, 37 and counting first quarter. Bears really stacked that line of scrimmage. Pass near side is caught, blocker in front of him. Jatavian Sanders finally spilled, but he's got a first down across midfield to the Baylor 47. Boy, that was a well-conceived play. Sanders with the catch and a first down for UT. Well, I mean, Jatavian Sanders, it's pretty easy. Baylor was going to bail. They were going, they had nine players on the line of scrimmage if you count the corners press. And then they bailed out of it. But as they bailed out of it, Jatavian Sanders only takes like a two-yard pass from the Ewers, and he had a couple blockers in front. Easy pitch and catch. First down and 10 at the Baylor 47, running right side. Strung out, and Baylor gets him on the ground. Jordan Whittington with that uh, carry for UT. And let's see who makes the tackle for the Bears. Mike Smith. Mike Smith leads the way for Baylor. And Devin Lemire back. Welcome back, Devin Lemire in on that tackle as well. That was a gain of six to the Baylor 42. Yeah, you can tell Devin has that, he has that brace on his arm, but he's really, he's shown, he's, the recognition was pretty quick. Uh, nice, easy, quick passes for Quinn Ewers to get him into the game. Empty backfield, three receivers left, two to the right side. Ewers going to run. He's down at the 41. Got only a yard on that carry. Cooper lands. Gabe Hall on the tackle for the Bears. There's another third down for UT. They converted on their last one. This one will be third down and about four. Yeah, and John, this is where you got to have a playmaker. I mean, you got to get people off the field on that previous third and nine. There's no way that should go, but here they go. Quick snap back to uh, Ewers. He is stacked up. Brooks pushed backwards. A loss on the play of a yard. The Bears hold on third down and four. It's fourth down coming up for UT. Well, right there, a lot of guys. John up front, Gabe Hall, Cooper Lance, they're all right there. But then you see Matt Jones coming behind. And I said one of the keys I had, I ripped this in an article, or I wrote this in an article earlier, is that on your defensive line, they have to do one of two things. Either they get penetration as UT lines up the punt, got to watch the fake here, or they hold, they really tie up blockers and allow those linebackers to, flo to flow freely. Ryan Sanborn is the punter. Snap back, chest high, Josh Cameron awaits. Trying to pin the Bears deep, Cameron runs away from it. Ball is batted back in. <laughs> and then went back across the line. I don't know if it hadn't gone back. It looked like he was in the end zone. Ricky, how'd that look? Did he almost? I think, I think the ball was already in the end zone before okay. it was batted back. It flicked across, hit the end line, then the Texas defender knocked it back. I think that's a touchback either way. Yeah, I think so. So touchback, and the Bears will uh, have possession of the ball. A nice third down stop forcing the punt for the Baylor defense. 9-14 on the clock, first quarter. It's Baylor nothing, Texas nothing, and we'll be right back on the Baylor Sports Media Network. This is Walter Abercrombie. Idea out of this break? Of the Baylor Bee Association with a special invitation to join us November 3rd for our 2023 Baylor Athletic Hall of Fame and Wall of Honor induction banquet. This year's outstanding class includes Max Muncie from Baylor Baseball, basketball standout and longtime radio analyst Pat Nunley, the Hall of Fame class also includes Ken Quisenberry and J.D. Walton from football, track and field's Tiffany Townsend, Sandy Forsyth-Massey, and Stan Curry, and Dennis Lukash from men's tennis. 
Also recognized will be former tennis level winner George Chandler as the latest addition to the Bee Association's Wall of Honor. The 2023 induction banquet will be held Friday, November 3rd at the Cashin Building on Baylor campus. For tickets or table sponsorships, contact Tammy Harden at 254-710-3045 or email her at Tammy underscore Harden at Baylor.edu. We hope to see you there. At Allen Samuels in Waco, we've got amazing deals that make you ask, why shop anywhere else? During Ram Power Days, get a new 2023 1500 Lone Star 4x4 Crew Cab, $11,000 off MSRP or 2.9% for 72 months. Or choose a new 2023 1500 Laramie 4x4 Crew Cab, $12,500 off MSRP or 2.9% for 72 months. That's right, we're making big deals, so hurry in today. Allen Samuels in Waco, the place to shop Ram Truck. Hi, this is John Morris for Green Eye Associates. Let Green Eye Associates, Doctors Leanne Green and Avery Platt help you see Waco clearly. Their experienced team enjoys making your eye exam fun, easy, and accurate, providing trustworthy and honest communication about your eyes and eyewear. Visit them on Lake Air Drive or at GreenEyeAssociates.com to see their services and a wide selection of eyewear made on site by experts. Green Eye Associates, official optometrist of Baylor Athletics. You're listening to Baylor Football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Ricky Thompson with a special guest. Yeah, guys, we have got Keontae George here, now the Utah Jazz, former Baylor Bear and Big 12 Freshman of the Year. Congratulations, Keontae. Welcome back. Appreciate that, man. It's a great environment out here, man. Big game, so having a lot of fun. Well, tell us a little bit about what's going on with you now in Utah and your off season. Yeah, man, just trying to get better each and every day. Um, just trying to get to know my teammates a little bit better each and every day, like I said. Um, you know, just trying to get better at the end of the day, trying to, you know, accomplish something, you know, bigger than myself. So, um, you know, the, we all have a common goal. So just been enjoying myself out in Salt Lake. Awesome. Congratulations. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really nice. Thanks, Rick. Ricky Thompson, call to the sidelines, brought to you by Alliance Bank. Alliance Bank, it's your bank. Bears begin at their own 20 after the touchback. Snap back to Sawyer Robertson. Pitch running right. Uh, Richard Reese pushed out of bounds at the 26-yard line. 26 and a half, actually. So nice little pickup on first down. Yeah, John, I think we need more of that right there. Nice, easy toss into the boundary. Richard Reese gets it. Great blocking out front, and then he picks up five, six yards. So nice first down play. Second down, four for Baylor. Reese in the backfield again. Robertson will give it to him again. Looking for room up the middle. There is nothing there. They'll give him forward progress to the 27, so maybe a half yard there. So third down and three coming up. Devondre Sweat makes the tackle in the defensive uh, line. Senior out of Huntsville. Big dude, 6'4". 362, J.J. Yeah, that, yeah, he didn't start today. I mean, today they started Alfred Collins, but he's a big man in the middle. And if you're going to run, you got to get him blocked. Third and two, this is where you want to be, but you got to get a push on that nose gut tackle. It is third and two. Swing pass near side, caught by Hal Presley. He's out of bounds, and that's a first down for the Bears. Quick hitter to Presley, stepped out of bounds at the 31, and the Bears have their first first down of the night. First down sponsored by Belfour Property Restoration, a proud partner of Baylor Athletics. Well, what I like is I do like getting the ball out of Sawyer Robertson's hands early. I don't like the long play action pass where he turns his back on the defense because he really take his completion percentages down, and those slow developing plays then make result in pressure being on his face. So Dominic Richardson is in. They're in a, a two tight formation, and this here would either be a play action opportunity or give Dominic a little run here. Now Gavin Yates breaks into the backfield. Eye formation behind Sawyer Robertson. He'll turn. He'll give the ball to Dominic Richardson. Stacked up. No gain. In fact, a loss back to the 28-yard line. Loss of three on that play. It was Broughton who made the tackle for uh, for UT. Yeah, that's going to be hard. See, they, they were, Baylor was over toward the right. I don't think they were all on the half. They try to run to the wide side of the field with a wide zone. Well, I can guarantee you, UT, usually that's going to be run straight to the field. And they slanted that way. And when they slanted that way, there's no way for those linemen to cut off those defensive linemen. So there, there Baylor lost play, lost yardage on that play, second and 13. Now, now you're going to force Robertson, as Pendergrass comes in, to throw the ball against coverage. So another back in the backfield. It's Pendergrass, the freshman, on second and third, or yeah, second and 13. And pressure, and Robertson goes down. 
Third sack by UT. This is Vernon Broughton again who gets to quarterback Sawyer Robertson. Sacked uh, just inside the 25. So here is a big third down and 16 coming up for the Bears. Yeah, and right there, I mean, it was just a, they were trying to get Drake Dabney left to right, and it's to get a tight end from one side to the other. You just need time, and UT's already shown they're going to get pressure, so the ball has to come out quick, uh, especially as UT shows that five-man rush. Third down and 16, snap back to Robertson. Sets up the screen, pass too tall for Dominic Richardson, incomplete. So the Bears will have to punt the ball away. Fourth down and 16. Another sack by UT. Boy, they are really getting, getting in and getting in quickly on the quarterback, Sawyer Robertson. Yeah, I mean, Baylor right now is giving up three sacks, and then we also had a penalty on the last couple of drives. On that one, they got the first down and, and then just couldn't do anything with it. And Sawyer did the right thing. He threw it over the head, didn't put the ball in peril. They're going to punt it away. But got to find something to some consistency uh, to get away from the sacks. Those lost yardage plays are just hard to overcome. Palmer Williams boots it away. This one kind of gets caught up in the wind, bounces at the 44 of Texas and out of bounds on the far sideline. No return on the play, a 31-yard punt by Palmer Williams. Doesn't get the effort that he had the, uh, the last time, but uh, Texas has the ball back. Bears three and out. Actually, no, they had a first down on that possession but they give the ball back to the Longhorns and three sacks by the Texas defense on uh, Baylor's first two possessions. I want you to hear from uh, Steve Sarkeesian, the head coach for Texas in his third year, uh, talking about um, the fact that uh, Texas, everywhere they go this year, they're going to get everybody's best effort, right? They're getting Baylor's best effort, but everybody in the Big 12 is going to want to get a win over the Longhorns on their way out the door. Sarkeesian has a term for that. He's saying it is embracing the hate. Well, I think we just need to understand what we're walking into. You know, we're going to walk, we're going to go into Baylor here Saturday night on the road. Um, it's been well documented that as of right now, the last time we're, 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 we're going to play Baylor, last time we're going to go there. And so we understand the environment we're walking into, and, and we can't, be fearful of that. You know, we we have to embrace it. We gotta we gotta walk in there and, and be ourselves and play our brand of football, but understand what we're going into. And so, you know, I do think that's part of it. I do think, you know, as, as a lot of these games and, and historical games that are gonna come to a close this season, um, now more than ever are their horns down, right? Now more than ever are their, you know, who cares about Texas? Let's uh, let's let's take one more shot at them on the, on the way out. And so, we can't sit here and, and be a punching bag. You know, we, we got to walk in there and we have to be in attack mode, um, and, and we have to make sure that um, you know we're built for the environment. And I think we've proven that to ourselves now over kind of the last couple of road games that we've had, and uh, no more than than going to Alabama and in, embracing that environment. So uh, we're gonna have to do the same Saturday night. Steve Sarkeesian, the head coach at the University of Texas. Uh, I think he's right. I think he's being very uh, realistic, knowing what Texas is going to be in for every every road game this year. Yeah, and John, it's, it's, that's UT anyway. I mean, they're they're, right. they're they're the state university, so they're going to be they're going to be looked at as the, the the target for most programs. But but I, I think today, really, what he realizes is that the open conference. A lot of times, your players after you win a big game like that against Alabama. Really going to you know a, Wake, a Baylor team that's one and two, you can lose a little of the edge, and I think what he wants to make sure for his team is that they keep that edge. So what's important for Baylor is early on we've given UT good field position here, John. They'll get the ball at the 45. This is prime position for a shot. So it'll be interesting to see what the coach, what the coverage is. But I would not listen to Stark's. I mean Stark's comment is that you know you have Worthy in, you have you have Mitchell in out there on the right side. Worthy is by himself out to the left, wide side of the field, one-on-one. -on -one. If he doesn't see double coverage, I would not be surprised to see a shot. It's Paul's here, 10 seconds for station identification. Back in 10 seconds on the Baylor Sports Media Network. From the Allen Samuels Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Studios, this is KRZI Waco, K222DC Waco, K265DV Temple, ESPN Central Texas. Scoreless first quarter, Texas from their own 45 pass near side, caught by Xavier Worthy. There's that man coverage that J.J. saw, 
coverage by Chateau Reed. The catch was made. Reed wrapped him up quickly, but a gain of 15 to the Baylor 40 on that completion. Well, John, what he's going to do, he was going to, he had an option route. He was going to try to get on top of, of Chateau Reed. He was going to try to go by him. Chateau Reed did a great job of mirroring him, not letting him get on top, so he shuts it down at about 13-14. And there's no one between him and the quarterback. Easy pitch and catch. Scoreless. Baylor in Texas. 528 on the clock. First quarter. Snap back to yours. He'll hand the ball off to Brooks. Slips one tackle. Runs right. He's around the corner. 30, 20, 10 to the 5. Pushed forward. He is in. Touchdown. Wow. Baylor had a shot at him to knock him out of bounds inside the 10. Pushed him forward, not out of bounds. And that is a 40-yard touchdown run by Jonathan Brooks. And Texas draws first blood. They're up 6-0 on the Bears. Well, that's just, I mean, Baylor did a great job up front. But then that play is designed uh, for Mike Smith to make a tackle. And Mike missed him on that play. You'll see uh, Baylor got free. They did a great job of sealing on uh, Baylor's down lineman. Uh, Smith gets around. He misses that tackle. And once you miss that tackle, what you'll see is that young man can run, Jonathan Brooks. Uh, he showed it right there. Burnt Auburn is on for the extra point kick. It is good. And Texas does take the early lead. 5.15 on the clock. First quarter from McLean Stadium. Our score, Texas 7, Baylor nothing. You're listening to Baylor Bear Football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. No matter which road you take, the Toyota Tundra is the perfect way to navigate it. On your path, you're your own boss and set your own hours. Look at that sunrise. You may find your well, I mean, some pretty remote places. Whoa, that view. It's amazing. Or in places. Okay, John, this is the last one before the end of the quarter break. Legends. Okay. Yeah, I got one. Thanks. I got one. It's a keeper. Hey, get a picture. No one's going to believe this. And each day ends binge watching stars and dreaming about all the things you'll do the next day. You know what? I'm catching a bigger fish tomorrow. Built to follow your path, the Toyota Tundra. This Texan knows how to sick them. Toyota is a proud partner of Baylor Athletics. Visit your local Toyota dealer or toyota.com to check out the rugged Tundra today. Toyota, let's go places. See packages and options at toyota.com for feature availability. TFNB Your Bank for Life is the official local bank of Baylor Athletics. Find out why more Central Texas are making TFNB their bank for life. Sign up for our Edge Checking and Savings accounts to earn interest or cash back with five convenient locations and an award-winning mobile app. Banking has never been easier. TFNB Your Bank for Life. Member FDIC. For a limited time, get high-performance, ultra-reliable internet from Astound Broadband, starting as low as $25 per month. And now we have mobile, too. Visit Astound.com to order the number one rated internet. Create the perfect plan with fast speeds to meet all your needs. Plus, get a two-year price lock when you upgrade to award-winning gig internet. No contracts, no hidden monthly fees, and no data caps. Switch today. Head to Astound.com or call 1-800-4-ASTOUND. Restrictions apply. See website for details. You're listening to Baylor Football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. H-E-B, our game sponsor tonight. H-E-B, Baylor Football 2023 is presented by H-E-B. And H-E-B, our game sponsor this evening. How about that efficient two-play 55-yard scoring drive by UT. 46 seconds off the clock. Texas takes a 7-0 lead on Baylor with 5.15 on the clock here in the first quarter. Yeah, John, just very efficient. And uh, Sark, I mean, he's got, when you give UT and a UT offense that uh, they're averaging over 30 points a game, and Sark's offense usually averages over 30 points. If you give them good field position consistently, they're going to eventually score on you pretty quick. Uh, they have skilled players that can run, as Coach you here to Randa say pregame. They have really good skilled players. And right there, Jonathan Brooks showed uh, what speed does, and that's why I say, like, for Baylor, it's important that certain guys touch the ball because if you make one miss, and what happened is Jonathan Brooks, he bounced his right, Mike Smith was there to make a play, he misses him, and then all of a sudden the speed makes the difference. He outruns a couple guys. So uh, Baylor has to respond here. We'll see what Coach Grimes has cooked up. All right, Texas to kick it off from right to left. That wind at their ba back here for the final 5.15 of the first quarter. Will Stone to kick it off. 
Richard Reese, Dawson Pendergrass back deep for the Bears. Reese will let it sail over his head. Ten yards deep and out the back of the end zone. Bears will begin at their own 25-yard line. Well, John, right now, Baylor has negative five yards offense, and a lot of that is due to the sack. So uh, against a number three team in the country, you can't go two possessions that have negative five yards if you're going to stay in the game. So this is a huge drive. Third possession of the night for the Bears, trailing now seven to nothing. Sawyer Robertson trots back out there at quarterback for the Bears. Dominic Richardson in the backfield. Josh Cameron, one of the re receivers, splits from the right side to a slot on the left side. Keetron Jackson also on the left side for the Bears. Tight end on the right side is Drake Dabney. Now Cameron in motion, left to right, switches back around. Handoff, Dominic Richardson. He is met and stonewalled at the 21 and a half yard line. He will lose about three and a half yards on that play. Andre Sweat with another tackle. Well, just too much penetration, John, up front. I mean, they did a great job of penetrating up front. As Alpha Collins was one of the defensive tackle, uh, as well as uh, I think they got 90. It's another sub in. I think that's uh, uh, Teandre Sweat. I mean, they just got too much penetration up front. Uh, made a big difference, second and 13. From their own 22-yard line for the Bears, snap back to Robertson in the shotgun. Deep throw, right sideline. Keetron Jackson runs under it. He's got it. And out of bounds at the Texas 40-yard line. Well-placed pass from Sawyer Robertson to Keetron Jackson. And the Bears, their biggest single play of the night so far. And that's what you got to have. You got to have a good play by Sawyer. It's an easy throw for a quarterback. Hit that, hit that fourth foot or that fifth foot. Then you let the ball fly. Did a great job of letting Keetron run up under it. You remember last week, he kind of threw it on the line. It, over, it went over Keetron's head. This week, he gives a little air. Keytron runs to it, makes a great catch. Uh, first and 10 from the uh, Baylor 39. Now about 39 yards on that completion. Sawyer Robertson to Keytron Jackson. Bears have it at the Texas 39. Passes down the near sideline. Looking for a double pass. Nope. Uh, Neighbors is going to tuck it and look to run. He's inside the 35. That was uh, the potential for a double pass, Ricky. Uh, didn't see what was downfield, but neighbors thought his best option was just to run with it. Well, I was behind it, and there's nothing wrong with that. He still picked up five yards, yeah. but I like the call. You've got a first down on the 39 going in. You need big plays to be in this football game. So I like that call. I like the attempt. I also like neighbors' decision to tuck it and run. Smart play. The first down on the previous play, Belfour donating $10 per Baylor first down to Waco first responders this year. Snap back to Robertson, second down and five. Passing into the end zone. Josh Cameron, the intended receiver, and a flag on the play. A lot of bumping as Cameron ran into the end zone trying to get to this one. That one, it may very well be pass interference. Well, and, John, what I like here is it pass interference, make, number 16, call. defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, what I like here is Coach, Coach Grimes has made a decision to do is go vertical. And, and now I, 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 like, I like what he's doing. And I think that has created, number one, a big play, then a pass and a French penalty because uh, right there, I think that's Jordan Cameron got mixed up with the safety. He got matched up one-on-one -on -one with a safety, and all the safety could do really is face guard him and push him, and that created the contact, first and 10 from the 20. So first down for the Bears. They're in the HEB red zone at the 20-yard line. First and 10, Baylor. Robertson in the shotgun. And flags will drop. Oh, it's going to be a motion penalty against Baylor. You know what's interesting? Uh, looking at the stats this week from the Big 12, here's the call. Derek Anderson, our referee. Prior to the play clock expiring, timeout, uh, Baylor. Oh, okay. They're first of the half. So not motion and so not a delay of game, a timeout for the Bears. I was going to say, these are two of the least penalized teams in the Big 12. I was surprised oh, to really? see that. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> it kind of surprises you. Uh, that Baylor has uh, been penalized 16 times for 95 yards. Texas 15 times for 120 yards. With with respect to the number number of penalty yards, wow. these teams are one and two in okay. the least penalized teams this year. Well, if you remember, Baylor had a really choppy game against Texas State, the false starts. I and remember. Then, and then Utah, it was a little bit better. It was a little bit better. And then, really, last week, really not many penalties. But I'm glad. I mean, right there, that was a pretty quick clock. Uh, so, right now, first and 10 at the 20. Baylor hasn't been as efficient inside the 20. So, important drive. 
First down 10 for the Bears at the Texas 20, trailing 7 to nothing. 3.14 on the clock, first quarter. Robertson time, and he just throws it at the feet of Jordan Neighbors on the right side. Pressure was coming. He had to get rid of the ball. Pressure uh, was uh, about to get to him. Alfred Collins, the senior defensive tackle out of Bastrop. Didn't get there. He threw it away. Lives to fight another day. Second down and 10 from the 20. Well, what I like about that, very smart play, but now he's four of six. What Coach Grimes has done is he scheduled some easy completion. Sorry, he's a little bit more confident. Now it's second and 10. Right here, you have an option of trying to run that ball on a draw play or get it out here to the right. Dominic Richardson in the backfield. Snap back to Robertson. Looking to throw. Pressure again. Now rolling right. Now going to run with it. Robertson out of bounds inside the 15 and pushed hard. See if there isn't a flag that comes there. There is not. But Robertson, what a pickup to the nine-yard line. That's an 11-yard gain and a Baylor first down. Well, I said before the game, Ricky needed to find a way to get Sawyer's feet in there. Didn't see anything. Great choice by him. Well, I tell you what, he also made a good move to shake that loose. They had the angle on him. He made a move at the line of scrimmage, picked up the first down. That will take a lot of the pressure off the pass rush right there. First and goal for the Bears at the Texas nine-yard line. Dominic Richardson in the backfield off the right shoulder of Robertson. Takes the snap. Hand to Richardson. Up the middle. He is to the six-yard line. A three-yard gain on the play. First down run on that previous play. This season, Belfour will donate $10 per Baylor first down to Waco First Responders. Thank you to Belfour for supporting first responders. Well, you can tell Dominique Richardson, Yeoman's effort. I mean, he looks pretty good, but you can tell he doesn't have that pop yet uh, coming off that high ankle sprain, but got a nice gain here. Baylor was at about the 10, so it's a long first now second, I mean, first to goal, now second down and goal from the six. With Dawson Pendergrass in the backfield. Al Presley in motion, snap back. Robertson calls his own number, looking to run. Dives out of bounds. Let's see where they spot it. Maybe about the five. Uh, yeah, about half a yard. Yeah, think, yeah, not much. Yeah, they'll spot it about the five, so he had a yard there. It'll be third and goal for the Bears. Ball just inside the five. Let's go down to Ricky. Well, a lot of speed and size on this Texas defense. That's a tough call for Sawyer to try to get outside on that play. But good job, didn't lose any ground, gained a yard. Third and five, big call here to see if the Bears take two plays to try to punch this in. From the five-yard line, third down and goal for Baylor. Dominic Richardson in the backfield. Robertson fakes the handoff, rolling left, looking to throw. Flags down. Robertson now will run with it. He is hit hard and tackled at the seven-yard line. Let's check the flag, and this one may be against the Bears. Yeah, it's right there in the middle of the line. It's holding, so they're going to ask Coach Sark, what does he want to do? I think, I believe, he'll decline it, but uh, we'll see as he communicates with the official. It would be fourth and goal from about the five or six, five. Holding number 87 offense. That penalty is declined, fourth down. Yeah, yeah, and right here, now Baylor's going to bring in the field goal unit. And it, it's not a bad result. If you think about it, Baylor was facing a uh, second and 16, picked up the fade route to key transaction. But once you get inside that 20, have a first and 10 from the 20, you got you want to clip it in at a high rate. But... Right here, Baylor's going to settle for about a 22, 23-yard field goal attempt. Kicking from the left hash, kicking left to right. It's Isaiah Hankins, 5 of 7 on the year. Good snap, good hold, and the kick is good by Isaiah Hankins. Bears are on the board with a minute 7 to play. First quarter, our new score, Texas 7, Baylor 3. Our first score of the night brought to you by Huns Pickles and Relish, proud sponsors of Baylor Bear Athletics. That's a darn good pickle. Available at restaurants and food service outlets throughout the Southwest. Also look for Hunt's Pickles in the deli section at select grocers throughout North Texas. Give you the drive for the Bears. About nine plays, 70 yards, 408 off the clock. Ricky, it ends with uh, three, not seven. But uh, Bears showed some life and really a spark offensively on that possession. Well, they did, and the other thing, you don't give the ball right back to Texas after they put points on the board. So that drive was important for a lot of reasons. More than anything, hopefully some confidence for this offense. Hit the deep ball again. What, second and 15, 16 when they hit that one. So that was a huge play. Then a couple more plays downfield. The pass interference 
Couldn't punch it in, but that should give them some confidence. You're 7-3, 107 to go in the first. Bears to kick it off from left to right again into that breeze. As Ricky said, 107 on the clock in the first quarter. Keelan Robinson is back deep. He'll have a chance to return this one. Taking it to the oh. four, he drops it. He falls forward and cover recovers that ball. Boy, Baylor was closing fast on Keelan Robinson. Specifically, uh, Cameron Bonner was all in his grill trying to get to that loose ball, but Robinson covered it. Texas has the ball. They'll begin at their own 12-yard line, leading Baylor 7-3. to three. Well, Baylor has to figure out now, what are we going to do with Worthy when we see him wide side of the field? Do we leave him one-on-one? Because -on -one? yours has an NFL-level arm, so if you give him one-on-one, -on -one, he's going to either run a fly, he may run an out, or he may run a shutdown, they call it, if he can't get on top of the DB. Uh, and then now, the running game. We just saw Jonathan Brooks get into the game. So, uh, got to make plays up front from that second level to keep these playmakers from making big plays. Snap back to Ewers. He'll pitch it to Brooks in the backfield, running left. Bears string it out. He's out of bounds at the 16. I'm sorry, another back. C.J. Baxter was questionable going into this game. Freshman from Orlando, five-star back, and he picks up about four yards to the 16. Let's go down to Ricky. There guys, Devin Lemire had a shot. Had Baxter right at the line of scrimmage, but that's, again, speed. But it did force him outside, so the Bears were able to make a play to hold that to a four-yard game. Nice. Second down six for Texas from their own 16-yard line. Ewers in the pocket, has time. Pass over the middle is caught at the 30-yard line. Boy, a lot of time to find his receiver, make the throw, and a completion to Adonai Mitchell, a junior from Missouri City, a transfer from Georgia, and he makes his first catch of the night for a first down out to the 32. Quick snap. Tempo, quick snap, hand off to Brooks. He is stacked up, he is down. Gain of a couple to the 34. Matt Jones for the middle linebacker spot makes the tackle. Yeah, Matt did a great job there. UT will often use the, they don't play fast, they don't huddle, but they don't necessarily play fast. But sometimes they'll have automatics, and that was an automatic, and Matt Jones made a play. John, as the quarter comes to an end, Baylor's hung in, uh, despite being a little bit hesitant on offense, but 7-3. Give you some first quarter stats when we come back. End of one at McLean Stadium. It's Texas 7, Baylor 3. Our coverage continues after this word from your local station. At Allen Samuels in Waco, we've got amazing deals that make you ask, why shop anywhere else? During Ram Power Days, get a new 2023 1500 Lone Star 4x4 Crew Cab, $11,000 off MSRP or 2.9% for 72 months. Or choose a new 2023 1500 Laramie 4x4 Crew Cab, $12,500 off MSRP or 2.9% for 72 months. That's right, we're making big deals, so hurry in today. Allen Samuels in Waco, the place to shop Ram Truck. Baylor alumni are more than 160,000 strong. When we all join hands to support our university, we don't just move the needle, we move mountains. Working together, we create life-changing opportunities for students on the field, in the classroom, in the laboratory, and in life for generations to come. So get connected, get involved. Learn how at baylor.edu slash alumni. If you need a trailer, Flat Rock Trailers has got you covered. From light duty single axle utility trailers to the big Tex tandem duels. We also carry a full line of enclosed cargo trailers. Need a motorcycle trailer? We've got them. Need a dump trailer? We've got the largest selection in the state. Oil field trailers? We carry a full line of big Tex trailers to handle all your needs. Trailer repairs? We repair all makes and models. We'll even rent you a trailer if you need to use one for a day. Flat Rock Trailers, your number one source for all your trailer needs. Find us at flatrocktrailers.com. Hi, this is John Morris for Green Eye Associates. Let Green Eye Associates, Drs. Leanne Green and Avery Platt help you see Waco clearly. Their experienced team enjoys making your eye exam fun, easy, and accurate, providing trustworthy and honest communication about your eyes and eyewear. Visit them on Lake Air Drive or at greeneyeassociates.com to see their services and a wide selection of eyewear made on-site by experts. Green Eye Associates, official optometrist of Baylor Athletics. You're listening to Baylor football. Baylor football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. As we move to the second quarter here at McLean Stadium, thanks again to HEB, our game corporate sponsor tonight. 
Bryce Hager, our legend of the game, being recognized on the field. J.J., how about some of the stats through 15 minutes tonight? Well, but well, John Baylor trails 3-7, and the stat line kind of bears that out. 94 total yards for UT, 50 for Baylor. In the rush category, Baylor negative two yards rushing, and, of course, that sack yardage uh, counts against your rush totals. But despite that, Dominic Richardson, three carries uh, for a total of a negative three yards. Uh, Richard Reese, one carry for one yard, and uh, Jake Neighbors, one carry for five yards. So the running backs are really not doing uh, very productive due to what's happening up front. Uh, Sawyer Robertson, uh, four of six for 52 yards. It's good to see that completion percentage up. Coach Grimes has dialed up a few pretty easy completions, hit one deep one to Keetron Jackson, who has two catches for 42 yards, uh, versus, and Richard Reese, one for seven. Uh, Quinn Ewers, six of six for 46 yards on some very simple throws, uh, but they're keeping his confidence up, keeping him efficient. Uh, Jonathan Brooks on that long, long 40-yard scamper with four carries for 46 yards, holding him pretty well, but he does have one touchdown afternoon. Xavier Worthy, two catches uh, for 10 total yards. John, first downs uh, for Baylor, four for each team. Uh, and then in the red zone, uh, we know UT has uh, the – actually, that wasn't a red zone score. Baylor one of one, but that one was a field goal attempt as we start the second quarter here. Switch ends. Texas traveling left to right. They've got the ball just shy of the 35-yard line, leading Baylor 7-3. to three. Texas with possession of the ball. Second down and seven for UT. First play of the second quarter. Handoff running up the middle from the backfield. C.J. Baxter with the carry. And Baxter is down at the 39. So it's uh, here's another third down, third and about three, about three, three for Texas. Well, Texas on the afternoon is one of two on third downs. Baylor one of four. Didn't get to that stat. But UT on the season, uh, not a great third down team. You think with all the, the production that they've had over the last uh, couple of games, beating Alabama, they're about 37%. Not bad, but not great. Third and three. Brooks in the backfield. Here's the play. Third down and three. Ewers in oh, the pocket. Yeah. Passes. Patted down. Incomplete. Gabe Hall got to then and knocked the ball out of the air. Incomplete. That is a hold on third down, bringing up fourth down in a punting situation for Texas. Well, Gabe Hall did the right thing. He was getting blocked well. The, left, the right tackle was holding him uh, at bay. I think that was Christian Jones. Well, what, what do you do if you can't get there? Well, when you see that quarterback's arm go back, the defensive linemen are taught, get your hands up. And he did a great job because Quinn was looking to go underneath. Gabe knocks that down. Fourth down and about three. Baylor's going to have an opportunity here at a return. Got to watch the fake on this short fourth down. Big-time play by Gabe Hall, the senior defensive end out of Waller. Baylor pressure on the punter, and he gets it away. Josh Cameron is going to let it bounce. Goes out of bounds and will be spotted at the 21, 22, keep going, 23-yard line. So the Bears, Bears have the ball back. 38-yard punt by UT's Ryan Sandboard. Change of possession. Bears have the ball. 14.05 on the clock, second quarter. Texas leading Baylor 7-3. to three. Well, let's see if going deep a couple of times pays off. And what that means is those two safeties uh, right now uh, at their safety position uh, looks like it's a number two, Derek J Williams Jr., and I believe this is 28, Jaron Thompson. See if they stay back and two deep uh, b back to protect against the fly. They have Monterey in the slot, which would be matched up with one of those safeties if they stay man. First down 10 from the 23-yard line for the Bears, traveling right to left, second quarter. Snap back to Sawyer Robertson, fakes the handoff, has time, passes over the middle, it's caught at the 40-yard line. Monterey Baldwin scooting across the middle, makes the catch, pushed out of bounds at the 46. A big gainer for the Bears on first down, 23 yards. Well, I like Monterey in the game, and that's he went to the slot to the boundary. He runs, he runs up, he runs in, he runs out, runs in, runs back out, and he just got the safety turned around. He's wide open, and I love that with Monterey. The speed, Monterey was clocked as the fastest player in college football last year. You get him going, guys are going to bail, and he's going to get open. Big time play, 23 yards on the pickup. First and 10 for the Bears at their own 46. Snap back to Robertson, pitch to Reese, running right, slips one tackle, can't get away from the second one. Pulled down at the 43-yard line by big Jalen Ford, the senior middle linebacker out of Frisco Lone Star High School. So Ford, good penetration there. That'll be the lo a loss of three on the play back to the 43. Well, here's the challenge. That's now the sixth tackle for loss, three of which have been sacks. And Baylor's only had, this is their fourth drive. 
It's hard to sustain drives when the ball, and I understand Baylor's running sideways to get away from the defensive tackles, but now you have Sawyer in second and 13 uh, in, a, in a two by two set with the tight end to his right in the slot. Second down 13, as JJ said, from their own 43. Passes out near side, incomplete. Keetron Jackson, the intended receiver, he tried to uh, stop and come back for that ball, but it skidded past him and out of bounds untouched. Let's check in with Ricky Thompson. Yeah, I think that's miscommunication between quarterback and receiver. I don't know who's right, who's wrong, but they pointed at each other. That clearly is not what Sawyer was looking for when he let go of that ball. Balls to the sidelines, brought to you by Alliance Bank. Alliance Bank, it's your bank. Yeah. Snap back to Robertson, flags fly. Looks like Baylor may have started a little early there. False start, number 79, offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. Did, did I say earlier you might be surprised to know these are <laughs> two of the least penalized teams in the league? Yeah, yeah, John, you did say that. <laughs> yeah. So back them up five. It is uh, third down and... Well, they've got 16, it at the uh, 38. 17? 18, 18 yards. Third down and 18 for the Bears. I saw you now on an empty set. Just take care of the ball. A punt is not a bad thing. To Robertson. Pass to Cameron. Near side. Incomplete. Off his hands and incomplete. Texas pounced on that loose ball thinking it might have been caught and fumbled. But an incompletion. And uh, Bears going to have to punt the ball away. Fourth down and 18. Penalties hurt there. One uh, lost yardage play hurt in there. So the Bears went nowhere on that. Well, they did have the one play to yeah. Monterey Baldwin, but that was it. Texas with two men deep standing back at their own 20-yard line. Jordan Whittington, Xavier Worthy are those two. Palmer Williams boots it away. Wind at his back for the first time tonight, taking it to 15. Get some a uh, couple of blocks there. See if they're all clean blocks. Yeah, no flags and out of bounds. Xavier Worthy out of bounds on the near sideline at the 20. Looks like the 24 is where they'll spot that ball. Well, this is UT's worst field position, John, after this break. Uh, so they've been at the 42. They were at the 44. Uh, and then, well, no, they were at the 12. So they, the last two possessions backed up for UT. Let's see if it pays dividends for the Baylor defense. 47-yard punt by Palmer Williams. UT has the ball and the lead. 12.35 on the clock, second quarter from McLean Stadium. Our score, Texas 7, Baylor 3. You're listening to Baylor Big 12 football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. For a limited time, get high-performance, ultra-reliable internet from Astound Broadband, starting as low as $25 per month. And now we have mobile, too. Visit Astound.com to order the number one rated internet. Create the perfect plan with fast speeds to meet all your needs. Plus, get a two-year price lock when you upgrade to award-winning gig internet. No contracts, no hidden monthly fees, and no data caps. Switch today. Head to Astound.com or call 1-800-4-ASTOUND. Restrictions apply. See website for details. Premier ER and Urgent Care has all the convenience of urgent care with all the expertise of an ER, all under one roof. At every visit, be seen by ER-trained staff with on-site lab and CT, X-ray, ultrasound, and EKG. Here, you pay for the appropriate level of care that you receive, and we are in network with most major insurance providers. Premier ER and Urgent Care has four convenient locations serving Texas, San Marcos, Temple, Waco, and Woodway. To learn more, visit www.premier.care. This is Cole Posey with Baylor Baseball, and this is my story. When I walk away from Baylor, I know I will be a more well-rounded individual. Not only am I getting a top-tier athletic experience, I'm also getting top-tier training and character development. The ability to compete at the highest level, to be challenged spiritually, and to be pushed academically are unique things that no other university but Baylor can offer. My name is Cole Posey, and this is my Champions Tribune. Read more Champions Tribune at BaylorBears.com. TFNB Your Bank for Life is the official local bank of Baylor Athletics. Find out why more Central Texas are making TFNB their bank for life. Sign up for our Edge checking and savings accounts to earn interest or cash back with five convenient locations and an award-winning mobile app. Banking has never been easier. TFNB Your Bank for Life. Member FDIC. You're listening to Baylor Football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. 
football brought to you in part by Gulf States Toyota. Baylor fans, enter for your chance to win a football recruit game day experience for two in the Toyota Five Star Fan Sweepstakes. Visit toyotafivestarfan.com to enter. Toyota is a proud partner of Baylor Athletics. Also brought to you by Baylor Scott & White Health, the official health care provider of Baylor Athletics. Texas takes over following the Baylor punt, 12.35 on the clock. Second quarter, Texas 7, Baylor 3. Right now, Baylor minus two yards rushing on the night, 72 through the air, minus two rushing. Those lost yardage plays J.J. was talking about have really been uh, detrimental to Baylor, but still within four at 7-3. to three. Quinn Ewers takes the snap. He's pressured. Mike Smith is there for the sack. Came in like a heat-seeking missile and got Quinn Ewers on the ground. A loss back to the 18-yard line. That's a great blitz by, by Mike, I mean Mike Smith. He was lined up over the tight end to the left. I think Quinn was thinking he was going to play coverage. Well, he comes on a blitz. Quinn never locates him. He's coming from his right. He's looking to his left. Mike does a great job of wrapping him up, getting him to the ground. Baylor's first sack of the afternoon uh, on defense, and I think that's their now third tackle for loss. Loss back to the 18-yard line, second down and 17 for UT. Ewers over the middle. This one is caught. Adonai Mitchell mm. has the catch. Stretches out across the 35. Boy, they got every bit of it back and 10 more. That's a first down for UT. Ball spotted right at the 35-yard line. Well, yeah, Adonai Mitchell run, working underneath against Mike Smith, and he just beats him across his face really quickly, gets to that void. 18, 17-yard pickup on the play. Swing pass, left side. Jordan Whittington pushed out of bounds. But a gain of 14 on that play to the 49-yard line. So Whittington took the pass, the senior out of Cuero, and just turned up field, pushed out of bounds at the 49. Back-to-back -back first down plays for the Longhorns. Well, right now what they're doing is they're getting their inside guys matched up against your backers and using that action. Uh, on opportunities to the edge. Fake the handoff, pass right side, Jatavian Sanders. Bumped out of bounds on the near side. And that's at the 41, the Baylor 41. Yeah, that's another first down for UT. Boy, they're getting yardage in big chunks here on this possession. Yeah, and John, what they're doing is now they're using, they, very early, they're being pretty conservative. Now what they're doing, you'll notice, is they're working inside. What they're saying to Baylor is, your corners are playing pretty decent. So we're going to start working against your inside players with our tight ends and skill players. Even on Adonai Mitchell's catch, that was working against Mike Smith. That's matchup-driven offense. First down and 10. Ball spotted at the Baylor 40. Handoff. Brooks. Brooks starts right. Stutter steps. Darts forward. He's inside the 35. He'll spot it at the 35. Coleman with the tackle. That's DJ Coleman, the freshman defensive back for the Bears. But that's another five yards on that first down play. Well, the interesting thing is Mike Smith is reading it pretty quick, really quickly, just not able to make the tackle. Little tempo, second down and five. Brooks again, and he's got a first down. He falls inside the 30-yard line. So another first down for UT. They have driven pretty rapidly to the Baylor 30-yard line. Well, now, you know, I mean, they've seen everything that uh, Coach Powledge and Randa probably want to do. Uh, now they've, Coach Sarkin can tell, has adjusted his offense. Quick snap again, and off to Brooks. And Brooks, nice one-on-one -on -one tackle for Baylor. Let's see who got him for the Bears. Caden okay. Jenkins, Jenkins coming up, yeah, from the secondary. That was a really good open field one-on-one -on -one tackle well, by Caden well, Jenkins. Well, Caden Jenkins has done a great job, John, of saying, that Coach, I deserve playing time. And he's not talked about it. You can tell he's been about it. Uh, he is a freshman. He's made a lot of plays uh, in, the passing, uh, in the passing game as well as getting guys to the ground. So, Second and nine here. You got to watch the matchup. Three by one set. They're going to work to his right inside. Jatavia Sanders against the backers. Man in motion to the right side is Baxter. Ewers throws this way. Incomplete. Jeremy Evans made a break on that ball. Nearly had the pick, but he did knock it incomplete. It was contended for C.J. Baxter out of the backfield. Right, nice, easy read. It's a lot of, it's a lot of action. Uh, they're trying to use eye candy. They look at Quinn Ewers. Quinn knows he wants to go to that. They're trying to guy, have guys go make a screen, he jumps up, they're not going to throw it to him. He's trying to work inside, that's taken away, then he goes late and almost picks it off because he was going late to the flat. So now it's third down and nine, huge third down play. UT uh, on third downs, one of three. All right, here we go, third down and nine from the Baylor 29. 
Big third down opportunity here. Ewers in the pocket, flushed, rolling left. Looking to run, he will run. Chased by T.J. Oh. Franklin. He can't get to him, and he goes all the way for the touchdown. Wow, T.J. Franklin had a shot at him. He missed on the shot. Ewers took it all the way, 29 yards for the Texas score. Well, that's not something I thought we would say today. Quinn Ewers going 29 yards with a scamper. But Baylor brought, brought a little bit of a blitz. And when you bring a blitz, you got to get to the quarterback and make him get rid of the ball or get him to the ground. Baylor brings Mike. Josh White comes up inside. Uh, and then they just didn't get to Quinn. Got pushed inside, lost contain. Then you have T.J. Franklin chasing him. And he just doesn't get there. And a great block from Jatavian Sanders. Mm. And the rest is history. Good job by Ewers to stay in bounds after uh, – Franklin uh, threw his body at him. Here comes Burt Auburn on the floor for the uh, on the court for the extra on the field <laughs> for the extra point attempt. 9:07 on the clock. Good snap, good hold, and the kick is good by Auburn. And with 9:07 to play in the second quarter, our new score: Texas 14, Baylor three. We'll take a break and be right back. Longhorns up their lead on the Bears. 9.07 mark in the second quarter. 14-3 Texas. Back after this on the Baylor Sports Media Network. No matter which road you take, the Toyota Tundra is the perfect way to navigate it. On your path, you're your own boss and set your own hours. Look at that sunrise. You may find yourself in some pretty remote places. Whoa, that view. Amazing. Or in places where pastimes become stories that become legends. I got one. I got one. It's a keeper. Hey, get a picture. No one's going to believe this. And each day ends binge watching stars and dreaming about all the things you'll do the next day. You know what? I'm catching a bigger fish tomorrow. Built to follow your path, the Toyota Tundra. This Texan knows how to sick them. Toyota is a proud partner of Baylor Athletics. Visit your local Toyota dealer or toyota.com to check out the rugged Tundra today. Toyota, let's go places. See packages and options at toyota.com for feature availability. Hi, this is John Morris for Green Eye Associates. Let Green Eye Associates, Doctors Leanne Green and Avery Platt help you see Waco clearly. Their experienced team enjoys making your eye exam fun, easy, and accurate, providing trustworthy and honest communication about your eyes and eyewear. Visit them on Lake Air Drive or at GreenEyeAssociates.com to see their services and a wide selection of eyewear made on site by experts. Green Eye Associates, official optometrist of Baylor Athletics. First Central Credit Union invites you to join our team. Game strategy, earn 5% APY on your money. Enjoy ATM fee refunds and the ability to make deposits 24-7 at our ATMs. You can earn interest and have access to your money. Suit up in a free new member t-shirt. Join our team today at firstcentralcu.com. Everything we do, we do for you. Sick em, bears. Eligibility and qualifications apply. APY annual percentage yield. Member NCUA. You're listening to Baylor Football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Doing what he can to uh, rev up this sold-out crowd here at McLean Stadium. Right now, it's the Longhorns that have the lead following a nine-play, 75-yard scoring drive, 328 off the clock. The touchdown, a 29-yard touchdown run by quarterback Quinn Ewers. Puts Texas up 14-3 on Baylor with 9.07 to play in the second quarter. So the Longhorns, a uh, really efficient drive, you might say. Nine plays, 75 yards there. They've got 173 yards of total offense, 88 passing, 85 rushing. Bears with 70 yards total. And, J.J., the interesting thing is Baylor has the advantage in time of possession, 11.04 to 9.49, but Texas leads in the uh, – in the categories that matter most, especially the scoreboard. Kick is away. Will bounce eight yards deep out the back of the end zone. Bears with the touchback will start at their own 25-yard line. Well, well, UT has done a good job of, John, that Baylor is trying to figure out is how to get more explosive plays. Uh, UT's one touchdown. They have actually two touchdowns of over 25 yards. That's a 29-yard rush by the quarterback. Didn't think we would say that for Quinn. 
then have Jonathan Brooks on about a 40-yard run uh, for scores. So that, that's the difference in the ball game right now. Baylor had a couple big plays, none for scores. They have Monterey back in. They'll change coverage this time, and this may open up the opportunity to run the ball with Pendergrass in the backfield. And Keytron Jackson split wide to the right side. Monterey Baldwin in motion left to right. Snap back to Sawyer Robertson. Rolling right. Passes right. Monterey Baldwin hit him in the mitts, and he dropped it. Maybe turned to run. Ricky, you think, just turned to run a little bit too quickly. Yeah, a little low, but he should have had that ball and actually Six might have nine. had another four or five yards on the run. Worst case, you're second and two versus second and ten. So an incompletion, and Bears do look at second down and 10 from their own 25-yard line. Trailing Texas 14-3, 9.02 on the clock, second quarter. Sawyer Robertson in the shotgun, takes the snap. He will hand the ball to Dominic Richardson. Up the middle, about three yards on the carry. Let's go back down to Ricky. Hey, guys, I'll tell you the other thing that that does is when receivers make catches like that, it's going to get... Sawyer Robertson additional confidence to let go of the football but when you get drops on a quarterback that's struggling just a bit that makes it even more difficult so these receivers need to make those plays particularly the ones that are easy catches like that one. Call to the sidelines brought to you by Alliance Bank. Alliance Bank it's your bank. Third down and seven for the Bears. Pitch it near side. Richardson struggling to get there and he gets to the 30 and that's it. Catalan makes the tackle. Jalen Catalan for UT. And the Bears, it appears, will punt the ball away on fourth down and five. Well, they had opportunity there. They did have Monterey. He did drop that out route. I thought Sawyer looked at him early, came off of him, uh, looked to his right. He wanted to go maybe to a hook behind him or a go route. Came back to Monterey late. He short arms it. Uh, and then that really set up what was going to be a very tough conversion, second and ten. And uh, UT shuts it down. And now Baylor is really... Need a big play from either special teams or their defense. Palmer Williams boots it away. Not especially high. Gets a good Baylor bounce. Oh. Xavier Worthy sidesteps one man. Watch out. Worthy, 30, 40, to the 50. Down the sideline and tripped up on the far side of the field. Maybe a touchdown saving tackle over there. And Xavier Worthy was off to the races. Making the tackle for Baylor was Devin Bobby. But Texas is going to have really good field position. They're going to begin this possession on Baylor's half of the field. They'll begin at the Baylor 42-yard line. Yeah, that's a great return. And first, you didn't think Xavier was going to get it, but it took a really good bounce. Because once it was bouncing, it did a – usually football would go different ways, John. That jumped right up to him, and he got it, and he had a full head of steam. Timeout on the field. Longhorns have the ball. 7.35 to play before halftime. Our score, Texas 14, Baylor 3. You're listening to Baylor Bear Football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Everything we do, we do for you. All right, this is break six. Are you looking for a new set of wheels? First Central Credit Union Auto Finance. Yes. Complete coverage, competitive rates, and flexible terms make for a win in financing your next vehicle. A quick online application makes it easy to score the money you need at firstcentralcu.com. Everything we do, we do for you. Membership and loan policy requirements apply. Member in CUA. For a limited time, get high-performance, ultra-reliable internet from Astound Broadband, starting as low as $25 per month. And now we have mobile, too. Visit Astound.com to order the number one rated internet. Create the perfect plan with fast speeds to meet all your needs. Plus, get a two-year price lock when you upgrade to award-winning gig internet. No contracts, no hidden monthly fees, and no data caps. Switch today. Head to Astound.com or call 1-800-4-ASTOUND. Restrictions apply. See website for details. TFNB Your Bank for Life is the official local bank of Baylor Athletics. Find out why more Central Texas are making TFNB their bank for life. Sign up for our Edge Checking and Savings accounts to earn interest or cash back. With five convenient locations and an award-winning mobile app, banking has never been easier. TFNB Your Bank for Life. Member FDIC. Jeff Hess, Mazda, and the Baylor Bears both know what it takes to be number one. Hard work, determination, 
Commitment. The number one Mazda dealer in Texas, Jeff Haas Mazda, is inviting all the Baylor Bear fans listening to visit us for hard-hidden deals on every new Mazda in stock, with fresh inventory hitting the ground daily. And every new Mazda comes with our Jeff Haas Advantage plan. Plus, your trade is now worth more than ever. We're buying all makes and models. Get our best cash offer in minutes. Jeff Haas Mazda on the KD Freeway. Number one based on 2021 sales and stock volume in the Gulf region. You're listening to Baylor Football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Following that nice return by Xavier Worthy of the Baylor punt, 40-yard punt return, and Texas will begin Baylor's half of the field, starting at the Baylor 42-yard line. Longhorns up 14-3 uh, to three on the Bears. Crowd making noise, getting pumped up during that timeout. Great home crowd for Baylor here at sold out McLean Stadium. C.J. Baxter in the backfield, Quinn Ewers under center. Quick pass down the line, Xavier Worthy. He's going to pass it. Upfield, it is caught. Jatavius, San, Jatavian Sanders makes the catch. The double pass coming out of the timeout. So a lateral to Xavier Worthy down the left side of the line. Then he throws a nice pass. Jatavian Sanders has to run under it, but he makes the grab, and it is first and goal for Texas at the Baylor 7. Yeah, kind of saw it coming. I thought the Baylor safety thing, that was Devin, Devin Bobby. Oh, easy. C.J. Baxter handoff, left side into the end zone. Touchdown, Texas. Wow, two plays, and the Longhorns are back in the end zone. They up their lead to 20 to three over Baylor. Yeah, they got away with a little hold there, but nevertheless, I mean, once uh, once uh, Baxter bumped outside, really that was all she wrote. Baylor was really looking inside and pinching inside. Baxter kind of got free, got yanked back, got yanked around at the very end, but just very easy. The double pass, really, the safety got a late trigger, and he actually made contact with J Jatavian uh, Sanders, the tight end, but he ran by him. I thought he thought he was going to get blocked. Easy pitch and catch, and now UT up 21-3. Burt Auburn makes it 21 with 7.03 to go in the second quarter. 7.03 to play before halftime, and the Longhorns extend their lead on the Bears. Well, the big punt return by Xavier Worthy gave Texas a short field, and they make quick work of that possession. Two plays, 42 yards. This uh, clock chart says 7.32 off the clock. It wasn't close to 7.32. No, maybe 32. Maybe 32, exactly. <laughs> Um, but a quick uh, scoring drive by UT. And Ricky, the Bears uh, making the Bears, uh, or the Longhorns making the Bears pay right there. Well, they did. And in fact, remember, the Bears tried that same play earlier with neighbors. Couldn't get the ball away. Did get a five-yard gain on the run. But that was uncovered. The tight end was wide open. Actually, a good throw, and he probably scores on that play. But good play, good catch on the first play after the great punt return by Worthy. The Bears are going to have to get something going here offensively. Only three points on the board and really struggle. Defense has been on the field way too much in this first half, guys. 21-3, Texas on top. 7.03 on the clock, second quarter. We are brought to you in part by Antone's famous Po' Boys, proud sponsor of Baylor Athletics. Got some of those Antone's Po' Boys here in the booth. You can sick them right here at McLean Stadium, or you can find them wrapped in their iconic white butcher paper at your HEB deli sections and many fine supermarkets in Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, or Austin. Antone's original po' boys made with recipes that haven't changed since 1962, a unique taste that generations of Texans have loved. Their original turkey and Swiss and roast beef sandwiches are all bestsellers. Check it out, Antone's famous po' boys, a handmade sandwich beloved by Texans, often referred to as a Texas version of a New Orleans po' boy. It all began with their iconic sandwich shops in Houston. Handmade daily with the highest quality meats, cheeses, and of course their famous chow chow relish, French bread, and pickles. Available here at McLean Stadium thanks to Antone's famous po' boys. Well, John, you see right now on the sideline, really you have uh, both uh, Devin Lemire and Devin Bobby uh, looking at the chart. And basically, you know, the explanation is say, hey, what happened on the double pass? Because typically the backside safety once that ball goes out quick to the flat uh, to the receiver, typically the corner is trying to trigger to get things started. The other front side safety is coming, and the back side safety is overlapping, really trying to take anything behind. So uh, I believe the back side safety was Bobby, but nevertheless, uh, 
what we saw is UT's backside safety covered up our deep route on the double pass. And this time, Baylor's backside safety didn't get over to Jatavian Sanders, and it resulted in the touchdown. So uh, UT has taken advantage of opportunities. And right now, through almost uh, a quarter, it's a quarter and a half now, Baylor has 75 total yards. Uh, you're just not going to beat many teams without producing a little bit more offense uh, after running. Just it really, the, the total plays aren't uh, it's 24 to 24. But Baylor's produced 75 yards to Texas' 215, and that has resulted on the scoreboard of 21 to 3. So uh, got to get something started. It has to start with really just getting that first first down uh, on this next drive. So Texas set to kick it off to the Bears, left to right, into a bit of a breeze. See if the Bears could get something done here before we reach halftime. 10 miles an hour breeze out of the south. So the kicker for UT, Will Stone, will be kicking into that slight breeze. Left-footed kicker boots it away. It'll be out the back of the end zone and on the touchback. Baylor will begin at their own 25-yard line. Again, down 21 to 3 to the Longhorns. 7.03 to play in the second quarter. Hey, next week, Bears uh, on the road for the first time this season. Four straight home games to start the year. We're headed to Orlando to play UCF, new Big 12 member next week. It's, their, it's UCF's first ever Big 12 home game. It's been sold out since the summer. So the Bears are stepping into that next week. 2.30 kickoff Central Time for Baylor and the Knights of UCF. All right, from the 25, first and 10 for the Bears, traveling right to left. Sawyer Robertson takes the snap in the shotgun, stands in, puts it in the air, left uh, sideline, it is incomplete, intended for Keytron Jackson, and the pass overthrown. Long, loud incompletion <laughs> on first down. Yeah, and on that one, that's one we saw you. He really only had one or two reads. He had a tight end inside, I think that was Roberts, outside at Keytron Jackson. Really, the safety never triggered. Number 21, Keaton Crawford, uh, he never really bid on anything. The, safe, the, the tight end didn't hold him, so it was really double coverage, and that's one where he put it out of bounds at least where only his guy could get it if it was going to be called. Second down 10 for the Bears from their own 25-yard line. Snap back to Robertson. Stands in the pocket. Watch out. Now flushed, rolling right, still looking to throw. Throws as he's hit. He was outside the tackle box, should be okay. Closest uh, receiver to that pass was Hal Presley. Let's check in with Ricky. Well, I tell you, little things, guys, but Sawyer did a good job then. Early in the game, he was taking sacks on those plays when the rush was forced from the outside or from in the middle. He twirled, got loose on the outside, and was able to throw that ball away. That saved seven or eight yards at least because he was going down seven or eight yards behind the line yeah. of scrimmage. David Benda, the weak side linebacker, was the guy that was uh, putting the pressure on Sawyer Robertson. Leaves Baylor third down and 10 from the 25. Snap back, pass over the middle. Keetron Jackson's got it. Running left to right. Jonah Burton throws a block. Keetron Jackson has the first down. Running laterally across the field. J.J., it's like he knew where he had to get to for the first down, and he did so out to the 38. Yeah, smart play by Keetron. He's going left to right, and Sawyer did a great job of being patient he got some blocking up front. Hadn't been as steady with the blocking up front, but they got it protected, giving Keytron time to work all the way from the left across the field to the to the right of the offense. And then he had to make a play. Made a guy miss, picks up the first down. It's another Baylor first down brought to you by Belfour, where they restore more than property. First and 10 for the Bears out to their own 38. Robertson fakes the handoff. Buys him a little time. Now he's going to run with it. He is... Run out of bounds, far side of the field at the 40-yard line. Two-yard pickup, and you can see Sawyer when he comes back onto the field toward the huddle. He is still limping. He's not 100% on that ankle. No, he's not, but it's a smart play. He was trying to do a throwback. He did a play action, went to his right, trying to throw back to his left. Nothing there. He picks up all he could, got out of bounds, didn't take a hit, and that's second and eight. I mean, here all you need is three or four yards to get it to third and manageable. Uh, here is uh, UT is probably going to bring a little pressure. Once you get outside that 40, expect pressure. Second down eight for the Bears from their own 40-yard line. Robertson under center. Hands the ball off, looking for room up the middle. Squirts forward to the 44-yard line. That is Dominic Richardson, Dominic Richardson yeah. with that carry. Yeah, nice run. Uh, conspicuously absent. You know, you haven't seen Tevin, I mean, Richard Reese very much here. Uh, now they got Dawson in. 
Yeah. But now it's now third. This is very manageable. Third down at about five. This is a manageable third down. You have a coach that's willing to go for it on fourth. You just don't want to take lost yardage here as UT is. They brought pressure on the last rundown. Let's see if they bring pressure again. From their own 43-yard line, third pressure. down and five. Hand off to Pendergrass. Pendergrass bulls his way forward. He's out to the 46. So a three-yard pickup, and what do you do here? Fourth down and two. Actually, the 46 and a half. They need the 48 for a first down. Yeah, it's tougher than you think right here. I mean, this, would be, this may be one where Baylor is going to go for, but I really would consider, okay, maybe at 435 and counting, maybe using my time as I want to make sure whatever I have, because this is important down, I'm using the best play I have in my playbook. I'm not holding it. This is such an important down. Fourth down, about a yard and a half for the Bears. Their own 46 and a half, 420 mark, second quarter. Hand off to Pendergrass running right. He didn't get there. They'll, they'll mark it there, and he did not get there. So the Longhorns hold on fourth down and a yard and a half, and the ball goes over to Texas on Baylor's end of the field at the Baylor 46. Yeah, that's a tough one, John. I mean, that's a fourth. That was a fourth and a true two. And when you have a fourth and a true two, I mean, it doesn't sound like much. The quarterback sneak is out, so defenses don't have to pinch, taking a lot of players out of the out of the uh, out of the formula. So then, once you go and you run a stretch, now they're going to have all their players, and right there, defensive line for UT did a great job of not letting Baylor's offensive line work up to the bikes. Never really got pushed. Now UT has great field position in Baylor territory at the 46-yard line. Mm -hmm. All right, starting their second straight possession on Baylor's half of the field, leading 21 to three. Texas is 215 to play. Pass, slant, incomplete. Pressure on the quarterback by Gabe Hall. Pass intended for Jatavian Sanders. Carl Williams, the fourth, with the uh, defensive coverage for Baylor. Yeah, it's good. Once again, Jatavian Sanders. I remember watching that young man in high school, and I, he went to Den, I think it was Den Geyer. Uh, Den Ryan, I'm sorry, yeah, Den Ryan. But what he did, I mean, he played basketball. <laughs> and he, and that's why I saw him playing basketball. They said, this kid's going to UT. He's a great tight end. Wow. And, uh, he's turned into a good one. That's great coverage, though, by the Baylor defenders. Second down, 10 for Texas. Slant over the middle. This one is caught. Bumped down immediately at the 30-yard line. That's the other tight end, Gunner Helm. Helm, a junior out of Inglewood, Colorado. And that one is good for 16 yards and a first down for Texas at the Baylor 30. Snap back to yours. He's going to hand the ball off to Jonathan Brooks. Brooks looking for room on the left side. Gets about four yards to the 26. Clock counting down three, 37 and counting before halftime. Texas leading Baylor 21 to three. Well, Texas will take their time here. I mean, they want to score and not leave much time on the clock. They get the ball out of half. But what really Sark is doing is isolating tight ends. He's isolating linebackers and inside players with the tight ends and even the receivers coming inside. See what he calls here. Here's the snap back to yours. Comes right, passes back left. It is caught. Nice catch. Brooks with the catch. Keeps his footing at the 10, and he's down inside the 10-yard line to the 8-yard line. Boy, that, Ricky, that was a nice grab and really some good yards after the run by Jonathan Brooks. Well, it was, and I'm at the other end of the field just trying to watch from an end zone type view. I thought that ball was way overthrown. Yeah. In fact, I thought it was going to go out of bounds. Wow. That was a great play by a running back with a one-handed catch. That's plays good football teams make, and this is the advantage Texas had with the field position after the Bears went for it on fourth and two. Yeah, first and goal now for Texas at the Baylor eight-yard line, 238 and counting, second quarter. Ewers to throw, right side, incomplete. Little jousting going on there, and a flag is down in the defensive secondary. It's going to be pass interference to John in the end zone, I believe. Pass Little interference, number 19, contact. defense. Jayden Foul occurred Jenkins. in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the two-yard line, automatic first down. Xavier Worthy was the receiver. That's a tough task for the uh, freshman, Caden Jenkins. He actually did a good job. He just took one last chuck, John. He did a great job off the line. I mean, he was man-to-man -man against uh, Xavier Worthy out here to the right of the offense, left of the defense. He didn't get his hands on him early, but then he just chucks him about – about five, six yards down the field, and that's what got it. It really didn't impact the play. I thought he had great coverage. Just got to keep those hands off once he gets five yards. So in the end zone gives Texas first and goal at the two-yard line. Straight eye behind yours. Hand off to Jonathan Brooks. He is in standing up for the Texas touchdown. With 2.26 to play in the second quarter, Texas ups their lead to 27-3 to over Baylor. 
Yeah, just, I mean, that was the, the function. And that's, that's kind of the reason I was talking about when you have that fourth and two, 21-3. It's still a manageable game. If you can get a score, call a timeout and use your best play. Because there's four minutes to go in the half. You got two timeouts. You call it, wait to get your best play. Baylor doesn't convert. UT then gets its second consecutive drive in Baylor territory. And once they get it there, you kind of know that the probability they're going to score is above 50%. Extra point kick is added by Burt Auburn, and it's 28 to 3. Texas leads Baylor, 226 on the clock in the second quarter. Another short field by the Longhorns. JJ, as you said, after Baylor went for it on fourth down, was unable to convert. 46 yard touchdown drive by UT, and they're up big, 28 to 3 in the second quarter. Yeah, you think, I think uh, at the end of the first, it may have been seven to three after the end of one quarter. So this second quarter has really been an avalanche, and really the avalanche has been, is while Baylor has, has run a decent number of plays, 31 plays to UT's 29 plays, the chunk plays have come on UT side. Uh, you got Jatavian Sanders on the double pass. Uh, you got Jonathan Brooks on the big run, Quinn Ewers on the big run, uh, and they're making the chunk plays. And when you have chunk plays, it makes up for a lot of bitty, itty bitty plays. Uh, and right now, the Baylor offense doesn't have any rhythm, and the game is getting away if it hadn't already gotten away with 226 and counting in the half. Stations give you a chance to identify yourselves following this kickoff by Will Stone. Sails over the head of Richard Reese. It'll be a touchback. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification back in 10 seconds on the Baylor Sports Media Network. From the Allen Samuels Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Studios, this is KRZI Waco, K222DC Waco, K265DV Temple, ESPN Central Texas. 28-3, Texas leads Baylor, 226 on the clock, second quarter. We appreciate you being with us this evening. Ricky will visit with head coach Dave Aranda going in at halftime. That's brought to you by Alliance Bank. Alliance Bank, it's your bank. See what the Bears can do here with the final 226 of the quarter. Beginning at their own 25, Sawyer Robertson's gone the entire way at quarterback. Takes the snap in the shotgun. Quick pass, left side, caught by Hal Presley, his first catch tonight. And he's down at the 26-yard line. So a completion, but just one yard on that first down play. Yeah, and he has to get him some completions. But right there, uh, with two minutes and counting, you know what has to happen. you got to get some points. So... So sorry, he's going to have to throw the ball. So now it's about protection. You start with protection, and then you try to figure out, can we work underneath, behind the linebackers and have enough time for that? Actually, two yards on the play. Second down and eight for the Bears. Robertson running right. Now going to take off, looking for that sideline. He gets there before he absor absorbs a hit. Jalen Ford ran him out. Let's go down to Ricky. Hey, guys, we actually had Hal Presley running across the middle wide open. Awfully hard to see, though, when you're sorry, Robinson running toward the other sideline yeah. from the pass rush. But he was there if you just have time to set and throw the football. Well, pickup of three on the play. It's third down and five for the Bears from their own 30. Two receivers left and right for Baylor. Robertson in the shotgun. Of course, Baylor playing again without Blake Shapin, still recovering from that MCL injury. Sawyer Robertson's gone the entire way at quarterback. Takes the snap here in the shotgun, third and five. Pass right side, incomplete. Drake Dabney, the intended receiver. And pretty well-timed hit in the secondary there by Derek Williams, Jr., which will leave Baylor fourth down and five and having to punt the ball away again. Well, you didn't have any thread. So, I mean, really, the, the, the DB was playing sticks. And all that means is the defender who's in pass defense is going to play the stick, the first down sticks, and he's going to wait right there. Drake Dabney runs. He comes out in a little out route. He is a little contact before, but uh, no opportunity there is a great coverage, and Baylor's going to punt it away with minute 43 and counting. Palmer Williams takes the snap from Garrison Grimes. Good pressure. Punt is away. Xavier Worthy takes the fair catch. Fumbles the ball. Right. Baylor may have recovered. They did. Baylor comes up with their first takeaway of the night. Garrison Grimes, the deep snapper, covered that fumble for Baylor. How about that? Snaps the ball, then jets down the field. Xavier Worthy bobbles it, and Garrison Grimes jumps on the loose pumpkin. Well, what's smart, if you can find a pretty good athlete to snap nowadays, they can't really do the snappers like they used to. 
get on top of him and re uh, restrict him. So now if you can get a guy to snap, he snaps and he can take off running immediately. Does a great job of getting down the field. But on that one, Xavier Worthy fielded. I mean, he had an opportunity to field the ball, just dropped it. And now this is what Baylor needs. I said they need to be plus two. Well, they may need to be plus four because they're down 28-3. But your offense, you're at the 21-yard line, uh, not in the red zone. But right now, these have to be, this has to be a touchdown. Four down territory, I think. And if you're wondering, Garrison is the son of Baylor's offensive coordinator, Jeff Grimes. Big play by Garrison. First play for the Bears from the 21-yard line of UT. Pass to Drake Dabney. A yard, two yards to the 19. Second and eight coming up for the Bears. 117 and counting. Baylor does have two timeouts in their back pocket. Yeah, time is not an issue, really. I mean, it's minute 30. You just don't want UT to get the ball back now. And you got it. You just stole a possession now. Uh, you have double receivers to the left. That's really going to be covered up. Keytron to the right. They got a safety help working inside potentially to a tight end. Second down, eight. Going to throw it to the end zone. Keytron Jackson, the intended receiver, he overshot him. Texas defensive back making the dive for that loose ball was actually the closest to it. Ryan Watts, the cornerback from Little Elm. Well, right there, that's just a one read play. But, but Sawyer has to come off that. There, there's, there's what we call cloud. There's a corner press, there's a safety middle. He's a young player, but that's one he has to know right now. That fade's not going to work. I got to work inside. Baylor, had, Baylor was using Jake Roberts to help on the defensive end, and then he was going to release. That's where you got to work against too deep, that tight end in the middle. Now third and eight. Got to look at this. You're going to get another chance to protect the ball. Third down and eight from the 19-yard line. Baylor in the HEB red zone. Sawyer Robertson pressured, steps up, Touchdown. fires it over the middle, incomplete. Oh, it should have been, J.J. It's a little bit too tall for Keytron Jackson, who had run open right in the center of the field, and the pass was too tall, and it falls incomplete. Yeah, he had it, man. It was, he did a great job of climbing the pocket. Sawyer Roberts was looking to his right. He doesn't really have anything. Baylor is going to kick the field goal here, uh, and they're trying to get some points out of it. But he steps up, and he has Keytron breaking, breaking on a post from right to left. He has him, and he just air mails it and misses him, and, uh, that potentially is going to cost Baylor here four points. Field's goal, go, field goal will be a 31-yard attempt. Good snap, good hold, and Isaiah Hankins puts it on the board. So the Bears turn the uh, fumbled punt by Xavier Worthy into three points with 44 seconds to play before halftime. Our new score, Texas 28, Baylor 6. Boy, that touchdown, Ricky, that would have been nice if uh, – Sawyer Robertson had been able to connect with Keytron Jackson on that play. Well, it would, and I thought Keytron might go up and get it. He gave it all he had yeah. just out of his fingertips away from the catch, but just anywhere in the ballpark of Keytron, that's a touchdown. And how big is that, guys? 28 to 6, still great to get points on the board, but 28 to 10, a lot different sounding game than 28 to 6. Yeah, I do like, I mean, I, I like what Sawyer did there. The first pass, I like he has to come off, but that one, he did exactly what he's been coached to do. He climbs the pocket. He doesn't try to get out. He climbs it. He sees him, and sometimes you get in a hurry as a young player because you see it. I've done that too. You see him open, and you're thinking, let me get it to him, and your release point happens to happen a little earlier because you're trying to help than it should, and you got to bring the ball down with the follow-through, but you let it go because you're trying to let it go fast, and it sells on you, and it sailed on it. Jack Stone, the kickoff for the Bears, will sail out the back of the end zone. That'll be a touchback. Texas will have the ball back with 44 seconds to play. Three timeouts remaining for the Longhorns. Texas leading Baylor now 28-6. to six. Yeah, but at least something positive happened. If you can just get to halftime, and it, I know it's a big gap, but you're going to take a one possession, you feel at least a little bit better as a Baylor player. Hey, dude, let's just clean up these big chunk plays. Uh, and we'll be okay to at least make this a game. But uh, right there, you've seen the missed opportunity that you got the turnover on special teams. And now you just want to make sure you keep them out of scoring position here with 44 seconds. Baylor plus one in takeaways tonight. They did get a field goal out of that. Here's Ewers firing again. Passes left sideline. Caught out of bounds. Jatavian Sanders. Sanders has been the go-to guy, really. And Xavier Worthy also, but... Sanders, a guy who had five catches for 114 yards in that big win over Alabama two weeks ago. Check his numbers in the first half tonight. He's got four catches for 57 yards so far this evening. Gain of four, second down and six for UT from their own 29. Ewers to throw again. 
Near side dive incomplete. Adonai Mitchell, the intended receiver there. I'll tell you what, Rick, I mean, John, that number 19, Kate Jenkins, if he's not already pretty good, he's going to he's gonna be a fighter. Uh, he, he, he wants to compete out there at corner. He can be able to play as a true freshman as a corner here in the Big 12 against some top receivers. He's willing to compete, and I like – I like what I'm seeing from Kate Jenkins. Great coverage there on Adonai Mitchell. Uh, does a great job of making that uh, play uh, on the ball. Third down six for Texas from their own 29. Now 35 seconds to go in the half. Ewers takes the snap, pressured, looking to run, and down he goes. Matt Jones with the tackle for a loss. Ewers had not fully committed to the run, but uh, had squirted forward, and Matt Jones made sure he got no further upfield. Loss of a couple on that play. It'll be fourth down and eight for UT. Yeah, you take the time after you coach Aranda. See if you can get a return. I would, whoever his best punt return man timeout, is. Timeout, Baylor. This is their second of the half. This is a 30-second timeout. Game clock operator, please put 31 seconds on the clock. Yeah, right now, you just hope you get a decent punt or, like, you're not so good of a punt if you're a UT fan, and then you get a return. See if you can break something here uh, with 28-6. So, so a nice timeout by Coach Aranda at, and Baylor have an opportunity, at least a little what I call stub possession. All right, quick timeout here by Baylor. We'll keep it here. 31 seconds on the clock. They added five seconds to the clock. We appreciate uh, guests in the booth, uh, part of the Baylor group experience. Charles Trickett the second, Charles Trickett Sr., Sandra Trickett, Jamison Trickett, and Candace Kelm, our guest in the booth. Welcome to you. We appreciate you uh, hanging out with us. I think uh, Baylor's going to come. I think they're going to come after this punt here, John. Sanborn, yeah. the punter, gets punt. it away. Really nice punt. Josh Cameron, a fair catch signal very late. And he gathers it in cleanly at the 25-yard line. 49-yard punt by Ryan Sanborn. Bears have the ball back. 23 seconds on the clock. Second quarter. Texas leading 28-6 to over the Bears. Yeah, right here, I mean, it's really, you know, with that field position, the ball back, such a great punt. It looks like it's going to be the 25-yard line, so you just don't want Sawyer to get caught in a bad position holding the ball. So so I'm thinking this one here is something pretty simple. If it's something quick out to the to his right, where there's a three-receiver set, a little quick receiver, pass to the receiver, or just a handoff here. See what they do from their own 25-yard line. Jonah Burton in motion, now settles into the slot on the right side. Snap back to Sawyer Robertson. Over the middle, it is incomplete. Off the hands of Keetron Jackson. Little crossing route there, and Keetron Jackson could not pull it in. Well, and that's, and that's on Keetron, uh, but I'll tell you something. He had two choices there. He had Keetron working left to right across the middle, and actually had his running back shut down right in the middle with nobody there. Keetron saw that safety out there, and he should catch it, but when he saw that white jersey, I think his eyes came off just a little too soon. And then that ball, when you're running that shallow, it comes past those linemen unexpectedly. You don't see the quarterback, and it jumps on you. But one that Keytron should catch. Three catches tonight, 55 yards for Jackson. Eight times he's been targeted this evening. Second down and 10. Pass near side. Drake Dabney has that one. Steps out of bounds at the 31-yard line. So a six-yard pickup. And now 13 seconds on the clock before halftime. Yeah, Baylor 2 of 10 on third downs, 2 Ooh. of 10. Uh, so right now what you don't want to do is UT has uh, three timeouts, and they have a return man. They can really return it. Uh, you want to get this first down. Third down four for the Bears from their own 31. They're going to bail out in coverage here, so sorry he's got to work underneath, but got to be open to running the ball here just to get the first down and not have to give it back via punt. Robertson in the shotgun, takes the snap. Here comes the pressure. Over the middle, it is caught. That's enough for a first down. Pulled down at the 41 is Dominic Richardson. So the Bears do move the chains, get a first down. And they call, the call timeout. a timeout, right? Timeout, so seven seconds to go before half. halftime. Bears have it out to their own 41-yard line. Timeout, Bears, trailing 28-6 to, to UT. Well, this here is it's just going to be a Hail Mary. But the risk with a Hail Mary is that, you know, typically the quarterback has to hold that ball to let those receivers run the 50, 55 yards. And they don't have to get all the way down there. But they have to they have to get to a point where they're close to the end zone. And then the next question is how far can your quarterback throw the ball if you're going to do a Hail Mary? Right now you're at about the 41. Uh, he's going to drop back. So you got to figure he's got to be able to throw that ball 
about 65, 67 yards in the air. So now the question is, what do I do here? Because I really only have one snap with seven seconds, uh, and I don't believe any timeouts. Well, it looks like any timeouts, no timeouts. Uh, so really this here, uh, you got to be careful not to take a sack either. All right, it is first down and 10 for the Bears out to their own 41-yard line. Sawyer Robertson in the shotgun. He's going to take the snap from Clark Barrington. Spins it out near side, caught there by Dawson Pendergrass. Pendergrass is down at the 43, and that is it. Triple zeros on the clock. We reach halftime. Baylor trailing Texas 28-6 at the intermission. Well, a lot of big plays by the Longhorns uh, in the first half to get those four touchdowns. As you said, J.J., it was a 21-point second quarter. Right. Every game this season, Texas has had at least one 21-point quarter. It was the fourth quarter against Alabama and Wyoming last week. But tonight it's the second quarter to build that lead. Let's go down to Ricky Thompson with head coach Dave Aranda. Hey, Coach, I know you've already had TV. Big turnover here late that ended up with points, 28-6. to six. Really struggled so far getting anything going offensively. Yeah, we have to be able to run the ball. I think, you know, even with the score is what it is, uh, there's things we for sure can do passing game better. But if they're lining up on first down, second, and third down, expecting pass and just let, letting guys loose, then it doesn't matter who we got back there at quarterback. And so we've got to be able to establish line of scrimmage, settle down, play our style. Okay, Coach, thanks. Ricky, thanks very much. Ricky Thompson with head coach Dave Aranda going in at halftime. That is brought to you by Alliance Bank. Alliance Bank, it's your bank. Stay with us. Our Nissan halftime report is coming up next. Nissan innovation that excites. Our score at the half, Texas 28, Baylor 6. Our coverage continues after this word from your local station. Everything we do, we do for you. First Central Credit Union says it's game on. Lower your monthly vehicle payments by refinancing your vehicle with First Central. Make it a winning season with refinancing set to your preferences. You decide the due date and frequency. Financed elsewhere? Save money with a new local game plan. Apply online today. We make it easy to score at firstcentralcu.com. Membership and loan policy requirements apply. Member NCUA. At Allen Samuels in Waco, we've got amazing deals that make you ask, why shop anywhere else? During Ram Power Days, get a new 2023 1500 Lone Star 4x4 Crew Cab, $11,000 off MSRP or 2.9% for 72 months. Or choose a new 2023 1500 Laramie 4x4 Crew Cab, $12,500 off MSRP or 2.9% for 72 months. That's right, we're making big deals, so hurry in today. Allen Samuels in Waco, the place to shop Ram Truck. Hi, this is John Morris for Green Eye Associates. Let Green Eye Associates, Doctors Leanne Green and Avery Platt help you see Waco clearly. Their experienced team enjoys making your eye exam fun, easy, and accurate, providing trustworthy and honest communication about your eyes and eyewear. Visit them on Lake Air Drive or at GreenEyeAssociates.com to see their services and a wide selection of eyewear made on site by experts. Green Eye Associates, official optometrists of Baylor Athletics. If you need a trailer, Flat Rock Trailers has got you covered. From light-duty single-axle utility trailers to the big Tex tandem duels. We also carry a full line of enclosed cargo trailers. Need a motorcycle trailer? We've got them. Need a dump trailer? We've got the largest selection in the state. Oil field trailers? We carry a full line of big Tex trailers to handle all your needs. Trailer repairs? We repair all makes and models. We'll even rent you a trailer if you need to use one for a day. Flat Rock Trailers, your number one source for all your trailer needs. Find us at flatrocktrailers.com. You're listening to live coverage of Baylor football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Now it's time, it's time for the Nissan Halftime Show. Brought to you by Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, championship partner of Baylor Athletics. Visit Texas Farm Bureau Insurance online to find a local agent today. Baylor Scott and White Health, the official hospital and healthcare system of Baylor Athletics. Your healthcare, your way. HEB, the official grocer of Baylor Athletics, proudly serving Texans since 1905. TFNB, the official local bank of Baylor Athletics. Premier ER and Urgent Care, feel better now. 
Nissan, innovation for excitement. Stay tuned as we break down the first half. Check in on scores from around the country and more. All coming up on the Baylor Sports Media Network. At halftime, it is the Nissan Halftime Report brought to you by Nissan Innovation that excites. We've told you several times our game sponsor tonight is HEB. We're joined by Mark Jarzombek from HEB. Senior Vice President for Sales and Marketing. And, Mike, it's great to have you with us. Thank you so much. Very good. Great crowd here tonight. You're here on a good night. Hey. Man, what a great atmosphere this evening. It's a packed house. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I know how big HEB is in, in Waco, in Central Texas, and you're, uh, you're kind of stretching your limbs a little bit uh, into the DFW market more and more. Yes, we are. Uh, we're growing rapidly into the uh, what we call Dallas market. Uh, we've got three stores open. We got one coming in a week and a half, uh, and then more next year. Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Very nice. What is uh, some of the thought process? I mean, you're, you are so dominant in this area, Central Texas. What's the thought process in stretching out a little bit? Well, I mean, we are, um, we're a Texas-based company, and, uh, you know, we're home-based in San Antonio. Um, but obviously, we, we have strong roots down into the valley and into Corpus, uh, into Central Texas. Obviously, Houston's been a big market for us, uh, but Dallas is something that uh, that we've looked at for a long time, and uh, we're, we're finally uh, making our, I guess you could say, our push into, yeah. into Dallas, so it's pretty exciting. Very good. Uh, the HEB brand products, uh, those are so great. We are, my wife and I, are. At, we'll be at HEB tomorrow afternoon, okay? <laughs> so that's our norm on Sundays, but the HEB products, branded products, you've got so many of those, and it seems like more every time. Yeah, we've got, uh, you know, our customers just love our brand. We've got a lot of unique items. Uh, I think some of the stuff our customers don't know is that we self-manufacture a lot of those items. Huh. So we can control exactly what goes in and make sure the quality is perfect and the cost is right, right, or, the, right. or the retail is right. Uh, so, yeah, we have customers coming from all around. As a matter of fact, what's uh, what's really interesting is in Dallas, we have customers coming from Oklahoma <laughs> just to get our brand. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, personal story again, my uh, son and daughter-in-law live in Dallas, and they, when they come to see us here in Waco, they stock up and take it back to Dallas. So they'll be good, glad to know that you've got some more stores uh, coming up in the Metroplex. That's right. We've Very got good. Allen, Texas opening on the 4th of October. Oh, coming up really soon. Yep. then very yep. good how about uh and one of your products i don't know the name of it exactly but it's the coffee kind of the holiday oh, the christmas yeah. coffee yeah oh i mean our kids just stock up on that yeah. whenever it becomes available yeah it's our uh, cafe au lait brand there you go and it's the christmas blend yes that customers go nuts over <laughs> I mean, they go nuts over it <laughs> They, they can't wait. Till that's we right. Have a, yeah, that's right. And stock up and, yeah. and just kind of pack it away. So exactly. that's cool. And that's not that far away. The holidays are not that far away. Well, the uh, the store that we visit uh, fairly often is Woodway Hewitt here in Waco. And they went through a renovation, a redesign, kind of moved things around. And we thought, why are you doing this? We can't <laughs> find anything. But when, once it's done, you kind of say, oh, now we see why you did that. And it was all for the better and really designed with the customers in mind. That's exactly right. Right, um, you know, it, uh, to bring in a lot of new items, you gotta reset, so to speak. Right. Customers hate it, but once we're done, then they they go, okay, we get it, and we like it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, anyway, it's just the nature of the beast. Very good. Well, it's so great to have you here, and we appreciate the uh, long-standing partnership between Baylor and Baylor Athletics and HEB, and we appreciate your game sponsorship this evening. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks very much for being here. You bet. Mar Mike Jarzumbeck with us from HEB. They are our game sponsor here tonight. Baylor Football 2023 is presented by HEB, and it's our pleasure and honor to uh, relay that to you each and every game. Take a break. Be back with more in just a moment. Still a check of score to come here at halftime, and J.J. will give us first-half stats as well. Our score at the intermission, Texas 28, Baylor 6. You're tuned in to the Nissan Halftime Report, brought to you by Nissan, innovation that excites. And we're back after this on the Baylor Sports Media Network. 
TFNB Your Bank for Life is the official local bank of Baylor Athletics. Find out why more Central Texans are making TFNB their bank for life. Sign up for our Edge Checking and Savings accounts to earn interest or cash back. With five convenient locations and an award-winning mobile app, banking has never been easier. TFNB Your Bank for Life. Member FDIC. For a limited time, get high-performance, ultra-reliable internet from Astound Broadband, starting as low as $25 per month. And now we have mobile, too. Visit Astound.com to order the number one rated internet. Create the perfect plan with fast speeds to meet all your needs. Plus, get a two-year price lock when you upgrade to award-winning gig internet. No contracts, no hidden monthly fees, and no data caps. Switch today. Head to Astound.com or call 1-800-4-ASTOUND. Restrictions apply. See website for details. Baylor Athletics Group experiences are back. Fans can now purchase exclusive experiences on the Baylor Sports app for an elite in-venue experience at select Baylor Athletic events. New this year, fans can submit their own video board messages to go on the big screen during the game. Baylor football experiences include on-field photos, sideline access during warm-ups, tunnel access during the team runout, and an in-game radio booth experience. Purchase your experience today through the Baylor Sports app. Premier ER and Urgent Care has all the convenience of urgent care with all the expertise of an ER, all under one roof. At every visit, be seen by ER-trained staff with on-site lab and CT, X-ray, ultrasound, and EKG. Here, you pay for the appropriate level of care that you receive, and we are in network with most major insurance providers. Premier ER and Urgent Care has four convenient locations serving Texas, San Marcos, Temple, Waco, and Woodway. To learn more, visit www.premier.care. You're listening to Baylor Football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Three, I'm sorry, 28 to 6 to Texas. Baylor Golden Wave Band is on the field. This is the Nissan Halftime Report. Nissan, innovation that excites. Going to get uh, scores or stats from J.J. Joe coming up in just a moment. Let me give you some scores. Uh, around the Big 12, Houston leads Sam Houston 10 to 7. Still a tight game. 11.35 on the clock, second quarter, playing at U of H. Our score, of course, 28 to 6. Texas up at the intermission. Finals from earlier today. Uh, Oklahoma over Cincinnati, 20 to 6. That final. TCU over SMU, 34 to 17. Kansas beat BYU. The Jayhawks remain undefeated on the year. Their 38-27 uh, win over BYU, handing the Cougars their first loss of the season. West Virginia wins over Texas Tech. Big win for Neil Brown and the Mountaineers today, 20-13. Iowa State wins over Oklahoma State. That's a big win for Matt Campbell and the Cyclones in Ames today, 34-27 is uh, is that final score. And one of the game in progress at this hour. Uh, and let me update, Houston now leads Sam Houston 31-7, 259 on the clock in the third quarter. The other game in progress is a dandy from Manhattan. Kansas State leads UCF 21-17, 116 on the clock, second quarter from Manhattan, Kansas. UCF, the team that Baylor will see, coming up uh, next week at the Bounce House in Orlando. J.J. is going to give us first half stats. First half stats, and we, we get them right now. Yep, thank you very much. Give us first half stats, and, uh, and then we'll take one final break here at halftime. J.J., take it away. Thanks, John. Uh, well, a very uh, challenging first half, uh, if I can say so, uh, for the Baylor offense there. Uh, first half stats brought to you by, oh, I'm going to tell you, no one. Uh, Baylor trails 28-6 to six at the first half. And uh, really what's happened is defensively, uh, Baylor's done a decent job until that second quarter where UT went on a 21-point uh, spurt uh, and then really got going late with a couple of big plays. The Baylor offense really been challenged. 17 rushes uh, for a net 11 yards. A lot of that is uh, – due to some sacks taken, uh, three sacks on the afternoon by the UT defense, uh, and that lost yardage counts against your rushing total. Uh, the leading rusher on the afternoon uh, is Jordan Neighbors, one carry for five yards. Dominique had Dominique Richardson. Welcome back, Dominique. Uh, you can tell, though, he's not 100%. Five carries 
for a net of four yards, followed by Dawson Pendergrass, two carries for two yards. And Richard Reese has been very absent, only has one carry for one yard. So it'd be interesting, I thought coming to the game, one of my keys to the game was for Richard Reese to touch the ball at least 17 to 20 times. Well, it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. And as we've seen, uh, we've seen that speed makes a big difference. And we go over to the box score for UT, Jonathan Brooks, nine carries for 63 yards and two touchdowns. Well, that nine carries, he has a carry of 40 yards. So if you take that carry for 40 yards, well, he has eight carries for 25 yards. And what that means is eight for 25 means uh, he's really not eating up the Baylor defense. It's about three yards a carry. But then he has a pop run, uh, and that's what you get from players like a, a Jonathan Brooks. You can get that from a, a Richard Reese uh, if you give him enough carries. But UT, 32 plays, 256 yards. Baylor, 41 plays for 220 yards. Baylor did get the one turnover, which was a muffed punt by Xavier Worthy. That led to a field goal, a 31-yard field goal there, 36-yard field goal by Zai Hankins. They closed the gap 28-6. to six. Sawyer Robertson, uh, completion percentage uh, not great, but improving, 13 of 24. And that's an impact. That's actually a result also with a couple of block, I mean, a couple of drops. He had a drop by Monterey Baldwin, also had a drop by Katron, I mean, Katron Jackson coming across the middle. If they don't drop those, now you're 15 of 24, and you're up around that 60%. But you're, that's going to happen. But Sawyer Robertson playing a little bit better. He's also using his feet. That was another key, sweet feet. I felt that Richard Reese needed about 17 to 20 carries. And I also believe that Sawyer Robertson had to use his legs. Now, rushing, he is not on the rushing totals because of the sacks. But he's used his feet at opportune opportunities to get a couple of first downs. And I think you're going to need more of that uh, offensively. Uh, third down has been a real challenge uh, for the Baylor offense. Uh, third downs on the afternoon, Baylor 3 of 11, UT 2 of 5, right around their average. They're about 37.8%. UT is at 40%. Uh, Baylor's below that. Baylor's around 20. 33% uh, is 3 of 10, so they're a little bit below that, right around 30%, 27%. Uh, some production needed there. Baylor 4 0 of 1 on fourth down. UT has not tried to go for it on fourth down. Uh, red zone scoring chances, both teams 2 of 2. The challenge is, is that Baylor's two scores have been two field goals, and we've seen that early here in the season. And UT's uh, two inside the 20 opportunities uh, resulted in a seven-yard rush uh, by Baxter and then a two-yard rush by Jonathan Brooks. Uh, so we see there uh, that the UT offense has gotten a rhythm going. It really all happened in that second quarter. It was seven to three going into the second quarter, and Baylor made a couple of, uh, of negative plays on defense. Mike Smith misses Jonathan Brooks, and once he misses Jonathan Brooks, uh, Jonathan Brooks scampers uh, for that 40 yards. And then there late we saw that Quinn Ewers, who is not a runner, Quinn Ewers 12 of 16 in that first half for just 126 yards. So not very exorbitant uh, 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 passing stats, uh, but he did. He was supported by Xavier Worthy, who threw a touchdown pass, a 35-yard touchdown pass to the J Jatavian, uh, Jatavian Sanders uh, on the afternoon. So Jatavian Sanders is the leading receiver. Uh, four catches for 61 yards. Ad Adonai Mitchell, two catches for 33 yards. And actually, Xavier Worthy has been held to only 10 yards receiving on two catches. So Baylor's doing a good job against Xavier Worthy, uh, but have to get uh, that those explosive plays under, un under control. Keytron Jackson, three catches for 55 yards. He had the 39-yard catch uh, there late in the second, I mean, their middle second quarter that got Baylor a conversion on second and long. Uh, also, Dominic Richardson has two catches for 11 yards, followed by Drake Dabney, two for four, and Hal Presley, two for 12. And also, Monterey Baldwin had one for about 12 yards as well uh, on the afternoon. Time of possession uh, for both teams is really not out of whack because uh, UT has scored quickly. Baylor, 17 minutes and 39 seconds uh, to 12 minutes and 21 seconds uh, for UT. And, and 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 therefore, uh, that's what the second half, that's what the first half has brought you. Next, we'll bring you the second half. This is the Baylor Sports Media Network. This is Cole Posey with Baylor Baseball, and this is my story. When I walk away from Baylor, I know I will be a more well-rounded individual. Not only am I getting a top-tier athletic experience, I'm also getting top-tier training and character development. The ability to compete at the highest level to be challenged spiritually and to be pushed academically are unique things that no other university but Baylor can offer. My name is Cole Posey, and this is my championship. 
Read more Champions Tribune at BaylorBears.com. For a limited time, get high-performance, ultra-reliable internet from Astound Broadband, starting as low as $25 per month. And now we have mobile, too. Visit Astound.com to order the number one rated internet. Create the perfect plan with fast speeds to meet all your needs. Plus, get a two-year price lock when you upgrade to award-winning gig internet. No contracts, no hidden monthly fees, and no data caps. Switch today. Head to Astound.com or call 1-800-4-ASTOUND. Restrictions apply. See website for details. Baylor Athletics Group experiences are back. Fans can now purchase exclusive experiences on the Baylor Sports app for an elite in-venue experience at select Baylor Athletic events. New this year, fans can submit their own video board messages to go on the big screen during the game. Baylor football experiences include on-field photos, sideline access during warm-ups, tunnel access during the team runout, and an in-game radio booth experience. Purchase your experience today through the Baylor Sports app. Premier ER and Urgent Care has all the convenience of urgent care with all the expertise of an ER, all under one roof. At every visit, be seen by ER-trained staff with on-site lab and CT, X-ray, ultrasound, and EKG. Here, you pay for the appropriate level of care that you receive, and we are in network with most major insurance providers. Premier ER and Urgent Care has four convenient locations serving Texas, San Marcos, Temple, Waco, and Woodway. To learn more, visit www.premier.care. Been listening to the Nissan Halftime Show on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Brought to you by Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, championship partner of Baylor Athletics. Visit Texas Farm Bureau Insurance online to find a local agent today. Baylor Scott and White Health, the official hospital and healthcare system of Baylor Athletics. Your healthcare, your way. HEB, the official grocer of Baylor Athletics. Proudly serving Texans since 1905. TFNB, the official local bank of Baylor Athletics. Premier ER and Urgent Care. Feel better now. Nissan, innovation for excitement. Stay tuned as we rejoin the voice of the Baylor Bears, John Morris. Live from the booth, bringing you the second half of action and more. All coming up on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Texas won the toss to start the game. Baylor kicks off to begin the third quarter. It's a pooch kick by, uh, by the Bears. And Jordan Whittington covers it, and Baylor has him covered and down at the 26-yard line. So it ends up being a one-yard difference had the Bears kicked it out the back of the end zone for a touchback. But trying something there, trying to turn things uh, in their favor, trailing 28-6, and we're underway in the third quarter. Texas leading 28-6 over the Bears. Longhorns from their own 26-yard line. Quinn Ewers gives to Jonathan Brooks. Tries to stretch it out to the left side. Finally pushed out of bounds on the far sideline. That was Devin Bobby who slowed him up. Matt Jones in on that tackle for the Bears. And it was a gain of four to the 30-yard line. That's a good run by John the Brooks. Baylor did a great job of stalemating the UT run game at the line of scrimmage. And he does a little hesitation and turns what probably should have been a no gain into three, four yards. Three receivers on the right side for UT. Second down and six for the Longhorns. Ewers fakes the handoff, pass over the middle, a one-hand grab by Jatavian Sanders. Watch out, he's at the 30, the 20, slowed up. Baylor pushes him out of bounds just inside the 20-yard line. Wow, that was another great grab. Was that another one-handed catch by Jatavian Sanders? Yeah, it was not bad coverage by Bryson Jackson, but Ewers put that ball right over Bryson Jackson's helmet, and it was a one-hand snatch by Jatavian Sanders. And that's what I said. I mean, Ricky, we're seeing them really work on our linebackers inside coverage, and it has a big place. Yeah, absolutely. And this guy's more like a wide receiver than a tight end anyway. That was a great throw and catch against the Baylor linebacker over the top. How about 49 yards to the 21? First and 10 from there. And off Jonathan Brooks, Matt Jones, good penetration to pull him down. Corey Gordon in on that tackle as well. A loss of one back to the 22. It was a great play by Matt Jones. Good to call his name. Didn't say, couldn't say much about the Baylor defenders here because UT has gotten in a rhythm in that second half, but he really beats the block, gets into the hole, and he sees John the Brooks, and that's just getting there is one part, part of it. Then you got to get John to the ground. Tackle for loss. 
Second down and 11 for UT from the Baylor 22. Hand off to Brooks running right. Brooks is hit and planted at the 19-yard line. Really good <laughs> open field tackle again. Mike Smith is there, and Caden Jenkins. Jenkins is there. I tell you what, that freshman, Caden Jenkins, is uh, really playing outstanding. John, I mean, Jonathan Brooks thought he was going to run over this little corner. And he gets there. J J I'm sorry, Caden Jenkins <laughs> lines him up, lights him up. Now third down and nine here at eight. And UT's going to spread him out. Look for him, though. Jatavian Sanders right to left. Look at him to work inside. If he doesn't, he's going to Worthy to his right. Third down and eight from the 19 for Texas coming up. 12-40 and counting. Third quarter. Texas leads 28-6. to six. Quinn Ewers in the shotgun. Three receivers left, one right. Ewers backpedals. Fires it over the middle. It is too long and incomplete. Jatavian Sanders couldn't come up with a one-hand catch there. So that'll be fourth down and eight. For UT, they're at the 19, and it field looks goal, like yeah. they'll go for a field goal. Yeah, that's good coverage. I mean, you got to make that adjustment. Baylor made a good adjustment, and really, I think Mike Smith kind of got away with a little contact there, but the ball was overthrown. And Mike Smith, they got him in coverage, but now UT's going to line up for what looks to be about a 37-yard field goal attempt. Burt Auburn, the kicker, from the right hash, kicking left to right. Snap, hold, kick. All good, and Texas puts three on the board on their first possession of the third quarter. 12-24 on the clock, third quarter. Our new score, Texas 31, Baylor 6. Take a timeout and be right back on the Baylor Sports Media Network. TFNB Your Bank for Life is the official local bank of Baylor Athletics. Find out why more Central Texas are making TFNB their bank for life. Sign up for our Edge Checking and Savings accounts to earn interest or cash back. With five convenient locations and an award-winning mobile app, banking has never been easier. TFNB Your Bank for Life. Member FDIC. This is Walter Abercrombie, Executive Director of the Baylor Bee Association with a special invitation to join us November 3rd for our 2023 Baylor Athletic Hall of Fame and Wall of Honor Induction Banquet. This year's outstanding class includes Max Muncy from Baylor Baseball, basketball on-time radio analyst Pat Nunn. Do what, John? That also includes Ken Quisenberry and J.D. Walton from football, track and field's Tiffany Townsend, Sandy Forsyth Massey, and Stan Curry, and Dennis Lukosh from men's tennis. Also recognized will be former tennis letter winner George Chandler as the latest addition to the Bee Association's Wall of Honor. The 2023 induction banquet will be held Friday, November 3rd at the Cashin Building on Baylor campus. For tickets or table sponsorships, contact Tammy Harden at 254-710-3045 or email her at Tammy underscore Harden at Baylor.edu. We hope to see you there. Everything we do, we do for you. First Central Credit Union says it's game on. Lower your monthly vehicle payments by refinancing your vehicle with First Central. Make it a winning season with refinancing set to your preferences. You decide the due date and frequency. Financed elsewhere? Save money with a new local game plan. Apply online today. We make it easy to score at firstcentralcu.com. Membership and loan policy requirements apply. Member NCUA. You're listening to Baylor football. Baylor football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Drive by the Longhorns, 236 off the clock. Their first possession of the third quarter culminates in a 37-yard field goal by Burt Auburn. Ups their lead to 31-6 over the Bears. Texas on top, 31-6. Now 12-24 to play in the third quarter. Well, at least you got the stop. I mean, Jatavian Sanders on that great catch. You, you held them and didn't give up points, but uh, the rest of this game is going to boil down to, uh, I mean, whether or not it's going to be competitive is uh, what does your offense do? And as Coach uh, Aranda mentioned, we have to still run the ball. And the reason you run the ball is because you want to make sure uh, that you do not allow the defensive line for UT just to start teeing off on your quarterback, who's still not 100% as his ankle is still just – not all the way there. Yeah, I tell you what, pretty game effort again by uh, Sawyer Robertson. You can tell he's not 100%. But I think he is really hanging in there uh, as well as he can so far tonight. Kickoff by Texas in and out the back of the end zone. 
Bears will begin at their own 25-yard line, now trailing by 25, 31-6 to the Longhorns in the third quarter. Texas will be home hosting the Kansas Jayhawks next week. How about that? Uh -huh. Texas wins this game tonight. They hold on and win. That'd be a matchup of 4-0 teams in the Big 12 Conference. That's wild, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, How things is. change. They change That's fast. Right. And Kansas has come through. And now they're they're, they're just waiting. as under one of the undefeated teams. But here, UT uh, has a little work to do. Baylor on this first drive as they have uh, first out of 10 from the 25. From the 25 on the touchback. Sawyer Robertson takes the snap. Going to pitch it forward to Jordan Neighbors running left. And across the 30 and spilled there at the 31. So that's a nice little six-yard pickup on first down. Hey, it really is. And, uh, you know, they've got Jordan Neighbors there. That's, and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if that was scheduled, I guess, for him to be in. But a, a nice little game. They run that play second. They run it early with Richard Reese as he's in the game. And he picked up six or seven. They picked up six or seven there. Second down and uh, about five. From the 30-yard line, so a five-yard pickup on the previous play. Snap back to Robertson. Robertson passes right sideline. It is caught. Yeah, Keytron Jackson went down. No, it's Hal Presley. Presley went down to the field turf to make that catch. That was a nice catch. Well defended. Hal Presley with the reception for 11 yards. Yeah, it's a good catch, a good throw by Sawyer Robertson. He had some pressure coming at it. He, he didn't see that completion. He just let it go and went to the ground because he got hit. Uh, but that was a good catch by Hal Presley. Drove the, quarter, the corner off. They're going to have an opportunity to run by those corners. They're playing really tight on those sticks. Uh, there will be some opportunities. First down 10 from the 41. Robertson looking to throw there again. Right Goes deep. Down the seam. Right side. Monterey Baldwin's got it. Ball pops out at the end of the play. Did he have the catch? Yeah. Yes. And he's down inside the five-yard line. Well, Ricky, I, I think that was a catch. You, I think you're there. Talk to us. <laughs> and they do. They run it fast, hand off to Pendergrass. He is spun around and down at the four. A 55-yard pass from Sawyer Robertson to the speedy Monterey Baldwin. Got the Bears to the five. And then Baylor, uh, as quickly as they could, ran another play. So it's going to stand, and the Bears have second and goal from the four. Well, I like Monterey on those routes. I'm not as crazy because I think he gets the peaking on the on the routes against zone, but on those posts, on those flies, I like him. Baylor's going to line up here. I think this is a too tight set, and I believe this is Dominic Richardson in the backfield. Second to go from the four for the Bears in the HEB red zone. Robertson gives to Dominic Richardson. He has stacked oh. up. No gain right up the middle attempt for Dominic Richardson. And now it is third down and goal from the four for the Bears. Well, the problem there is, John, is they have 95, Alfred Collins at 6'5", 317 in the middle. They got number 90, Byron Murphy at 6'1", 38, 308. They don't <laughs> even have Tavon Sweat, Tavante Sweat in, Tavondre Sweat. So it's going to be hard to run right up the middle. Uh, so you're going to have to maybe do a play action bootleg, but that's a little slow. I'm going to have to maybe run some rub routes to try to get a guy free or if I can, maybe if I get one-on-one, -on -one, I go to the corner with a fade with Hal Presley to the left, but he's not going to have that route. Here's third down and goal from the four. Robertson fakes the handoff. Let it go. Has time. Now flushed, rolling right, rolling, looking, and he'll throw it away out the back of the end zone. So being chased there, he ends up just throwing the ball away. And the Bears have fourth and goal at the four after the big 55-yard uh, completion to Monterey Baldwin. Let's check in with Ricky. Well, that that was tough on Sawyer. I think Texas knew the Bears were going to try to throw the football. When you got past second down, go into third down, that was a throwing play, obviously. They were looking for it, brought pressure. That's tough. Sawyer did a good job then of just get rid of, getting rid of the football. Bears 0 for 1 on fourth downs tonight. This is fourth and goal from the four. Three receivers left. Presley comes in motion, sets up in the slot. Snap back to Robertson. On fourth down, it's intercepted in the end zone. Texas comes away with the interception. It is Jalen Ford. The pick, his second of the year. And the Bears turned away on fourth and goal from the four-yard line. Well, John, he, as we get ready for this break, I mean, he was looking at Drake Dabney, and I thought that's where he was going to look. But he never identified Jalen Ford underneath coverage. He was kind of to his left. I'm sorry, yeah, to his left. 
looks like Drake Dabney was kind of curled to his right. Then Jalen Ford was just watching Sawyer's eyes. As soon as he saw Sawyer lock on uh, Drake Dabney, he just jumps it. Never identified, no, never saw him. And Baylor's turned away from that scoring opportunity. So the Bears turn it over. They can't convert on fourth down. And goal from the four, the interception by Jalen Ford, the senior linebacker at a Frisco Lone Star High School. Huge play, put the Bears in position. Ricky, it was nice to see uh, Monterey Baldwin uh, on the receiving end of a really, really big play. Well, he was, and like J.J. said, th that's where you use Monterey Baldwin. He's, he's a little guy. It's tough to hit him coming across the middle unless he's got to run away from the linebacker and he's got a big crease. But they're not going to run Monterey down. He was clearly past everybody. It's a shame he couldn't grab that, get another four or five yards, put it into the end zone then the turnover, but that's a good play. That's the momentum. That's something to build on going forward. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Bears come away with no points, still trailing 31-6 to to the Longhorns. So that drive uh, comes away with no points. And I, and I think no question the right decision. Don't you agree? Uh, going for it on fourth down, what's the field goal, you know, going to do for you at this point? Yeah, John, I mean, 31-9 does nothing for you, really. I mean, it's 23 points, it's three scores. So, so I mean, which I'm going to say 22. So what, what do you do? And Coach did the right job. He went for it on the fourth. Now, the only question I have is the third down call is because you have 600 pounds of man right. in the middle, and you've not blocked them that well to, for this game. And I just I, – that call there I thought put Sawyer in a bad position because as Ricky – I'm sorry, as a second down call – he had a throw on play action on third down, and fourth down is going to be a pass. So, uh, but nevertheless, I mean, Baylor, I mean, had opportunity, a young quarterback kind of trying to stare down a receiver, gets intercepted, and Baylor comes away uh, without any points. So uh, that's going to happen, but it was good. I mean, I'm hoping that the, they see, I mean, like Monterey, that hope is scares me. Let's have Monterey run those routes and then see if we can then get them to back off and see if we can run the ball. But it's the right decision. Bears their biggest single play of the night, that 55-yard uh, pass from Sawyer Robertson to Monterey Baldwin. It's brought to you by Central Transportation, moving the chains. Moving is a bear. Let Central Transportation Systems cage that bear and leave it to the professionals to handle all of your moving and storage needs. Whether you're moving to Dallas, Houston, or across the country, Central Transportation Systems can pack and move your home and give you the ultimate moving experience. Give them a call at 254-256-2577. That's 254-256-2577. Or visit online at www.centralsystems.com slash Baylor. Well, this can work out for you. If your defense can stand up, now your team's been moving the ball, but they've lost a little bit of the edge, I think, a little bit. If the Baylor defense can really get a stop, then maybe you get a punt return here and get decent field position. But this is a huge... Huge first down play because you got to get a, a, a good production here on this first down. All right, so the interception by Ford returned to five, so that's where UT begins, their own five-yard line. Ewers turns, gives to C.J. Baxter. Off left tackle, three yards out to the eight-yard line on the first down carry. And now what you got to expect, they've been working middle linebackers. They probably figure that Baylor will adjust. They got worthy to the wide side of the field, trying to see if they can get one-on-one -on -one coverage. They're going to watch number 20. Baylor's look showing cloud coverage. Help. Here's the play. Second down and seven. Ewers looking to throw. Drops it underneath. Pitch is made to the 15. Out to the 20 is C.J. Baxter again. And that gets them out of the hole. They're out to their own 20-yard line. Yeah, just nice complimentary. He's giving Ewers half the field to look at. He has Worthy doing. He's kind of trying to do a double move. He goes out. He goes up. Then he shuts it down when he can't get on top. Nothing there, then he leaks his running back out. He just jumps down, and the running back does the rest. Cooper lands with the tackle for the Bears. Byron Vaughns is in there at the left defensive end spot for the Bears. Ooh. And off to Baxter, man, he is hit hard. Wow, Devin Lemire delivered the leather on that hit. Dropped him in his tracks. Yeah, he He's going to get on. a one-yard <laughs> gain, but, man, he paid for that. Well, John, they'll see play action later, but I'm telling you, David Lemire came downhill. I mean, as soon as he read run play off the blocking scheme, he was in the hole from a safety position about the time the running back got to the line of scrimmage, and he makes a play, second yeah. and ten. He got there fast and with a bad attitude. Second down and nine coming up for UT. Ball at uh, their own 21-yard line. Fake the handoff to Baxter. Ewers is sacked by Matt Jones. 
Ewers, little play action there, little slow developing, and Matt Jones made him pay. Loss of five back to the 16-yard line. Yeah, he's going to try to bootleg, go to his right, throw that thing back left. Baylor actually had decent coverage, which is why I think when he looked the first time, he just kind of hitched it and didn't let it fly. Uh, and then Matt Jones got there, got the quarterback. I like Matt Jones going after the quarterback. CQB, get QB. He does a good job of that. <laughs> Third down and 14 for UT. They're at their own 16-yard line. They need the 30 for a first down. Empty backfield, Ewers in the shotgun, three receivers right, two to the left side. Texas traveling left to right, third quarter. Ewers going deep down the middle of the field. He's got a man, the catch is made. Devin Lemire tracks him down and makes the tackle. John Tay Cook with a big time reception. And credit Quinn Ewers, that pass was right on target. I'll tell you, they took advantage of Devin Lemire. He's looking down, he's probably looking at the sticks. I don't know what he was doing because, I mean, <laughs> I mean, the, the receiver there is Jonte. Is that Jonte? Jonte Cook. Jonte Cook was inside players. They run a play there, John, pick up another 12 yards. But I think that is Jonathan Brooks on a handoff from yours. Uh, but he just, Jonte Cook, he just runs up the seam right by Devin. He never reacts, and he was wide open. And that's why I know Devin knows that was his man. And now UT is threatening John there at the 21-yard line. 51 yards on that long pass play to Jonte Cook. Then a run of... 12 more by Jonathan Brooks, and Texas has it at the Baylor 21-yard line. 547 and counting, third quarter, 31-6, Texas leads. Ewers on a slant, Xavier Worthy's got it, and he's into the end zone, touchdown, Texas. Xavier Worthy has a nose for the end zone, and he is there to up the lead to 37-6 for the Longhorns. Yeah, that's very easy, that's just like a little RPO, I mean, I mean, Really, I mean, Ewers is just reading outside. I mean, he's he's looking. He puts the ball out like he's going to put in the belly running back. He sees Xavier Worthy. Xavier Worthy sees there's nobody inside. Nobody inside. And he breaks in on that quick slant. And after he caught that ball, he only had a little bit to go as he is the inside slot to Ewers' is right. So he puts it in. He sees nothing there. Boom. He's right there in the middle, middle of the field. Easy pitch and catch. Burt Auburn adds the extra point kick. And with 5.36 to play in the third quarter, the Longhorns have driven the ball 95 yards on seven plays, 3.28 off the clock. They up their lead to 38-6 to over the Bears. Our coverage continues after this word from your local station. Texas Golf Carts has been providing sales, service, and leasing to Central Texas since 1993. We offer many different parts and accessories from various manufacturers and are the only authorized Yamaha and club car dealer in Central Texas. Visit our new location off Highway 6 in Waco or call us at 848-5991 and let us know what you are looking for and we'll provide the expertise in meeting and achieving your desires and specifications. We are also proud supporters of the Baylor Bears. Sick em, Bears! For a limited time, get high-performance, ultra-reliable internet from Astound Broadband, starting as low as $25 per month. And now we have mobile, too. Visit Astound.com to order the number one rated internet. Create the perfect plan with fast speeds to meet all your needs. Plus, get a two-year price lock when you upgrade to award-winning gig internet. No contracts, no hidden monthly fees, and no data caps. Switch today. Head to Astound.com or call 1-800-4-ASTOUND. Restrictions apply. See website for details. First Central Credit Union invites you to join our team. Game Strategy, earn 5% APY on your money. Enjoy ATM fee refunds and the ability to make deposits 24-7 at our ATMs. You can earn interest and have access to your money. Suit up in a free new member t-shirt. Join our team today at firstcentralcu.com. Everything we do, we do for you. Sick em, Bears. Eligibility and qualifications apply. APY annual percentage yield. Member NCUA. Hi, this is John Morris for Green. Idea out of this break, John? Let Green Eye Associates, Doctors Lee okay. Green and Avery Platt help huh? you see Waco clearly. Their experienced team enjoys making your eye exam fun, easy, and accurate, providing trustworthy and honest communication about your eyes and eyewear. Visit them on Lake Air Drive or at GreenEyeAssociates.com to see their services and a wide selection of eyewear made on site by experts. Green Eye Associates, official optometrist of Baylor Athletics. You're listening to Baylor Football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. 
five-yard scoring drive by Texas, 328 off the clock. Ups their lead to 38-6 to over Baylor, 536 on the clock, third quarter. Let's pause here 10 seconds for station identification. Back in 10 seconds on the Baylor Sports Media Network. From the Allen Samuels Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Studios, this is KRZI Waco, K222DC Waco, K265DV Temple, ESPN Central Texas. 38-6, Longhorns on top. We appreciate you being with us tonight. Alongside J.J. Joe, Ricky Thompson on the sidelines, Jeff Walter, our spotter and statistician, Bob Baker, our engineer here in the booth. We appreciate Aaron Sexton, our network board operator, and Kelly Moore, our frequency coordinator. And it's 38-6, Texas on top. Set to kick it off, Jordan Neighbors back deep for Baylor. Crowd has thinned somewhat, was a uh, sellout crowd. Let me give you the number. They gave us the uh, official attendance, 49,165. The official attendance tonight, 49,165. Kick is away by Stone. Nor neighbors up, takes it at the three. He'll return it to the 10 and blast it just across the 15-yard line. Big time hit by Quintravian Wisner. Quintravion Wisner makes the hit on special teams. Yeah, now the Baylor offense, you got the big play on the previous series of downs and really could not convert it into any points after the INT. Uh, so now you know, hey, I got to, I got an opportunity here to go deep. Maybe maybe they loosen up something, but probably not. When you have a big, a big gap like that, you're still going to press a little bit to make sure that uh, you don't give them much room. So here's the... Here's the series. Bears begin at their own 17-yard line. Sawyer Robertson, a quarterback, takes the snap in the shotgun. Couple of steps to his right, passes to Monterey Baldwin, bumped out of bounds at the 20. So a two-yard gain on that first down play before he is knocked out of bounds on the far sideline into the Texas bench area. Well, trying to get Monterey the ball a little bit. On that one, I would like to see him throttle down a little bit. Uh, it really wasn't anything out to the flight. He comes across, the, uh, comes, comes across in motion. He goes and runs it out, but he's going so fast that once he catches it, he really only has one way to turn. If he throttles down a little bit when he's in that void, he catches it, then he has the opportunity to maybe turn inside. Third catch tonight for Monterey Baldwin for a total of 81 yards. Bears looking at second down and seven now from the 20. Hand off, right side, pushing the pile forward out to the 25 and down there. And a five-yard gain on that carry. That is Richard Reese who gets up off the bottom of the pile. So the Bears looking at third down and two from their own 25. Good to see Reese get him a couple, get him a carry there, but it's really quick trigger there on third down and about two. Dawson Pendergrass in off the right shoulder of quarterback Sawyer Robertson. Now switches over to the left side. Third down and two for the Bears. Robertson pass. It is caught. Yes, at the 30. Jake Roberts holds on to it, kind of took it on his hip and gathered control of the uh, ball and is out to the 40-yard line. So a first down, 15-yard pickup as Sawyer Robertson hits Jake Roberts. Yeah, I like those kind of routes for those tight ends. Nice first down route to get him an opportunity, get a little rub route, got him off. He got a little pick play from, I think that was Keytron Jackson. He comes on the out. Nice pitch, nice catch. New set of downs for the Bears out to their own 40-yard line. First downs brought to you by Belfour Property Restoration. Sawyer Robertson fakes the handoff. Watch out. He's going to get blasted. He does, and the ball sails incomplete. Coming in on that left side to really deliver the blow. Number 17. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have his name right there. So they're kind of going, uh, going a little the, deep, yeah. right, That's into their uh, backs up. Jamon Tapp was the edge rusher who uh, laid that blow on Sawyer Robertson. No, it was a good rush. Uh, and, and right now, Baylor now second and 10. Just got to get some here, like five yards. Here's second down and 10. Sawyer Robertson passes right side. Too tall. Josh Cameron, the intended receiver, had a little space there, but uh, pass was way too tall for him. The Bears now looking at third down and 10 from their own 40. Yeah, it's once again, Sawyer left it high. It's to the wide side of the field. Uh, he didn't really put a bunch of smoke on it. He's trying to take a little off of it because Jordan Cameron had created space. 
He's at 12 yards. The ball goes over his head, and that's the completion as you watch film. You know, what she had back is just kind of bringing the motion all the way through. Now they're going to go with a two-by-two two set, bring Dawson Pendereth uh, back, back in the backfield for protection. Here's the play, third down and 10. Robertson passes underneath, and there's nowhere to run. Jake Roberts made the catch, but he was wrapped up immediately, and he'll lose a yard to the 39-yard line. So the Bears get it out to the 40 and can go no further. They're going to have to punt the ball back to the Longhorns. Yeah, just as just hard. The consistency is, is not really there for the offense yet. They'll have a decent play, and then they'll, they'll not have the consistency with the completion. So now they're going to punt the ball away back to this explosive UT offense. Two returners back deep for UT. Good snap by Grimes. Back to Palmer Williams. That was nearly blocked. Punt near side. It's dropped again. It's a loose ball. Baylor, Baylor may have recovered another muffed punt. Hang on. They're unstacking. They're at the 19-yard line. Jordan Whittington was the punt return man who bobbled that punt. And there's a tug of war going on in that pile. The officials have not signaled ruling on yet. The field is the punt was muffed by Texas, recovered by Baylor. All First right, down. that's the ruling on the field. Baylor has another one. What is that? That's a nice cut. Is that? Uh, who is that? That's not the. No, Devin not, Bobby this time. It, no, it's 26 who has the ball. Oh, is that Garrison Grimes again? Yeah, yeah. It is yeah, Garrison it is. Grimes. <laughs> we should have known that. Yeah. Garrison Grimes comes up with another muffed punt and a second takeaway tonight by Grimes and by the Bears. Well, second wow. half again. And now this is one where, you know, I think Coach Randall would go for it again. I mean, uh, this is where Saul, I mean, Sawyer has to be, he has to, he has to be smart here. He has to make sure that he takes care of the ball uh, last few couple games, I mean, he's had some chances inside the red zone. Bears take over at the Texas 19-yard line inside the HEB red zone. Sawyer Robertson fakes the handoff, turns, passes back near side. It is caught. Not much running room there. Out of bounds is Dominic Richardson at the 15-yard line. So a pickup of four on the play to the 15. First down's brought to you by Belfour, where they offer uh, they offer certainty at uncertain times. Yeah, that's green. I like maybe a little different back in there. I mean, Richardson, he's giving it a go, but you can tell he's just the high angle sprain takes a few weeks. He got it and maybe had opportunity to stop, but on a bad ankle, it's hard to stop before you go out of bounds. Now Neighbors is in the backfield with Sawyer Robertson, and UT's going to call a timeout. Timeout, Texas. This is their first of the half. This is a 30-second timeout. All right, so a Texas timeout. We'll keep it right here. 2-11 on the clock, third quarter. Texas leads 38-6. to How about Garrison Grimes tonight? Twice Texas has muffed punts. Twice Garrison Grimes, the deep snapper, has uh, covered those for Baylor takeaways. Yeah, and, and John, I mean, he, I mean, he's done a great job. Like I say, the new rules have it to when he snaps it. They can't put a guy on top of him. So what you do is you find somebody who can snap and who's a good athlete. And if you can get him to snap it and he gets a free run and he knows when the ball is snapped, so he takes off fat before yeah, anybody. Right. And yeah. if you got a good athlete, you can get down there and get in the mix. And he's got the second muff punt. So uh, Baylor now has to do something with it, though. They got a yeah. field goal on the last muff. And now they're faking, facing second down and six here uh, from the 15-yard line. All right, Bears trailing 38-6, to six, trying to make, take advantage of their second takeaway tonight. Jordan Neighbors in the backfield again. Pitch to him. Neighbors to run. Gets by one man. And he stretches to the eight-yard line. That's a first down for the Bears. How about that? He ran through an arm tackle and ends up with a seven-yard gain and a Baylor first down. Well, I think the, my, my play sheet tells me Jordan Neighbors is a receiver, but he yeah. runs like he's probably yeah. been back there before, right? He looked good, exactly. Yeah, like he's been back there before, and that's a nice little tall sweep. And, uh, he picks up a nice game, picked first down. He ran through a couple of tackles. Sophomore out of Rockwall Heath, Jordan Neighbors. First and goal for the Bears at the eight-yard line. Straight eye behind quarterback Robertson. Handoff. That is Pendergrass. Hits the hole and is pushed backwards. They'll give him maybe a yard on forward progress. Yeah, Pendergrass, uh, like I said last week, I mean, he had some good moves. I thought maybe he's more of a second down and short goal line guy. Uh, but now when he gets to space, uh, he's a very good runner, tight 
breaking tackles, but when they play UT, as they face his second and goal from about the seven or eight, uh, there's going to be big bodies there. And you can see on that one, he tried to lower his pads, couldn't, couldn't get that in. Second and goal here from the seven. See what Sawyer uh, does here. Take care of the ball. Matthew Kloffenstein, a freshman tight end, is in. And the slot to the left, he goes in motion. Snap back to Robertson. Hands the ball. It is uh, Dawson Pendergrass again. He's to the five on that play. Well, now it's third down and goal from the five for Baylor. Yeah, trying to, trying to sneak uh, uh, Dawson Pendergrass underneath there. Just, it's, it's, it's just tough there. I mean, you know, he's not, a, he's not an explosive back. So by the time that thing develops, uh, UT, who has really good athletes, are going to close that gap pretty quick unless you can get those linemen to the second level. Now, third goal, you have two downs. You got another Sawyer. I got two downs here. I'm going to see if I got man to the left with Keytron. If I do, I'm going to give him a shot at the fade. Here's the play. Third down and goal from the five. Robertson backpedals. Now going to try to run for it, and he's down. A loss of a couple on that play. Well, he really surveyed the field well, it looked like. Then finally took off, and uh, it'll be a loss of, call it three, back to the eight-yard line. So it's fourth down and goal from the eight. They'll have some extra time to think about what they'll do as that's the end of the third quarter. Our game tonight brought to you by HEB. HEB, the presenting sponsor for Baylor football 2023. End of the third quarter at McLean Stadium. Our score, Texas 38, Baylor 6. You're listening to the Baylor Sports Media Network. TFNB Your Bank for Life is the official local bank of Baylor Athletics. Find out why more Central Texas are making TFNB their bank for life. Sign up for our Edge checking and savings accounts to earn interest or cash back. With five convenient locations and an award-winning mobile app, banking has never been easier. TFNB Your Bank for Life. Member FDIC. If you need a trailer, Flat Rock Trailers has got you covered. From light-duty single-axle utility trailers to the big Tex tandem duels. We also carry a full line of enclosed cargo trailers. Need a motorcycle trailer? We've got them. Need a dump trailer? We've got the largest selection in the state. Oil field trailers? We carry a full line of big Tex trailers to handle all your needs. Trailer repairs? We repair all makes and models. We'll even rent you a trailer if you need to use one for a day. Flat Rock Trailers, your number one source for all your trailer needs. Find us at flatrocktrailers.com. Kids can now join the Baylor Cup Club, the official kids club of Baylor Athletics. Fans 12 and under can register for the low cost of $25 and gain exclusive benefits and access to Baylor Athletics events. Members receive free admission to select events, exclusive giveaway access, and their own membership package. To register your cub, please visit BaylorBears.com slash Cub Club. Sign your cub up today and sick them bears. Jeff Hess, Mazda, and the Baylor Bears both know what it takes to be number one. Hard work, determination, commitment. The number one Mazda dealer in Texas, Jeff Hass Mazda, is inviting all the Baylor Bear fans listening to visit us for hard-hitting deals on every new Mazda in stock with fresh inventory hitting the ground daily. And every new Mazda comes with our Jeff Hass Advantage plan. Plus, your trade is now worth more than ever. We're buying all makes and models. Get our best cash offer in minutes. Jeff Hass Mazda on the KD Freeway. Number one based on 2021 sales and stock volume and a call free. You're listening to Baylor football. Baylor football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. To the fourth quarter here at McLean Stadium. A fourth down and goal from the eight-yard line will be the first play of the fourth quarter. Baylor trailing 38-6. to six. J.J., how about some of the stats through three quarters? Well, John, 406 yards for the UT offense, 226 for Baylor. 203 through the air, only 23 on the ground. Now, some of that's been impacted by lost yardage, but Jordan Neighbors, now two carries for 12 yards, is a leading rusher. He's a receiver. Yes, that Jordan Neighbors listed as a receiver in your in your program, but, hey, they put him in the backfield, uh, and, and and they put him in the backfield, and he's gained, been the leading rusher. Richard Reese, two for six. Dawson Pendergrass, five for five yards. And jo Dominique Richardson, six for four. Uh, 24 carries in total for 23 yards. If you factor in the lost shortage, uh, saw your pin, uh, saw your Robertson, 20 of 35, so 57 percent. He's got that up there, but 203 yards, no touchdowns. Really need an opportunity through the area here. Turnovers, well, UT has fumbled the ball twice on muff punts. Uh, Baylor has the one interception there going in on the last series of downs after uh, Baylor had threatened to score, couldn't convert it. Now they're down there again at fourth down and goal from about the eight. 
uh, time of possession. Uh, really, to be honest with you, it favors uh, the Baylor Bears. 26 and 30, 26 minutes, 35 seconds to 18 minutes, 25 seconds, and seven tackles for loss for UT, six for Baylor. As we get ready, John, for this fourth down play here. Fourth and goal. All right, here we go. Fourth down and goal from the eight-yard line for the Bears. Pendergrass in the backfield. Three receivers right, one to the left side. Snap back to Robertson. Watch out. Pressure and sacked. He goes down at the 19-yard line. Bears go backwards on fourth and goal from the eight. Finkner makes the tackle of quarterback Sawyer Robertson. Justice Finkley made the tackle, and the Bears will come away with no points Again, fourth down and goal from the eight. They had it as close as, what, the four, I think. Yep, I think you're right. I think, you're, I think it was four. And then pushed backwards a little bit, and they'll come away with no points. Yeah, that's the second time Baylor threatening inside the 10. And, of course, they passed the field goal. So you just really, two field goals doesn't really make, they don't really make a big difference here. Uh, but, uh, man, uh, the opportunity to score points has been the bugaboo for the Baylor offense all year long. And, it's come back to bite them here, and UT has the ball here. First and first down, 10. They take over at their own 19-yard line. Quinn Ewers still chunking at quarterback. He's going to hand this one off. That's a new back in there for UT. Keelan Robinson with the carry. Robinson, a senior, a transfer from Alabama. Maybe his first uh, carry tonight, you think? He uh, maybe had a catch earlier. I think that is his first carry. Yeah. About a nine-yard gain. Maybe it was a return. That's right. So a nine-yard carry on that first down play leaves Texas second and one from the 27. Snap back to Ewers. This time C.J. Baxter. Bears ride him to the turf, but enough for a first down. Just shy of the 30-yard line, Chateau Reed will get credit for the tackle along with Devin Bobby. So move the chains, first down Texas. We're in the fourth quarter, 14 minutes to play. Texas leading Baylor 38 to six. Here's Ewers, play action, going deep. Receiver fell down, Baylor was chasing that ball. That's it was uh, Chateau Reed trying to get to it and couldn't, it was well overthrown. That's a good play, Baylor. I mean, they were gonna once again do like a little play action against the Baylor defense and, and they did a great job against Adonai Mitchell. Here's the call. There was Illegal a flag. substitution, 12 men on the field, defense. It's a five-yard penalty, replay first down. <laughs> oh, okay. So, <laughs> okay, well, I thought they were going to call the P.I. Actually, yeah, yeah. We, we were trying to get our, get our subs right. So 12 men on the field and a five-yard penalty leaves Texas first and five from the 35. 13.50 on the clock, fourth quarter. Ewers. Flares it out to the right side. Adonai Mitchell with the catch. He's out to the 49-yard line. Chateau Reed makes the tackle. Mike Smith was there. First down, Longhorns. They've got it out to their own 48. Yeah, now UT's going to take their time. Uh, this is really one where, you know, really the game is not in question. You just want to use as much time as possible. Uh, offense wants to get another score. Uh, then they'll let... Uh, uh, the reserves take over for whatever is remaining. But Baylor now you're trying to get some momentum in some way. Got some positive things. Trying to get a stop here. Ewers play action. Passes underneath. Caught by the tight end to the 50, to the 40, to the 35. As a blocker in front of him, he's all the way to the Baylor 30-yard line. Gunner Helm, the tight end with that catch. Did a good job of staying behind a blocker or two there. He's all the way to the Baylor 31-yard line on the play. Yeah, a lot of those plays are just timing. And, and what you can tell is they're well coached with timing. That means that players don't get to where they're supposed to be too early. Uh, they, don't, they don't get there late. Uh, and really, you have Hunter, he had to do a good job of tight end screen, of waiting, then getting to the spot where he's supposed to be, and then being patient behind his line. That's just that's repetition practice, and it's really good coaching. 21-yard pickup on that previous play. Handoff, TJ, CJ Baxter. Baxter with about four yards to the 28. Call it three to the 28. Texas content to run the ball, run some clock now. 12-16 in counting. Fourth quarter, leading Baylor 38 to six. Quinn Ewers has gone the entire way at quarterback. Ewers will hand it off. That looks like Brooks right up the middle. Tough running. He's inside the 20. 
knocked down there, but that'll be another first down, a nine-yard pickup for UT. Yeah, he just runs through tackles. I mean, you don't think about it. Jonathan Brooks, he looks at it, his acceleration from zero to about 25. He, he hits the hammer. You can really tell. I mean, he's six foot 207, so he's a little bit uh, a, little, a little bit more stout than he may think. From the 19, Brooks again starts right, comes back left. Now jer jolts forward, and he's all the way to the seven-yard line. And that Caden Jenkins again. Caden Jenkins is from in the working outside in from a corner position. If he doesn't make that tackle, Jonathan Brooks runs through three other tackles and gets the touchdown. Brooks already with, uh, what, two touchdown runs tonight. Gets the carry here inside the five. He's to the one-yard line. Tripped up there at the one. So Texas second and goal from the one. Looking to add to their 38-6 lead on the Bears. And they're right there. And now I think the Baylor defense is getting a little bit fatigued. And UT running with a little tempo. Handoff again this time. Runs into the waiting arms of Matt Jones. Loss of a couple there, maybe a yard and a half. Devin Bobby also in on that tackle. Matt Jones a little slow getting up. Yeah, Matt did a good job of, of really attacking the hole there. It's smart, but then you can bet Sark wants to get this last score because this will finish the game off from his perspective. And you got to watch. You know, they got Jatavian Sanders in there, the play action pass. Uh, Baylor has to honor once they get inside that two and a half yard line. Now, UT has to honor the run, and they're having some substitution issues. And once you honor that run, then it's guys like uh, Jatavian Sanders uh, with good size inside, good hands uh, that are really a threat. So let's see. They got a bunch formation to his left. It's either going to be a tall sweep left to play action off of it. Third and goal from the three. They'll toss it. Running left side. That's Brooks again. Gang tackled by the Bears. They were keying on Jonathan Brooks. He is tackled for no gain. Trevor Maye makes leads the way for the Baylor defense. Well, that's going to be fourth down goal. Uh, the Baylor offense really had threatened the UT defense much uh, outside of a couple big plays. So if I'm sorry if like him, I go for this because I know getting it to 45-6 allows me to play my subs and feel pretty comfortable. So probably going to. I figure this is a little play action. He's got Worley to his left. Worley's not really a jump ball guy, but Jatavian Sanders goes left to right. Oh, and maybe bit. movement by Texas. Yeah, Flags is, dropped. Yeah. Ooh, that don't, that's a snap. Number 65, yeah, it offense. Down. Yeah. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. That backs it up from the three to the eight. Yeah, you kick that down. So then it becomes an easy decision. Fourth down and goal from the eight for Texas. Looks like they will kick here. 9.43 on the clock, fourth quarter. Bert Auburn is back out there. That man's had a busy night. It'll be spotted at the right in the center of the field at the 16-yard line. So a 26-yard attempt by Auburn. Kick is away. Oh, and it hit the right upright and bounces back. It's no good. Chateau Reed was in there. He didn't get a piece of it. But, boy, he was uh, in the face of the kicker really quickly. And that one hits the right upright and bounces back. No good. Texas comes away with no points. 9.28 on the clock, fourth quarter. Bears take over on the missed field goal. Trailing Texas, 38-6. We're back after this on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Hi, this is John Morris for Green Eye Associates. Let Green Eye... All right, I'll be right back, John. Leanne Green and Avery Platt help you see Waco clearly. Their experienced team enjoys making your eye exam fun, easy, and accurate, providing trustworthy and honest communication about your eyes and eyewear. Visit them on Lake Air Drive or at greeneyeassociates.com to see their services and a wide selection of eyewear made on-site by experts. Green Eye Associates, official optometrist of Baylor Athletics. No matter which road you take, the Toyota Tundra is the perfect way to navigate it. On your path, you're your own boss and set your own hours. Look at that sunrise. You may find yourself in some pretty remote places. Whoa, that view. It's amazing. Or in places where pastimes become stories that become legends. I got one. I got one. It's a keeper. Hey, get a picture. No one's going to believe this. And each day ends binge-watching stars and dreaming about all the things you'll do the next day. You know what? I'm catching a bigger fish tomorrow. 
built to follow your path, the Toyota Tundra. This Texan knows how to sick them. Toyota is a proud partner of Baylor Athletics. Visit your local Toyota dealer or toyota.com to check out the rugged Tundra today. Toyota, let's go places. See packages and options at toyota.com for feature availability. For a limited time, get high-performance, ultra-reliable internet from Astound Broadband, starting as low as $25 per month. And now we have mobile, too. Visit Astound.com to order the number one rated internet. Create the perfect plan with fast speeds to meet all your needs. Plus, get a two-year price lock when you upgrade to award-winning gig internet. No contracts, no hidden monthly fees, and no data caps. Switch today. Head to Astound.com or call 1-800-4-ASTOUND. Restrictions apply. See website for details. You're listening to Baylor Football. Baylor Football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Also brought to you by Pepsi. Hey, Bears fans, this football season, make Pepsi your go-to game day drink because it's the only drink for football watching. Pepsi, that's what I like. Proud partner of Baylor Bears football. Also brought to you by those famous Antones Po' Boys, a proud sponsor of Baylor Athletics. You can sick them right here at McLean Stadium. Look for Antones' famous Po' Boys. Missed field goal by Texas. Bears have the ball, and Baylor will take over at their own 20-yard line, and it's R.J. Martinez in at quarterback for the Bears. Saw him a couple of series last week against LIU. Martinez out of uh, Round Rock Westwood High School. First play, he'll hand it off. Is that Reese, I think, looking for room. Gets a couple of yards to the 22. Big Devontre Sweat with the tackle. That is one big dude in the middle there. 6'4", 362, senior out of Huntsville. But R.J. Martinez in at quarterback, 9.05 and counting in the fourth quarter. Bears trailing 38-6. Jordan Neighbors in the backfield again. We've seen that several times tonight. Martinez takes the snap. Martinez will swing it out, pass deflected and batted down. I think that was Sweat who swatted that one out of the air incomplete. Well, you don't think about it because he's such a wide guy, but he's about 6'4". <laughs> so he's not as easy, but a pretty tall guy for a defensive tackle. And he's not a great pass rusher, so and he's doing a good job. I mean, I think that was Gavin Byers on this side. I think that was actually Caden Soraki did a good job of blocking him. And all he could do is get his hands up. But when you're 6'4 and then you jump, man, that uh, it takes a lot to get that ball over. you got to go around him. R.J. Martinez, third down and eight for the Bears from their own 22. Snap back to him. Pressured. Now rolling. And he's going to run with it. Got to get to the sticks. And it's going to be close. Had to get to the 30. We'll see where they spot him out of bounds. Just I think short. it's going to be just short, yeah. maybe the 29. You know, R.J. Martinez, that's a good scramble. He looks to the left, and he's just short, about a couple yards, about a yard and a half short of the sticks. And, you know, the question is, what is Coach Aranda going to do here? Uh, fourth down, ball in your territory inside the 30. I understand they might as well go for it. What's the difference? Uh, but uh, nevertheless, a nice scramble to get it to a man's before down where your coach has to make a decision. Martinez played for Coach Anthony Wood at Westwood High School. Here's the fourth down play. Pendergrass breaks free. He's got the first down and more. He is out to the 45-yard line. So the Bears convert on fourth down, a yard and a half. They get 17 on the legs of Dawson Pendergrass. Yeah, nice little run there, a big gap on fourth down. Uh, and Dawson picks up a huge game, much needed conversion. Much needed. Out to the 45 for the Bears. Martinez takes the snap. Watch out, pressured, rolling right. Still looking. Passes it, right sideline, incomplete. Monterey Baldwin, the intended receiver. So quite a high school career for R.J. Martinez. He once had a game when he had 50 completions in a game. Yeah, it's a lot of throwing. I would say so. That's a lot of throwing. Threw for a lot of yards in high school, went to northern Arizona, transferred from there back to Baylor this year. Uh, it's Martinez at the controls at quarterback for the Bears. 740 to play, fourth quarter. 38-6, Texas on top. Jonah Burton in motion, right to left. Sets up in the slot. Second down and 10. 
Pass right sideline is yeah. caught. Yeah, Josh Cameron came back for that ball, made a nice grab. That is a really nice catch at the 43, and that's a Baylor first down. Well, it's interesting because they actually were playing like more of a, a, what I call a cover two cloud. And really, the cornerback on this side, uh, Malik Muhammad, had help. Safety on the hash. Uh, but Jordan Cameron did a great job of snagging that ball, working back to the quarterback and snagging it out of the air. A little bit outside, first down. First down and 10 for the Bears there at the 43. Pass right side, caught by Kelsey Johnson, and he steps out of bounds. Now, some will ask, like, you know, well, why, why when Sawyer was in, well, this is a different, dif dif different defense. Now, UT is just playing a shell, playing two shell. They don't want you to get anything easy, deep. They're giving up to underneath, and a lot of gaps are open. Even on the defensive line, they're pass rushing. So you get a few more yards running, but this gives the offense a little bit of confidence here and rhythm. Second down three for the Bears Blitz. from the 37. Blitz is coming. He beats it past Kelsey Johnson near sideline, and that's a first down. Bears have another first down to the 25-yard line this season. Belfour will donate $10 per Baylor first down to Waco first responders. Thanks to Belfour for supporting first responders. Yeah, you can tell. I mean, uh, you got R.J. Martinez. He's more comfortable in the passing. If he can get a little protection, he has a pretty good idea from throwing so many times where to go with the football. 18 on that last play. Passing it, right side, Josh Cameron. Ooh, maybe picked off. Nope, out of bounds. It was picked off, but he was out of bounds when he made the catch. Malik Muhammad. Just an incompletion. Let's check in with Ricky. That uh, guy's Josh didn't see that ball coming to late. Couldn't turn around either to try to catch it or play defense. That was awfully close to inbounds, guys, but I think it was out. JJ, you're right. Martinez throws a really nice ball. Good decision maker. We've got to remember, too, though, a lot of subs in this Texas defense right now. Yeah, that's a good point. Second and 10 for the Bears at the 25. Pass right sideline is caught. That is Jake the Snake Roberts with the catch. And what you would want there on that last pass with Cameron, Cameron didn't locate it, but really on that one, RJ, you'd want the receiver. I can't get on top of the corner. Let me just shut down, and you throw back shoulder. Five-yard pickup, third down and five for the Bears. Throwing on the run is Martinez, and it's incomplete far sideline. Monterey Baldwin, the intended receiver. So now fourth down and five for the Bears. They've driven to the Texas 20. 5.45 on the clock, fourth quarter. Bears will uh, quite obviously go for it here on fourth down and five, trailing 38 to six. Here's the play with R.J. Martinez at quarterback for Baylor. Dawson Pendergrass in the backfield. Pass near sideline is incomplete. Drake Dabney, ball hit him, uh, a catchable ball it looked like, but it was incomplete and the ball will go over on downs Bears fail to convert on fourth down. Texas has the ball back with 540 to play. Yeah, and I thought he was going to work inside. He actually had an out by the tight end at two receivers. The outside receiver kind of worked in. I thought he was going to work in and shut down in the void. Drake Dabney inside runs it out. And the ball is just a tad bit behind him. One Drake should still catch. That gave the defense an opportunity, John, to swipe at it. And, uh, they did just that, and Baylor turned it over on downs. Baylor one for five on fourth downs this evening. They've been put in a position where they have to go for it on a number of fourth downs late. Timeout on the field, 5.40 to play. Fourth quarter, Texas winning over Baylor 38-6 on the Baylor Sports Media Network. At Allen Samuels in Waco, we've got amazing deals that make you ask, why shop anywhere else? During Ram Power Days, get a new 2023 1500 Lone Star 4x4 Crew Cab, $11,000 off MSRP or 2.9% for 72 months. Or choose a new 2023 1500 Laramie 4x4 Crew Cab, $12,500 off MSRP or 2.9% for 72 months. That's right, we're making big deals, so hurry in today. Allen Samuels in Waco, the place to shop Ram Truck. Premier ER and Urgent Care has all the convenience of urgent care with all the expertise of an ER, all under one roof. At every visit, be seen by ER-trained staff with on-site lab and CT, X-ray, ultrasound, and EKG. Here, you pay for the appropriate level of care that you receive, and we are in network with most major insurance providers. Premier ER and Urgent Care has four convenient locations serving Texas, San Marcos, Temple, Waco, and Woodway. To learn more, visit www.premier.care. 
TFNB Your Bank for Life is the official local bank of Baylor Athletics. Find out why more Central Texas are making TFNB their bank for life. Sign up for our Edge Checking and Savings accounts to earn interest or cash back. With five convenient locations and an award-winning mobile app, banking has never been easier. TFNB Your Bank for Life. Member FDIC. Baylor alumni are more than 160,000 strong. When we all join hands to support our university, I didn't know it could go that high. Move the needle. We move mountains. Working together, we create life changing opportunities for students on the field, in the classroom, in the laboratory, and in life for generations to come. So get connected, get involved. Learn how at baylor.edu slash alumni. You're listening to Baylor Football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Fourth down, new quarterback out there for the Longhorns with 540 to play, leading 38 to 6. Malik Murphy on for the first time tonight. Nice night for Quinn Ewers. His night uh, apparently done, 18 of 23, 293 yards, one touchdown. No interceptions. He, he now has uh, 228 pass attempts this year without an interception. So Malik Murphy takes over at quarterback for Texas. They take over at their own 20-yard line. Hand off to Jaden Blue, a new back. Blue out to the 28-yard line. Eight-yard pickup on the first down carry. And now, you know, you have a lot of guys, a lot of talented guys on both rosters. The UT has a lot of guys that's very talented, don't play much. And now they're going to, you know, the, the defense, you got to continue to keep the intensity. Because these guys want to show Coach they can play. They're running hard. Second down, two. Snap back to Murphy. Blew the handoff again. Weaves his way out for a first down. He's across the 35 to the 37-yard line. Corey Gordon makes the tackle. Five-minute mark, fourth quarter, first down, Longhorns leading 38-6. to six. I think they would bleed the clock a little more, but they're uh, not really spending much time between plays. High snap back, Murphy pulls it down, hands to Blue, and he is stacked up. Cooper Lands leads the way for the Bears. Yeah, John, I, I hear you, but I think really what you have is you have a lot of, a lot of the subs in. You have Malik Murphy at quarterback. You have the backup running back. Uh, in the game, Jay Blue, uh, and then, of course, you had backup players. So these guys don't play a lot game action, and you have one of the UT linemen running off the field there, number 78. Uh, that's Kelvin Banks Jr., who's listed as the starting left tackle, but nevertheless. So these guys, they want to get a few game reps and nothing like getting in in a game that's gotten out of hand. Second down and 10 for Texas. They're at their own 37. Handoff gets away from a tackle and gets some positive yards across the 40 to the 42. Alfonso Allen finishes him off. Oh, he got away from Alfonso Allen. Yeah. So out to the 42-yard line, that ends up being a five-yard gain. Yeah, that's a good. That's actually a good run. And Alfonso Allen had a free runner at him, but the running back actually I don't have that uh, that number right away. But I mean, he he, he ran through the tackle and uh, he didn't see the tackle coming. He ran through it, though, was able to make what should have been a lost yardage play into a positive yardage. So it's third down and about five. See if they give Malik Murphy an opportunity here to throw the ball. Savion Red was that last ball carrier. Here's third down and five from the 42. 317 to play. Malik Murphy fires it over the middle, a little bit behind his receiver and incomplete. Trying to hit DeAndre Moore, Jr., Bring up fourth down. Well, you wonder what the difference between the start and the back up there. Malik, now he's over on the side, but Malik Murphy, a really good athlete. He's turned into a nice thrower. I mean, he has a good little motion, strong arm, but he has a slant working right to left. That's an easy pitch and catch. Left the ball just a little bit behind the receiver there, one where you know if yours was in, it'd probably been right on him. So, uh, nevertheless, UT's going to punt this away, and Baylor's going to come after it. Put a little pressure on Ryan Sanborn, he boots it away. Ball's going to bounce out of bounds. Nice punt inside the five. Nope, going to come just outside the five to the seven-yard line. So a 51-yard punt out of bounds at the seven. 
And that's where Baylor will have the ball with 3.01 on the clock, fourth quarter trailing 38-6. to Well, Baylor really needs some offensive uh, positivity, let's call it, as we get ready to go this break, John. And what you want to do is close out a game. Yeah, you're going to lose this game. It's, the score is going to look ugly, but you got to have some, some feel good as you get ready uh, to get back to work and try to hit to and get ready to head to Orlando next week. Timeout on the field. Let's step aside. 301 remaining. Texas 38, Baylor 6. You're listening to Baylor Bear Football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. No matter which road you take, the Toyota Tundra is the perfect way to navigate it. On your path, you're your own boss and set your own hours. Look at that sunrise. You may find yourself in some pretty remote places. Whoa, that view. It's amazing. Or in places where pastimes become stories that become legends. I got one. I got one. It's a keeper. Hey, get a picture. No one's going to believe this. And each day ends binge watching stars and dreaming about all the things you'll do the next day. You know what? I'm catching a bigger fish tomorrow. Built to follow your path, the Toyota Tundra. This Texan knows how to sick them. Toyota is a proud partner of Baylor Athletics. Visit your local Toyota dealer or toyota.com to check out the rugged Tundra today. Toyota, let's go places. See packages and options at toyota.com for feature availability. Premier ER and Urgent Care has all the convenience of urgent care with all the expertise of an ER, all under one roof. At every visit, be seen by ER-trained staff with on-site lab and CT, X-ray, ultrasound, and EKG. Here, you pay for the appropriate level of care that you receive, and we are in-network with most major insurance providers. Premier ER and Urgent Care has four convenient locations serving Texas, San Marcos, Temple, Waco, and Woodway. To learn more, visit www.premier.care. Ask for Casasa Checking. It's our superpower. First Central Credit Union pays 5% APY on your checking account. There's no penalty in this game. Get great returns while having complete access to your cash. Get in motion with First Central's reward checking that refunds ATM fees nationwide. Enjoy an automatic savings feature that pays you too. It's a snap to apply online at firstcentralcu.com. Everything we do, we do for you. Eligibility and qualifications apply. APY annual percentage yield. Member NCUA. You're listening to Baylor Football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Following the Texas punt at their own seven-yard line. Baylor with the ball, trailing 38-6, 3.01 on the clock in the fourth quarter. It's R.J. Martinez, second consecutive series at quarterback for the Bears. Cameron Bonner splits wide to the right side, two receivers wide to the left side. See what the Bears can do here with the final 301 of the fourth quarter. Kloffenstein in motion. Pass coming back for the ball. Catch is made by Armani Winfield. And out to the 11-yard line, slung out of bounds there. Oh, man, Armani, good to see him get a yeah. little action here late in the game. Get from up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I know I, yeah, it's a nice receiver. Trying to work into the rotation here, getting a little action late. That was grandfather's. Grandfather worked with really? him for a little bit. Yeah, nice. yeah up in Dallas. Four-yard pickup, second down six for the Bears. Two and a half minutes to play, fourth quarter. R.J. Martinez takes the snap in the shotgun. He'll hand the ball to Jordan Neighbors. Neighbors running hard again, and he's got a first down out to the 18-yard line. How about Jordan Neighbors running the ball out of the backfield tonight? Yeah, well, I, I think he's going to find a little spot back there, and I think they'll need him back there. Uh, but it's good to see Jordan. He really had worked in a lot of receivers, got some action. But it looks like he may have played a little running back in high school maybe, and uh, he knows how to take a handoff and, and, and run physically. So good to see that. First downs brought to you by Belfour Property Restoration, a proud partner of Baylor Athletics. It was a first down run, first and 10 for the Bears at the 18. Martinez. Fires it on the left sideline. It's caught by Armani Winfield at the 48-yard line. Tackle made there, but how about that one on a rope? 30-yard yeah. pickup from R.J. Martinez to Armani Winfield. Well, I like to see that, and really that's more of a back shoulder throw. Armani couldn't get on top of the cornerback there, couldn't get by him, so R.J. throws it back shoulder. Good pitch, good catch. Here's Martinez. He's going to run with this one, 50-45, and slides down. See where they spot this one. I think they'll spot it yeah. at the 45 where he started his slide. Yep. 
Knows oh. the ball just inside the 45. I think tell RJ played a little baseball back there. <laughs> that was a good slide. It was a really good slide. <laughs> Did not absorb a hit. 112 and counting. RJ Martinez, Northern Arizona transfer to Baylor this year. As quarterback uh, this series and the previous series here in the fourth quarter. Now getting chased. He's going to throw that one at the knees of uh, his receiver, Dawson Pendergrass, with some hard charging defensive lineman in his face. Even at that, he seemed uh, like a cool customer back there. Uh, you throw the ball that many times, you've yeah. been under a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You know what to do with it. You just throw it. And the smart thing is Dawson Pendergrass is in protection. He could have did a little bit better than what he did, but he was in protection. Uh, and he's standing there, so he's a running back, so he just sees him, he knows where he is, he just throws it down his, at his feet and hmm. incomplete. Under a minute to play, Javon Gibson is in. Split wide to the left side, here's the play, third down and a couple. Pass near side, caught by Josh Cameron. He is struggling for extra yardage and pulled down at the 38, but that's enough for a Baylor first down. It's good to see guys fighting, but you got some guys here that getting a little extra time now. Jordan Cameron's played quite a bit today, um, but they're trying to get to uh, show a little bit of production. Want to play more. 45 seconds and counting, fourth quarter. Snap back to Martinez. Throws off his back foot and threw it out of bounds. Josh Cameron, the uh, intended receiver. And one thing I say about R.J. Martinez, which you can tell with him is, is that he knows a, he has a good idea where the ball should go. And if the ball, if the play is dead, if, he, if it's time to eat it, you can tell he doesn't take a sack. The ball's coming out. It's either going to be incomplete, out of bounds, something. I'm not saying he doesn't throw interceptions. This is late in the game, not much. But he got a little pressure there. He knew where the receiver was supposed to be. He wasn't there. He just throws it out of bounds, lines up, plays another play. Second and 10, 36 seconds on the clock. 38-6, Texas leads Baylor. Martinez firing again. This one he is caught at the 20-yard line. First catch of the night by Jonathan Davidson, the junior out of Fulcher. Nice to uh, be able to call J.D.'s name here. First down for the Bears. They're in the H-E-B red zone just inside the 20. Here's Martinez flush, looking to run. He's going to run it out of bounds, far side at the 13-yard line with 17 seconds on the clock. Well, it would be good, John, to get a touchdown in this game. Don't uh, have one yet. No, we do not. Two field goals. We went to four twice inside the 10-yard line. Uh, turned over on downs. One was an interception. One was a turnover on downs. And I got a feeling RJ is going to shoot these at the end zone, take some chances. Now, when you take chances, it gets really tight down here. So you really like to try to find a big body, tight end outside to his left. Will he work back inside, then run around? Two receivers to either side. Martinez takes the snap, fires it right side. Armani Winfield at the 10 to the 5 and down at the 3 yard line. First down. With 10 seconds to go, it'll be first and goal for the Bears. Got to be ready to snap it. Coach isn't going to call you a timeout. So yep. you got you to be ready to snap it and go. At the four is where it's spotted. Clock counts down under 10 seconds. Martinez throws it away. Armani Winfield closely guarded in the end zone. Two seconds to go. Should be the final play of the game right here. Clock stops on the end completion. And, uh, right here now, yeah, you do have uh, timeouts, but I don't Coach think is not going to take them. So, so the ball went out of bounds. It's an incomplete pass. Smart by RJ. And the fans are wanting a touchdown. <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's rough to get it to this. But so now, what do you got? You got your tight end to your left. You got Monty to your right. Here we go. Three receivers left. One to the right side. Maybe the final play of the game right here on the slant. It is incomplete to Josh Cameron. And that is the ball game. Texas wins their Big 12 Conference opener here in Waco tonight over the Bears. Texas dominating in the 38-6 win over the Bears. Baylor drops to 1-3 on the season. 0-1 in Big 12 Conference play. Texas runs their record to 4-0. They are 1-0 in the Big 12. Impressive win for Coach Steve Sarkeesian and the Longhorns tonight. Baylor really struggled all night in the running game, fell behind, was forced to go for some game, uh, some plays on fourth down several times, especially in the second half. 
J.J. Texas uh, puts it on the Bears tonight to the tune of 38-6. to six. Yeah, just, I mean, Texas did what you need to do. It was really that second quarter. Baylor stayed in touch. It was 7-3. Uh, then in that second quarter, uh, Sark had some opportunity. They got, a big, they got some big plays. Uh, and then from then on, really, Baylor could not respond. That was the issue. Uh, Baylor's offense couldn't respond. And when you can't respond, you put no doubt on their side. You put no pressure on their side. So now guys are playing free. They're playing confident. And that's what Baylor ran into. And Texas has enough talent. They were already confident that they did what a good team should do. Is they, A team that's going to struggle to score, they put you away early for the most part. And, and that's what they did. So hate to lose to them. But uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, Baylor has to move on and go into Florida next week. 7-3 into the first quarter, 28-6 at halftime, a 21-point second quarter. Texas has now had at least one or has had one 21-point quarter in all four games this year. Tonight they do it in the second quarter, build that lead, and then uh, really coast in the second half. 38-6 the final score, Texas over Baylor. Stay with us. Our first Central Credit Union postgame show is coming up next. Final score, Texas 38, Baylor 6. You're listening to Baylor Bear Football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. For a limited time, get high-performance, ultra-reliable internet from Astound Broadband, starting as low as $25 per month. And now we have mobile, too. Visit Astound.com to order the number one rated internet. Create the perfect plan with fast speeds to meet all your needs, plus get a two-year price lock when you upgrade to award-winning gig internet. No contracts, no hidden monthly fees, and no data caps. Switch today. Head to Astound.com or call 1-800-4-ASTOUND. Restrictions apply. See website for details. No matter which road you take, the Toyota Tundra is the perfect way to navigate it. On your path, you're your own boss and set your own hours. Look at that sunrise. You may find yourself in some pretty remote places. Whoa, that view. It's amazing. Or in places where pastimes become stories that become legends. I got one. I got one. It's a keeper. Hey, get a picture. No one's going to believe this. And each day ends binge-watching stars and dreaming about all the things you'll do the next day. You know what? I'm catching a bigger fish tomorrow. Built to follow your path, the Toyota Tundra. This Texan knows how to sick them. Toyota is a proud partner of Baylor Athletics. Visit your local Toyota dealer or toyota.com to check out the rugged Tundra today. Toyota, let's go places. See packages and options at toyota.com for feature availability. TFNB Your Bank for Life is the official local bank of Baylor Athletics. Find out why more Central Texas are making TFNB their bank for life. Sign up for our Edge Checking and Savings accounts to earn interest or cash back. With five convenient locations and an award-winning mobile app, banking has never been easier. TFNB Your Bank for Life. Member FDIC. has been live coverage of Baylor football. Now, now, it's time for the first Central Credit Union postgame show. Brought to you by Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, championship partner of Baylor Athletics. Visit Texas Farm Bureau Insurance online to find a local agent today. Baylor Scott and White Health, the official hospital and healthcare system of Baylor Athletics. Your healthcare, your way. H-E-B, the official grocer of Baylor Athletics. Proudly serving Texans since 1905. TFNB, the official local bank of Baylor Athletics. Premier ER and Urgent Care. Feel better now. Nissan, innovation for excitement. Stay tuned as we break down the game. Listen to highlights. Talk with Coach Aranda players and more all coming up on the Baylor Sports Media Network. This game show it's brought to you by the First Central Credit Union. Everything we do, we do for you. Bears fall to Texas tonight, 38 to 6 the final score. Bears drop to 0 and 1 in conference play. They are 1 and 3 on the season and head on the road for the first time this season next week headed to Orlando. 
to play UCF. Just checked on that game, the only game uh, still going in the Big 12. And Kansas State leads UCF 31-24 with 10.08 to play in the fourth quarter. Welcome into our post-game show. We'll visit with a player or two and head coach Dave Aranda, give you all the final numbers from this game tonight. Plus name our first place foods, darn good player of the game. I think Ricky is uh, with us, are you not? All right, very good. Uh, Rick, uh, first, before we get to our darn good player of the game, uh, just your overall thoughts on this loss to the Longhorns tonight. Well, it was a tough one. I think particularly offensively we struggled, and, I've, and that put, I thought, a great deal of pressure on us defensively, That just the fact we couldn't get anything going offensively. But even at that, I thought that stop by the defense late in the game when Texas had the ball first and goal was really a good sign. I, I think uh, not many of us thought at that point that you would get a stop, and you did, and Texas still had their main guys in there, so it wasn't like they had replaced them. So I think you carry that forward. Uh, hope you get Blake back next week. Uh, Sawyer's not healthy either. We saw him limping quite a lot there in the second half, in fact. But hopefully Blake comes back. I don't know if anyone noticed it, but Blake was suited up before the game with a <laughs> knee brace, in pads, helmet, warming up, and then when the game started, he was in sweat. So uh, I think that uh, he is anxious to get back out there and play, and that will make a difference. Uh, Sawyer's received a lot of experience in these last ball games. Uh, obviously, Blake's the guy when he comes back, but you don't want him to come back too soon. But hopefully, guys, that's next week. That would be nice. That'd be uh, a, uh, an injection of energy to get your number one quarterback, Blake Shapin, back. J.J., uh, tough night for Baylor, and Texas looked really good. I mean, they're the number three team in the nation and really, uh, you know, played like it for the most part tonight. Yeah, and, John, they did. And you if you didn't expect the last because last week uh, UT struggled against Wyoming. That was a 10-10 to game early in the fourth. And you, I just knew the whole week that their coaches were telling them, hey, look, you haven't done anything yet. You won one big game. And they came out, and Coach uh, uh, Sark was pretty aggressive after they got through that first quarter. They Their guys made some plays, and, uh, so I was impressed by him. And I think for Baylor, you just got beat by a better team. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I don't think Coach Aranda sugar-coated it, coat it. this year. UT is better. Uh, they beat you, and now you move on. Because that has that has this game should have no impact on the rest of what you're able to do. But you got to fight. It's, it's hard mentally, right? You're one and now three. Uh, and now it's kind of like, which way are we going to go? Are we going to kind of kind of get this thing even? Or will it snowball? So that's the fight these players have. And, uh, and coach is going to want guys who are going to get in the foxhole and fight with them the rest of the season. And I believe, believe me, I think this week we'll find out who's going to stick around and help them get out of that hole. Similar conversations going on in uh, Stillwater and in Lubbock <laughs> exactly. after games <laughs> today. So Baylor's not alone there. All right, how about our uh, first place foods darn good player of the game? I've got somebody in mind. Uh, right. uh, Ricky, who would you nominate for uh, that? You know what? I <laughs> I don't know. I'd talked about the corners before the game, and I thought those two freshman corners, I don't know, yeah. in the player of the game conversation, but I thought they played really well and hung in there tough, made some open field tackles that 18-year-olds just don't make. And I was really impressed with that. So I, I just thought they played up to the level uh, that we expected out of them. I think uh, there wasn't a lot of support there otherwise, but I just think t those two guys together really played well. All right. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, I did. I really did like those corners. I mean, I think uh, uh, I want to. I think you did say his name, Ricky. I want to give Caden Jenkins some props. I mean, you know, I don't want to leave out two people think Shatu Reed had a good game, but Caden Jenkins really played. I really liked the way he competed. Uh, but I'll tell you, I mean, Monterey is good to see him get that 55-yard catch, three catches, 81 yards. Keytron had 55 yards. Uh, Sawyer was pretty good. But I'm going to tell you, I mean, the one that impressed me today that helped us out. Uh, quite a bit was that dog on Garrison Grimes. That's who I, I was mean, thinking. Garrison Grimes. I mean, I mean he. I mean he's long snapping, and then yeah, he needs some help with two muffs. But when they muffed it, Garrison Grimes, John was down there, gave him two opportunities to score yeah. uh, by recovering fumbles at key times, and Baylor just couldn't do anything with it. That's who I was thinking from the beginning, Garrison Grimes. Ricky, you okay with that? I'm good with it. All In right. fact, I'll tell you, one of those, Yeah. he ended up jumping between two Texas <laughs> defenders that jumped right over the top of the ball and missed it. So Garrison com is coming full speed down the field and was able to get on the football. That's not an easy chore, nope. so wow. I have no problem with that one. That's good. So that's your deep snapper who comes down and covers two muffed punts by Texas. 
And that is our darn good player of the game, brought to you by Hans Pickles and Relish, proud sponsors of Baylor Bear Athletics. That's a darn good pickle. Available at restaurants and food service outlets throughout the Southwest. Also look for Hun's Pickles in the deli section at select grocers throughout North Texas. More to come on the First Central Credit Union postgame show. First Central Credit Union, everything we do, we do for you. Kelly Moore, 38-6 to the final score. Texas over Baylor. We're back with more on our postgame show after this on the Baylor Sports Media Network. First Central Credit Union is opening doors to home ownership. First Central's open door mortgage loans up to 95% of the appraised home value with low closing costs, no points, low origination fees, flexible terms, and competitive rates. Consider refinancing your mortgage or securing land for building. We loan up to 75% of the appraised value of land. Apply online at firstcentralcu.com. Everything we do, we do for you. Some restrictions apply. Equal housing lender. Member NCUA. Baylor Athletics Group experiences are back. Fans can now purchase exclusive experiences on the Baylor Sports app for an elite in-venue experience at select Baylor Athletic events. New this year, fans can submit their own video board messages to go on the big screen during the game. Baylor football experiences include on-field photos, sideline access during warm-ups, tunnel access during the team runout, and an in-game radio booth experience. Purchase your experience today through the Baylor Sports app. TFNB Your Bank for Life is the official local bank of Baylor Athletics. Find out why more Central Texas are making TFNB their bank for life. Sign up for our Edge checking and savings accounts to earn interest or cash back. With five convenient locations and an award-winning mobile app, banking has never been easier. TFNB Your Bank for Life. Member FDIC. For a limited time, get high-performance, ultra-reliable internet from Astound Broadband, starting as low as $25 per month. And now we have mobile, too. Visit Astound.com to order the number one rated internet. Create the perfect plan with fast speeds to meet all your needs. Plus, get a two-year price lock when you upgrade to award-winning gig internet. No contracts, no hidden monthly fees, and no data caps. Switch today. Head to Astound.com or call 1-800-4-ASTOUND. Restrictions apply. See website for details. You're listening to Baylor football. Baylor football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. The final Texas over Baylor tonight here in front of an outstanding crowd, 49,000 plus, fifth largest crowd in McLean Stadium history, 11th largest crowd in Baylor football history. With the visitors from Austin win over the Bears tonight, 38-6, the final score. Let's pause here 10 seconds for station identification. Back in 10 seconds on the Baylor Sports Media Network. From the Allen Samuels Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Studios, this is KRZI Waco, K222DC Waco, K265DV Temple, ESPN Central Texas. Continuing on the First Central Credit Union postgame show, brought to you by the First Central Credit Union. Everything we do, we do for you. A reminder, uh, join us for the Baylor Coaches Show from Rudy's coming up this Wednesday night, 7 to 8 p.m., live from Rudy's on the Circle in Waco. We'll have men's tennis coach Michael Woodson and head baseball coach Mitch Thompson. Fall practice about to begin this week for Coach Thompson and the Bears. Submit your questions for the next Baylor Coaches Show to the First Place Foods inbox. Tweet at Voice of Bears. Tweet at us. X at us. And we'll get the uh, questions in front of the coaches. First Place Foods. That's a darn good pickle. J.J., how about uh, final stats from this 38-6 Longhorns win? Well, John, I mean, Baylor won the, the time of possession, uh, 33 minutes and 30 seconds to 26 minutes and 30 seconds. They won the, the turnover battle. They were plus one. I said they need to be plus two, uh, but they're plus one. Two muff punts. Uh, Quinn Uris still hadn't thrown an interception. We'll get to his numbers in a second. Uh, but overall, the big plays, those were the difference. Uh, Jatavian Sanders had a 62-yard, I'm sorry, 49-yard uh, uh, grab. Uh, you also had uh, Mr. Cook, who had a 51-yard uh, receiving, uh, uh, wasn't a touchdown, uh, but a big a big gain. Uh, and then you had uh, uh, Jonathan Brooks, who had 18 carries, 106 yards, two touchdowns, but he had uh, a 40-yard uh, play there. You know, Monterey Baldwin, good to see him get into the season. Three catches, 81 yards. Had a, a, a long of 55, so good to see him catch that. But the 365 yards Baylor need, I mean, gained about over 100 of them came late when R.J. Martinez finished 9 of 18, 102 yards. 
uh, and no uh, touchdowns or interceptions. Sawyer Robertson finished 20 of 35 for 203 yards. So Baylor uh, with 29 of 53 for 305 yards, but no touchdowns and one INT. Uh, so, you know, really the ch the challenge for Baylor was consistency on offense. Uh, third downs, uh, five of 18 for the Bears. Only three of nine for Texas, but they didn't really need third downs that much. Uh, but then what happened is Baylor could not run the ball. Uh, the leading rusher was R.J. Martinez, who had three for 22 there late. Uh, Dawson Pendergrass had 21 yards. He had about a 12, 14-yard scamper there late in the game. And Jordan Neighbors, a welcome to the running back room. Jordan Neighbors, uh, three carries for 19 yards. He's your leading rusher from the, I call, like just, you know, I mean, uh, handing the ball off to what I would call an every down back. Uh, Richard Reese, only three carries for eight yards. That was one of my keys coming, but Richard Reese carried the ball more. Uh, but only three carries for Richard on the afternoon for eight yards. And then, of course, Dominique Richardson recovering from the, the, the ankle, uh, six carries uh, for four yards. Uh, and then, of course, Sawyer Robertson had some gains at opportune time, but he had that sack yardage uh, there. UT had five sacks on the afternoon. Uh, Baylor had three, got to Quinn Ewers, but overall, Baylor could not score when they got in the red zone. In the red zone, uh, Baylor was two of six inside the red zone. Now, Baylor did go for it a couple times instead of kicking field goals, uh, so we understood that as the game was out of hand. Uh, UT three of four, they had a missed field goal attempt there uh, late, and they were trying to push the score 41 to six, uh, but missed that. But inside the red zone, Baylor still struggling to find a touchdown maker. Uh, and you got to have touchdown makers now in this age of passing and throwing football uh, to stay in competition. Uh, Quinn Ewers, 18 of 23, 293 yards and a score. Xavier Worthy threw a touchdown pass. Yes, Xavier Worthy to Jatavian Sanders, who was their leading receiver, 5 for 110, uh, threw a bomb to him on a double pass. Uh, in rushing, Jonathan Brooks, uh, 18 for 106 and two touchdowns. Uh, followed by Mr. Baxter, six for 21, and a uh, uh, I'm sorry, a touchdown as well. Xavier Worthy came into the game. Uh, you thought he would have a huge game, but he only had three catches for 31 yards and a touchdown. I mean, he did throw a touchdown, so that's a productive day. And Adonai Mitchell, three for 46. So Baylor did a decent job of containing the passing game overall, uh, but the big plays, like I said before, Monterey Ball went 81 yards, Keytron 55 yards, and, uh, and uh, Winfield. Man, it was good, great to see Winfield uh, in the game there, Armani Winfield. He has three catches for 42 yards in what I would call, you know, late game action, but it's good to see him in uh, Mr. Roberts, three for 20. So, John, if you look at the stats, uh, really you can tell that UT did a good job of having explosive plays, executing their offense, uh, not turning the ball over for the most part. The two turnovers were on punts, and then uh, really they let their talent play. They got the ball into, inside their playmaker's hands. Uh, Jatavian, Jatavian Sanders, uh, you know, Jonathan Brooks, and those guys made plays, and that was the difference in the game. All right, 38-6 the final. Texas over Baylor. Bears dropped their Big 12 conference opener. For the first time since 2017, they had won five straight conference openers. Tonight, all Texas, 38-6 the final score. Take a break and be back with more on the First Central Credit Union postgame show. It's brought to you by the First Central Credit Union. Everything we do, we do for you here on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Hi, this is John Morris for Green Eye Associates. Let Green Eye Associates, Doctors Leanne Green and Avery Platt help you see Waco clearly. Their experienced team enjoys making your eye exam fun, easy, and accurate, providing trustworthy and honest communication about your eyes and eyewear. Visit them on Lake Air Drive or at GreenEyeAssociates.com to see their services and a wide selection of eyewear made on site by experts. Green Eye Associates, official optometrist of Baylor Athletics. Premier ER and Urgent Care has all the convenience of urgent care with all the expertise of an ER, all under one roof. At every visit, be seen by ER-trained staff with on-site lab and CT, X-ray, ultrasound, and EKG. Here, you pay for the appropriate level of care that you receive, and we are in network with most major insurance providers. Premier ER and Urgent Care has four convenient locations serving Texas, San Marcos, Temple, Waco, and Woodway. To learn more, visit www.premier.care. No matter which road you take, the Toyota Tundra is the perfect way to navigate it. On your path, you're your own boss and set your own hours. Look at that sunrise. You may find yourself in some pretty remote places. Whoa, that view. It's amazing. Or in places where pastimes become stories that become legends. I got one. I got one. It's a keeper. Hey, get a picture. 
No one's gonna believe this. And each day ends binge watching stars and dreaming about all the things you'll do the next day. You know what? I'm catching a bigger fish tomorrow. Built to follow your path, the Toyota Tundra. This Texan knows how to sick them. Toyota is a proud partner of Baylor Athletics. Visit your local Toyota dealer or toyota.com to check out the rugged Tundra today. Toyota, let's go places. See packages and options at toyota.com for feature availability. You're listening to Baylor Football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. First Central Credit Union postgame show brought to you by the First Central Credit Union. Everything we do, we do for you. 38-6, the final, Texas over Baylor. We're joined now by Baylor senior linebacker Matt Jones. And, uh, Matt, we appreciate you uh, joining us here postgame. Uh, tough game for you guys this evening in your conference opener. Yes, sir, it is. Thank you for having me. You bet. Thank you. And what a game. I, we thought you – we called your name quite a bit tonight. I think eight tackles, seven solo, three and a half tackles for loss tonight. Yes, sir. <laughs> how did you feel? Uh, in, I mean, you've been around a lot. You know uh, how things ramp up uh, when you get to conference play, and, and especially when it's Texas. Um, how did you feel coming into this game? Uh, I felt felt good coming into this game. We had a great week of practice, great preparation. Um, energy was high the whole time at the hotel before game. Everything was everything was going into place. But once we get on the out on that field, like Aranda said, um, I just feel like we need to translate practice over to the field because. We're having phenomenal practices, um, and I'd say one of the best teams in the country at practicing, but we're not translating it over to the field on Saturday. Well, well you're one of the seniors. What can you do? I mean, what, what can you guys do to, uh, to make that translate over to the field? Yes, sir. We just need to keep the team going, keep the heads up. The season's not over. we got a long, long time. I know we got Blake back this week, so we should get things rolling this week. we just got to have a, have a talk with all the leaders, keep the team going, keep the heads up, and – play for pride and keep going. Hey, and Matt, tell me just one question on just scheme today. You know, UT does a lot of different stuff. Oh, yeah. uh, so what, what kind of what, what was the approach this week, uh, kind of considering all the things he likes to do? How were you guys looking at this game and the attack, uh, the, the approach to attack, uh, taking on this team? Yeah, man, we knew before coming in that they like to run a lot of fancy stuff. They like to switch things up. <clears throat> they like to do different things than right. what they put on film. And, I mean, we knew that coming in, so we should have – we were prepared for it, but we just didn't execute it. And uh, the plays that we did know and come our way, we made, and just the fancy things, and it happens everywhere. We got to be prepared, more prepared for it. And, and and last one on this, but outside of the scheme. So you know, Matt, you're one of the seniors, and you're in this fork of the road, right? Kind of what what's going to be your message as one of the veterans been to some championship teams on kind of what we do from here. Yeah, man, like I said earlier, we just got to keep our heads up, keep going. Um, we got a young team, a lot of youth on the team, right, and right. They, haven't, they haven't experienced a lot of this. I know a lot of people coming from high school, all they're, they're used to winning. Right. But you get at this level, and it's hard to win, man. It is hard to win, so we just got to keep the energy going, heads high. And like I said earlier, man, we got a long season. We just got to keep fighting and keep playing our, our butts off. It's a good message, Matt. Thanks for being thanks, with Matt. us. We appreciate yes, it. Thank you all. All right, Matt Jones with us. Nice night defensively. For Baylor, uh, second leading tackler for the Bears, Devin Lemire actually had nine total tackles. Matt had eight, along with Devin Bobby, who had eight this evening. Caden Jenkins, uh, again, we talked about him. Uh, what a nice night at cornerback. Seven tackles for Caden Jenkins, six, uh, five for Mike Smith, the linebacker, four for uh, Cooper Lance. Some of the defensive leaders for the Bears tonight, 38-6, the final. And... Uh, Ricky, uh, defensively, you step back and look at it. Um, what are your thoughts about Baylor and their defense specifically in this game tonight? Well, obviously, I, th I think both sides of the ball could have played better. But, uh, again, we go back to that last stand with Texas first and goal when really the game's out of reach and you could have laid it down there. I thought they made a really good stop, a series of four downs where I thought they really performed really well. I Again, these, these corners that are very, very young, I thought they played well, had a lot of stops outside and tackles. I tell you, when uh, you have those running backs with that type of agility running right at you, it's tough to bring those guys down, and I thought they did that. So uh, a lot of youth over there that hopefully will continue to get better, and some of that happens when offensively you move the football, you put points on the board, you keep them off the field, and that adds a lot of momentum on the defensive side, too. So 
I think there's some potential there to get much, much better, and I think they showed that late in this game, and hopefully that carries forward as we go into the first road game next week at UCF. Yeah, I agree. That's good. And uh, kind of perked up when Matt Matt Jones uh, said, kind of matter-of-factly, that uh, Blake Shapin will be back next week. <laughs> it's nice to hear. We're just hoping he knows We're just hoping he knows more than we know. Well, I, exactly. I so. think he does. I think, yeah, he's there every day, so that's good to hear. And, and that would be an injection because I think they'll really need him. Hopefully he's healthy uh, next week against a, a solid UCF team. So, uh, but I like what I heard from Matt. Matt is a senior. He's been to the you know the high of the highs, and now this for him is the low of the lows, being one and three. But they're at that point where you know at four games they got some decisions to make. I like to hear the message he said, like we got to keep our heads up, and it'd be good to get Blake and maybe you know make some plays where we haven't made them, and uh, and it'd be interesting to see how things go from here. Yeah, one of the leaders, and and he's saying all the right things, you know. So yeah. that's good. And moving forward, Baylor may not play a better team than than Texas this year. So um, for what that's worth, uh, they'll move on, and all the focus right now will be on UCF coming up on Saturday. It's a two thirty kickoff Central Time. Baylor and UCF from Bounce House in Orlando. <laughs> Rick, anybody close, or let's get a break in here. I think we can take a break. Let's do that. We'll take a break. Continue with more on the First Central Credit Union postgame show in a moment. Follows a 38-6 Texas win over Baylor. First Central Credit Union. Everything we do, we do for you. And we're back after this on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Premier ER and Urgent Care has all the convenience of urgent care with all the expertise of an ER, all under one roof. At every visit, be seen by ER-trained staff with on-site lab and CT, X-ray, ultrasound, and EKG. Here, you pay for the appropriate level of care that you receive, and we are in network with most major insurance providers. Premier ER and Urgent Care has four convenient locations serving Texas, San Marcos, Temple, Waco, and Woodway. To learn more, visit www.premier.care. Everything we do, we do for you. First Central Credit Union says it's game on. Lower your monthly vehicle payments by refinancing your vehicle with First Central. Make it a winning season with refinancing set to your preferences. You decide the due date and frequency. Financed elsewhere? Save money with a new local game plan. Apply online today. We make it easy to score at firstcentralcu.com. Membership and loan policy requirements apply. Member NCUA. No matter which road you take, the Toyota Tundra is the perfect way to navigate it. On your path, you're your own boss and set your own hours. Look at that sunrise. You may find yourself in some pretty remote places. Whoa, that view, it's amazing. Or in places where pastimes become stories that become legends. I got one, I got one, it's a keeper. Hey, get a picture, no one's gonna believe this. And each day ends binge-watching stars and dreaming about all the things you'll do the next day. You know what? I'm catching a bigger fish tomorrow. Built to follow your path, the Toyota Tundra. This Texan knows how to sick them. Toyota is a proud partner of Baylor Athletics. Visit your local Toyota dealer or toyota.com to check out the rugged Tundra today. Toyota, let's go places. See packages and options at toyota.com for feature availability. You're listening to Baylor Football on the Baylor Sports Media Network. Central Credit Union postgame show. It's brought to you, as always, by the First Central Credit Union. Everything we do, we do for you. Again, a, a great crowd here tonight, a sellout crowd. Let me give you the number again, 49,000. Mm, 100 and can't find it. 49,000 plus, fifth largest crowd in uh, McLean Stadium history and the 11th largest crowd in Baylor football history. 49,165, the official attendance at today's game. 38-6 uh, to six the final, and Texas wins over Baylor. Let's look at other scores. Only one other game still going in the Big 12. Kansas State has opened up a 44-24 to 24 lead on UCF. So Baylor's next opponent down by 20 on the road. 
in Manhattan. That's with uh, two minutes, one second to play in the fourth quarter. Everything else, a final today. Oklahoma beat Cincinnati 20-6 to in the Queen City. TCU beat SMU 34-17. Kansas goes to 4-0. They went over BYU 38-27. Kansas 4-0. They'll play at 4-0 Texas coming up next Saturday. West Virginia wins over Texas Tech 20-13 to the final. Iowa State wins over Oklahoma State 34-27 the final score. Houston won a non-conference game against Sam Houston 38-7. And our game here 38-6 Texas over Baylor in the uh, Big 12 conference opener. Bears overall drop to 1 and 3. They are 0 and 1 in Big 12 conference play and going on the road for the first time this season JJ this week. Um, after four straight games at home, really unusual, but going on the road to play at UCF on Saturday. Yeah, John, I'm looking forward to it. I think, you know, getting on the road a little bit may be good for this team, uh, you know, just to change things up a little bit, just to see if they can kind of get a little bit more focus. Uh, you know, Utah game was a good, solid game after a disappointing Texas State game last week. You got the W that everybody expected. And then this week, you just you just didn't have enough. I, To me, this week, you know, to me, UT is just better. The whole week I just felt from watching the two teams, UT was better. But you never know. That's why you play the game, that maybe we play good, solid football. So I don't think, like I say, this game to me, while it's disappointing, uh, really for Baylor it's to get better each week. Get your quarterback back, hopefully, hopefully. And then uh, some of those plays where you're inside and you can't get a touchdown and he makes a throw for you, you get a touchdown. That changes just the feel of the game. So – Looking forward to getting going. Hopefully Blake is back close to 100%. I know he won't be exactly 100, and hopefully it gives a positive spark to at least kind of ignite kind of what would be improvement throughout the season. Yeah, I'm with you. It'd be great to get Blake back hopefully next week. Uh, we don't know that for sure. Right. But I thought I thought Sawyer Robertson was just a warrior again. You know, not not 100%. You can tell that. But, man, he battles out there. Yeah, no, he does, John. And it's not a knock with Sawyer, but there's a reason Blake was ahead of him. Right, right? sure. Yeah. Blake has a full season under his belt plus a little bit of the championship season. And some of the struggles Blake had last year, if you think about it, as a first-time starter, uh, you know, I think Sawyer now is saying, okay, when I got to play every week, uh, there's a level of detail uh, preparation I haven't been used to. So Blake this year I thought we saw early that I thought we saw the ne a little bit of a next step. So hopefully he'll have a little rust on him. So he's not a savior, but he has a little rust on him. And Sawyer did what a backup should do. He came in. I guess Utah gave you a chance to win. He won a game. Uh, and then this week I think it was just a little bit too much. This team, UT, as much as it hurts us to say it, they had a say to get they, for about us a couple years ago. Yeah. They're just in that – they're in that groove. They have whatever that it is, and if they can keep carrying it for another eight to nine weeks, they'll probably be uh, in a game that none of us want them to be in, but it's – they have a good team. <laughs> All right, very good. We are uh, joined by Hal Presley now. Hal, uh, I'll give you his numbers again on the evening. Um, as uh, we're joined by the Baylor receiver. Hal, we appreciate you being on with us. Tough game tonight against uh, a really good team in Texas. Yes, sir. How did, how did you uh, how did you guys feel coming in? It seemed like you had a real air of confidence uh, in preparation this week. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we came in with a lot of confidence. Um, um, yeah, we just came in with a lot of confidence and a lot of energy, ready to uh, win again. Yeah, very good. Great crowd, wasn't it? Great atmosphere here tonight. Yes, sir. The fans for sure came out. Yeah. What uh, What's it like? A night game here at McLean Stadium? That's just a little different than those 11 a.m. games. Uh, yeah, it's definitely not like the 11 a.m. games. Uh, the fans really came out today, um, and I appreciate it. Well, Hal, tell me a little bit about the approach today. I know, Coach, first I knew that we ran the ball a lot, but what was the approach today offensively as you knew you had a pretty, really, a really good defense you were going against? Um, I feel like our approach – or. On offense was more so to just uh, try to gash them as much as we could right? Uh, with the running backs and stuff like that. But um, also we wanted to get our receivers in the mix too and I uh, feel like we tried our best at that. And, and it looked like, you know, in a couple opportunities you got Monterey deep. I think Keytron caught one. Uh, so it looked like you guys had begun to stretch the field, but it looked like that came a little bit later the second half. Was the plan to do that earlier and you couldn't get to it or what were your thoughts? Uh, yes, sir. From my point of view, the, the plan was to do that uh, early in the game, but um, calls happen and we just have to execute them. Got it. Got it. 
And uh, how final thought, uh, sometimes you go on the road and the team, it's, you know, kind of circle the wagons and it's you against the world. You guys are going on the road for your game next week. Uh, maybe that could turn into a positive for you. Yes, sir, of course. Um, this next game is going to be on the road and we're going to be ready to try to win. Uh, of course, every week we're trying to win and we're just going to get better. Very nice. Hey, we appreciate the Thanks, visit. Hal. Thanks very much. Yes, sir. All right, Hal Presley, his numbers, uh, again, three for three catches for 17 yards tonight for uh, targets for Hal Presley. So we appreciate him visiting with us. We are uh, holding and awaiting Coach Dave Aranda to visit with him before we sign off. 38-6, the final score. Baylor uh, falling to Texas tonight. Uh, 49,000 plus the crowd, great crowd here tonight, sold out. Uh, Texas fans were plentiful, but uh, I think the Baylor fans certainly did their job tonight as well. Yeah, John, they did. I mean, I think the, the energy coming in, you felt it. I mean, the students were in force. They came and they were looking for something for the team to give them something. And it's it's a reciprocal relationship, right? The fans are trying they trying to give it to you, and they yeah. need you to give them something back. Yeah. And it just wasn't any of their thing there. But they did a great job, I thought. I would say kudos to the fans that were here. Really yes. good atmosphere tonight. I think that probably uh, translated onto the uh, air on an ABC broadcast on a Saturday evening. Hopefully it came through our broadcast as well. So really good uh, fan involvement and uh, fan uh, atmosphere here at uh, McLean Stadium. All right. I think we're joined by head coach Dave Aranda now. Coach Aranda's postgame comments brought to you by Alliance Bank. Alliance Bank, it is your bank. Coach, we appreciate the visit. Uh, tough night tonight against uh, a really good team in Texas. Yeah, I appreciate that. I thought that we just didn't execute. I thought from the very beginning, I mean, we had drop balls. We um, threw, there were some balls that were in the dirt. I thought, you know, line of scrimmage, we never really could get anything going and uh, run game was never really established. And so just our style, you know, our, uh, our thing just never got off the ground. And uh, you said, mentioned some of those drop balls, and I know you like to talk about uh, energy, edge, and execution. Did you feel like the uh, team responded in those other categories? I thought we started, uh, we started out uh, good, and I thought we started out ready to, uh, to win and to take it and all of it. I thought, you know, the lead up of the week and – I thought the hotel and I thought the pregame and just the locker room and then coming out and and all of it I thought was good. Um, but we got to execute. And I think when you don't execute, you know, the the whole thing is kind of sapped um, and you end up not having it. And, you know, as best you can, you try to keep it going. But um, we have to be able to execute on the field to build it. You know, how many times were we in the red zone and didn't, didn't score and just those types of things. You just not, you're just you not going to win a game doing that. We thought a uh, pretty gutsy performance by Sawyer Robertson uh, again tonight. How would you see it? Yeah, I thought, you know, Sawyer um, was pushing through. I think he still kind of hobbled but was fighting through it. I thought the runs that he had, I thought, really helped us on some of those drives. I thought that, uh, you know, there's times where he was – struggling to push off and then you know push through that i thought his communication was improved and uh you know he was fighting and uh was the whole time talking doing his best to try to lead in some dire spots and so just all of that I'm way appreciative of and, and coach uh, talk a little bit about the defense i thought i thought early they did a really good job got out of the first quarters mm -hmm. uh three seven uh, and then, of course, a couple things broke. But talk about the approach when you face a multiple team like UT. Yeah, I thought I thought they came out strong too. I thought they were ready to play and they're in the right mindset. Um, you know, one of the things that we've done is kind of idea formation, call call a defense accordingly. And um, y you know, this is not a secret. And UT clearly knows it. And mm -hmm. there is a fair amount of exploding looks. So. Hey, everybody's in, and then they explode out. Everybody's out, and they explode in to try to deter that. And that's really nothing new. But I think that um, that did when m the momentum was kind of changing, and we weren't kind of um, we weren't scoring points, and we were struggling to kind of contain them. That I thought was a factor. And so there's things we can definitely do better, and our aim is to do it. So, and offensively, Coach, I mean, I, I thought, like the, like you said, the running game. It looks like uh, early on we kind of got a couple runs. But talk to me about did you feel up front that, that maybe they played a few games or that we just kind of weren't kind of getting the contain up front that we needed to? 
Yeah, I thought there was a, um, I appreciate the question. There, There's a big part of the game plan was kind of the toss cracks. Okay. And, um, you know, they played with really wide nines um, and a lot of their looks to detour that. And some of those negative yardage runs were uh, when we couldn't get that cracked or hooked and that. And then you would think with that being outside, we couldn't run inside. And so that was the, that was the view. And uh, there's just too much struggle in getting that done. That's something that we need to get done. And, um, you know, that's something that we could not get done tonight. Well, at least, Coach, I think by my last question here is it was good to see at least you got a couple of explosives. And I know it would be good to see him score. You got, I think, Keatron had one. It was good to see Monterey up the scene. Uh, talk about that approach. Was that the plan to try to see can we attack their safeties and corners? Appreciate that. Yeah, I thought the the explosives have been something that I think from the from the beginning of this year has has shown up. You know, I, I go back to last year and it was a struggle to get those, and I think we've gotten those. And you know, we'd like to have a lot more wins than we have right now, and maybe more more passing yards in general than we have. But I think there has been explosives. I think you know the 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 thing that i have to get over is you know there is a fair amount of hitches and access throws that we had there's a fair amount of um of um slants and just leverage and easy throws that really just kind of keep the chains going that we couldn't execute on and i thought you know for some of these harder throws down the field and the timing and all of it we were able to execute some of these simpler things uh we were not and i think that was a big factor in tonight Coach, four straight at home to start the season. Uh, go on the road this week for the first time this year to play UCF. Yes, I have a lot of respect for them and their coach and just know that they're, they're going to be prepared. They're going to play hard. Uh, you know, they're, they've, got, um, they've had some great recruiting classes and some great talent there, so it'll definitely be a test for us. I think it'll be good for us to get on the road and to uh, experience all of that and you know, I think it's a critical game for us. You know, I'm, there's, I think that's, that is for sure the truth. And for us to show up and fight and all of it uh, versus a really good team is, is what we need. Coach, thanks. We thanks, appreciate Coach. the visit. Hey, thank you. All right, Coach Dave Aranda with us following the uh, Bears' 38-6 to loss to UT tonight here at McLean Stadium. Big 12 opener. Bears dropped to 1-3 and three overall and 0-1 oh and one in Big 12 conference play. Next up, as we talked about, on the road to Orlando to play UCF coming up next Saturday. We'll be on the air along the network at 2 p.m. Central Time, 2.30 kickoff for the Bears and the Knights from Orlando, the Bounce House, coming up next Saturday. Hey, those of you uh, listening on our flagship station in Waco or uh, tuned in to the In the Booth video, stay tuned. The post-game fan forum is coming up next with Derek Smith and Elliot Coffey. Stay tuned for that, uh, wrapping things up from here at McLean Stadium this evening. We appreciate you for being with us. Thanks to our entire crew, Bob Baker, our engineer, Aaron Sexton, our network board operator, Jeff Walter, our spotter and statistician here in the booth, Kelly Moore, our frequency coordinator. Uh, speaking for all of them, plus J.J. Joe and Ricky Thompson, I'm John Morris. Thanks for being with us. Our final score once again from McLean Stadium in Waco, Texas 38, Baylor 6. Good night from Waco. Hi, this is John Morris for Green Eye Associates. All right, John. All right, Have we're out of here. Duck. Derek's coming. All right. Talk to, all right, talk to you Monday. Thank Thank you, Waco, clearly. You. Thank you, John. The team enjoys making your eye exam fun, easy, and accurate, providing trustworthy and honest communication about your eyes and eyewear. Visit them on Lake Air Drive or at greeneyeassociates.com to see their services and a wide selection of eyewear made on-site by experts. Green Eye Associates, official optometrist of Baylor Athletics. No matter which road you take, the Toyota Tundra is the perfect way to navigate it. On your path, you're your own boss and set your own hours. Look at that sunrise. You may find yourself in some pretty remote places. Whoa, that view. It's amazing. Or in places where pastimes become stories that become legends. I got one. I got one. It's a keeper. Hey, get a picture. No one's going to believe this. And each day ends binge-watching stars and dreaming about all the things you'll do the next day. You know what? I'm catching a bigger fish tomorrow. Built to follow your path, the Toyota Tundra. This Texan knows how to sick them. Toyota is a proud partner of Baylor Athletics. Visit your local Toyota dealer.